Good morning. Here we are live at Thursday East. Welcome to the Scottish Surfing Championships, known as the Scottish Nationals. Based at Thursday East, we're looking at, in the sea at the moment, the first heat is getting ready with probably about chest high to head high set waves coming through. So, it's game on. We're live on YouTube, we're live on Facebook. I'm Campbell, your host for today. We've got a live stream on all day, and uh, we've got another person commenting for the athletes in the water. 3CI Sports looking after us all day today with his live feed. So thank them very much indeed with the likes and comments on Facebook. And uh, we've got sponsors of Mystic and Sea Monster. We've got uh, four surfers ready to start off. And we've got what, let's say a slight overcast day. There's a bit of blue sky kicking around. And here we have our first heat away to go live. So we'll pan into that. Enjoy for the day, folks. And thanks for looking in. we got a load of surfers watching with those vans parked up and we've got Craig McLaughlin just getting a nice vertical smack off the face on his front side. Just finishing you off with a wee roundhouse into the white waters to keep on groveling through this intersection. Might get an extra bit. He has. He's snagged a little snap there in the corner and rides out and clears. Going to paddle around the shoulder. So a great scoring wave there for Craig. And we've got two on the board, so we've got two more surfers to catch waves. We are running priority. So priority means that in first priority, you get the choice of any wave. So if you're sitting waiting and someone decides the second priority or third or fourth goes for the wave, and you're thinking, oh, I want a bit of that as a first priority, you can then take that wave and create what's called an interference situation. But we'll get into that later on. There'll be more about that as we go throughout the whole competition. But yes, welcome on board, everyone. Get those thumbs up, get those likes, get those comments, and hopefully you'll enjoy all the surfing all day. Let's keep an eye on this next wave coming through. If anyone's having a look, it's Andrew McLeod having a little kick and paddle. Just not make it onto that. So that's probably going to set priority with that paddle. So by paddling or committing to a wave, you're actually showing that you're going for the wave, which then puts you in a priority situation. So priority as in meaning you've lost that priority spot there by just doing a paddle. If it's a committed paddle, that means you will drop down in the priority order if you didn't catch the wave. We now have Evan Parkin having a wave. So he's taking this off on his backside, gets a back cast little snap off the top, and just riding out into that dying wave there. 
So yes, if you paddle for a wave but don't actually get it, it doesn't mean you're automatically lined up to be first on the next wave coming through. You've unfortunately committed to that wave, therefore you will go down to fourth in the ranking depending how many surfers are in the water. And with this first heat we've got for the men's open is four in the water. So yeah, there we go. We now have Craig having another look, second wave this time, getting a little cover up there, not coming out of it. So he'll be chasing some barrels here. Local surfer knows this inside out. He'll know where the takeoff point is how to get himself into that barrel stall. Just going to paddle out and get out of the way and go around the shoulder for this next one coming through. So still got yellow. Donald P still to take a wave and score. So three have had waves. They've got scores. Priority set. And it's one of those things you can see on the camera. I can't at the moment. So uh, I'll keep an eye on that. Here's a set wave in the background. Just everyone's out of position. But yeah. Great to be here, top of Scotland, with Donald looking for his first wave, he's up and riding, nice bottom turn, nice snap off the top of that face, I'm just going to try and ride out, see if you can get anything on this inside reform, not quite happening, so he's going to kick out. That's all four surfers now, got a score, and now, score updates coming from our athlete advisor, we have... Blue having a look, so there's Hamper up to his feet, gets a nice bottom turn into the pocket, just getting right under that lip with that first turn, it's a check turn, going to maybe look for that inside grovel section, it might reform, yep, he's getting something from this. We roundhouse back into the white water, so trying to get back into that white water foam ball, we get Eben Parkin just up and riding on his backhand, taking a bit of a drop there, not really making much with it, just a bit too deep in that wave. But great to see the action here happening straight away at Thursday East. Pretty good conditions as well. We've got a light, lightish offshore wind at the moment. We've got our cameraman getting in the water. So you'll probably see someone bobbing about in the water looking like a seal. We'll have a cameraman straight in there directly on scene trying to get some great shots of, of the surfers on the wave. We have Craig having a look at this wave, to his feet, hunting into that barrel, he's just coming, nice, good finish there, so he's completed that, so a completed right out, means he's actually taken a hit off the face of the wave, off the lip, he's landed on it, and he's ridden out in control. If you don't ride out in control, you don't get a score, or a recognised score for the completion. So great to see, that was a nice, nice off the lip, with landing and right out. So well done there, Craig and Red. So that was Eben Parkin just taking on a left-hander there. It's one of those rare left-handers that come through at Fitty. Uh, Fitty? Wow, I'm in Aberdeen again. One of those rare left-handers that come through at uh, Thursday East here. But nicely taken from Eben. So we'll see how that goes with the score. That breaks into quite shallow slab when you're taking off that left-hander. Craig having an angled look there. Getting a cover-up but getting clamped in that one. So the wave just shutting down his head. So we've got Craig leading at the moment in first with a 9.4 score in total. 
and Eben Parkinson second with a 4.5, but we'll see what's uh, going to come from that left hand he just got. Andrew McLeod in third, or Hamper, and in fourth, with Donald Peace. Great start to the, the waves here at Thursday. We've got Hamper having a look, a bigger set wave coming out the back here, nice drop. Looking for that bottom turn, can he just get into the face of it? There it goes, a nice roundhouse into the white water again. Another bottom turn, trying to get some power through that bottom turn to line him up for a vertical face finish. And we have Donald Peace in the background just taking off with Hamper riding at that intersection, still riding with Hamper, and he's just kicked out. And I'm going to say Hamper, I'm going to get that throughout the whole of this competition because uh, I've known him for quite a long time, always known as Hamper, but Andrew McLeod. But set waves looking to be rolling in the background, getting a bit more consistent, a bit more size into it now. This is the way the tide's filling in. And Craig having a little bit of local knowledge there, probably getting him trying to get himself in a position, this bigger set wave in the back. Not sure he's going to make it in position. He's going to have to duck dive and punch through it. but he could be set up for this wider wave that's coming through the back here. Still might be caught on the inside, I think. It's the way it's going to break, but certainly it's getting sizable now. We're going to call that, what, head and a half? So that's where you can see there, Red just having a, he's asking the question. So there's hand signals out there if anyone knows about it um, or doesn't know about it. So straight arms out to the side, that means we're looking for a situation update. So what's going on with the scores? You're tapping your wrist on one hand with your hand held high in the air. That is, uh, I need to know what time's left. But normally what the surfers all do, they take a watch with them so they can basically time it to the last five minutes when it gets a bit more critical in the last five minutes of a heat. Um, and there's another couple of signals, but those ones are probably the important ones. Want to know what the scores are. A repeat of the wave of the hand above the head, just to let the announcer, the beach announcer, know exactly what to say. So it's great to see the sport and sponsorship we have for this up here. 3CI Sports looking after everything we've got here today. So fair play to them. Well done for being able to get signals up here. It's absolutely amazing. So uh, it's great to have them on board and looking after your needs to be able to watch this live on YouTube and Facebook. And we're going to try and get a situation where we can have... Uh, some sort of commentary coming through from you guys so I can see what your comments are, but at the moment I'm not seeing that, which is maybe a good thing. You might be giving me some sort of grief here and there, which is understandable. I'll try and be as clear and concise as I can be. I definitely want to go into my Aberdeen Scottish accent because I definitely can, but I'm speaking about a va. But we have a set wave coming through in the background. Two out of position. Donald's maybe having a look on the edge of that shoulder. Decided not to go for it. But at the moment we've got Red Craig McLaughlin leading with a 9.40. And second, Andrew McLeod or Hamper with a 6.10. Third, with Donald Peace with a 4.97. And Evan Parkin in fourth with a 4.50. So that's total scores. So the top two go through, then there'll be a repercharge situation where Others get a second surf and a second bite of the cherry, if you like. Mm. 
And we've got our sporters today looking after us as Mystique. We've got Scottish Surfing Federation obviously up here with the Scottish Nationals for 2024 Event Scotland. The Highland Council, they're certainly looking after us too. What else? I'm just trying to see. It's uh, the Christian Surf Society in Scotland and Dunray, Green Coat, Foundation Scotland, Lost Shore. We'll come back to Lost Shore and discuss that one. There's still a couple of sponsors there. My phone's just a bit wee and I can't see what's going on with the sponsorship list. So I will get back to you all for sure. Don't worry. But yeah, Lost Shore. Exciting for Scottish surfing. It's guys just for British, British surfing because it's opening this year. And I can't wait. I've got my tickets already sorted. Donald, peace up and riding. Nice right out, roundhouse cut back into the white pocket. Trying to get some bit more speed. Is this bouncing technique to try and get a bit more speed through the wave. And just kicks out. So first we've got uh, Red, Craig McLaughlin, 9.4, Blue, Hamper, Andrew McLeod with 6.1, Yellow, Donald Peace, 4.97, and White, Eben Parkin with a 4.50. We have another wave coming through. Red does have priority here, so it's going to use that. And that paddle will be change of priority. He is in the lead, Craig, but it's whites up and riding on their backhand, bottom turn, getting those arms to make that turn with a bit of power, just nearly coming unstuck on top of the lip there, gets a vertical into the face of it and rides out. So a nice critical turn there into the face of that wave, it was, it was just breaking over his head. We've got Blue having a paddle, gets to their feet, so Andrew McLeod up and riding bottom turn into a nice front hand little snap second one into that white pocket going to kick out that one realising it's not going to reform into the inside get himself lined up again because he'll probably sneak priority over white because he's going to get out there first so there's a line that the judges will be looking at that uh, determines where the priority line starts from if you like so there could be a battle, paddle battle no one's got priority, two people paddling out, and it's the first person to get past that line where the judges deem the line is, that will set up priority. So the judges will have a, a line, or certainly not the judges, the priority judge. They've got their own role to do, and they will set up that line in their head of where priority line starts from. So the scores there, there's no change of situation, but we've got Red Craig McLaughlin is in first position with... Hamper, Andrew McLeod in 6.64. And yellow in third, Donald Peace. And we've got white, Eben Parkin is in fourth. And you'll see the next surfers paddling out. So they got a five minute window to paddle out. So if you do see a load of other surfers in the same color of rash vest going out there, it means the next heat is getting ready. So that'll be heat number two. Because this is the open men round one, heat one, and heat two will be starting in under two minutes. They'll give it a little bit of a breather just to clear the water, and then you'll hear a double klaxon to end this first heat, and a single klaxon will start the next heat. Important for those out in the water because uh, they get to understand what's going on. They can see priority boards, they can see discs. We've got discs for five minutes remaining. They will have their watches to let them know when the heat is up. Some might not have watches, so they need to know by these boards and all the commentary coming from the beach. So with one minute remaining coming up, we have got Craig McLaughlin in first. We've got Andrew McLeod in second. We get Donald Peace in third, so Craig McLaughlin in red, Andrew McLeod in blue, Donald Peace in yellow in third, and Evan Parkin in fourth, with one minute remaining. One minute remaining. Just great to see clean conditions up here at Thurso East. Onto this slab. A tourist formidable bit of slab here in the Caithness slab. We have Craig McLaughlin setting himself up, got himself in positions, got the takeoff. 
nice off the face, trying to get around that last section. Can he make it? Still fighting to ride this one out. Will the judges deem that as a ride out? We'll see. It was a great off the lip hit into a big bottom turn to then try and get around the section, but wobbly on his feet. So will that score high? Will they call it a completion? We will find out with the next score. So his best in red is a 5.83, second best a 3.57. So let's see what that one off the lip was. It deemed a ride out and completion. And we're just coming up to the end of this open men round one and the klaxon is about to go off so well served from everyone out there it looks like that was a better score for that last wave on the buzzer there from red craig mclaughlin so it's certainly seen him go through with andrew mcleod in second going through and there'll be a repercharge situation for the remainders so they can get another shot at this so there's me on camera you can see how this, all this is done this big fluffy thing called the microphone right next to me my phone's keeping me with live updates i have one down here too like to have backups and i can see what you're all seeing so i hope you're enjoying and yeah here we are at thursday east it's epic cheers And we are back into it. Open Ren, round one, heat two. We have Mark Cameron straight away, starting off. Bang, into the pocket, gets the hit. That's Mark Cameron, or Scratch, known as. And we have a takeoff in yellow, just coming unstuck with Joel Carlton. Scratch is still riding this all the way through. He's got a nice little snap and slide off there with a fin release. A nice first wave there for Mark Cameron to kick off his heat number two, his first opener for this competition he got some good action throughout that wave a nice fin release with a tail slide in one of those top sections of the wave I'm waiting for scores Joel, Joel got a pretty big hefty takeoff there not quite making it to the bottom coming a little bit unstuck but certainly good to get those ones out of the way first it's uh, it just settles your nerves a little bit we have White having a look Kieran Fosbrook Kieran's got this wave, he's up and riding on his backhand. Trying to get a little snappy turn in the pocket, just bogging a rail slightly. Maybe the wave's just backed off in power for that one for him. It's not running the best on the inside, so... But he's certainly got a first wave, it's going to score, and that's what he needs. Get the first one in the bag, and work the rest thereafter. So we just see there, on the replay with Kieran, trying to get his arms to lead where he's going to go. You're going to see how it bogs a little bit in that white water, but 
Yeah, certainly three scores from three surfers. So one still to score. So in blue, we'll be Colin Buchan. So yes, in red, we've got Mark Cameron from Brock Surf Club. In white, we've got Kieran Frostbrook, North Shore Surf Club. We've got Joel Carlton in yellow, Bellhaven Surf Club. And we've got Colin Buchan in blue from Aberdeen Surf Club. So we're just waiting on scores to come through for those first exchanges. We have yellow, Joel Carlton's up and riding. He's managed to get himself back out there, a big bottom turn and just punches through the face of that wave, just seeing how it's going to shut down in front of him, he's not going to make the section, so chooses to just get the paddle in early and get out the back and reposition. So a bit of action there for the judges to be dealing with straight away. Been in that position, hard work. Been in the priority position, hard work. You've got to keep your eyes on everything going on all the time. We have White having a loop with Kieran Fosbrook. Got himself in position again. Getting the takeoff, he's got a backhand turn into that face. Going to see if this still opens out for him. See if he can work the inside section. I think it's just going to pitter out, and he's just going to kick out of that one. And we have red. Mark Cameron's just got a nice takeoff there in that last section, gathering some speed. Nice roundhouse back into the white face. Bottom turn, checking the speed again. So three big solid turns there, a little snap on the end of that one. Going to kick out, get out past on that shoulder. A lot of action there for the judges to be dealing with. And we have White just in this replay with Corrin. Here comes his first roundhouse. Just a little extension through the knees there, just to get a little snap off of that board. So he's get some power into that turn. So ideally looking to throw some spray for the judges. That's going to score high for him if you can get some spray out there. Vertical turns in the critical spot with some speed. We want some good power with it. And if you can release fins at the bottom of your turn, the bottom turn is highly important. It gets your compression and sets up your top turn going into the face of the wave. And it's quite nice, they've got a little bit of a, a breather here as they wait for those sets to come through. We have Mark Cameron scratch on screen at the moment. Trying to hold that nice consistent turn into the white water pocket. So a nice roundhouse. Trying to lean with that front, lead with that front hand, see how he's opening up through the chest. Managed to get three or four, he got a nice little snap on this last one. There it is, a little check just at the end. So it throws a little bit of spray. Gets the fins to do the work and lets the judges know he's got some power in that turn. So we've got our first scores come through for Scratch, which is 5.33 in his first wave. Kieran Frosbrook pulling in a 1.17 in his first wave. He's got about two or three to get scored, actually. So we'll see what the rest come through at. Yellow was that first takeoff in that... Foam ball pocket drop, so he's picked up a 0.67 getting to his feet for that one. Maybe just riding out, might not have fully ridden out that one, so not score too highly for getting to the feet at that point. And Blue having a look, Colin Buchan just having a look in this inside section. Got to his feet. He's going to kick out of this one, he might work that inside section with Blue. Still working out on the inside. Red, you are in third position. Heat total 9.33. In second, white. Heat total He's got another check turn just on the inside there in that first wave. He's got a big paddle to come out now, though. And we have yellow taking off. Joel's just coming down in that white water takeoff. So Reds looks like he's picked up some two solid scores. He can now sit on and hold on to that. We can just see blue on screen at the moment. Red is taking off in the background. Wow, oh, just coming unstuck in that big takeoff. But he's certainly loaded up two cracking scores to see him 
sitting in top position at the moment. The first one of 5.33 and the second of 4.00. So that check turn at the end might have made the difference between us a point there. So working the wave well. Kieran Fosbrook, Fosbrook sorry, in second with 3.50, so a 1.17, a slightly better score with a couple of turns on his 2.33. So it's great just to have the Nationals up here in uh, Thurso breaking on the slab for the 2024 Scottish Nationals. The Scottish Surf Federation sanctioned the event. And 3CI Sports looking after all your video coverage on Facebook and YouTube. So live stream is on. I hope you're all there and watching. Share with family, friends, relatives, best mates. Let's try and get these viewing ratings up there. You may all be surfing somewhere else as well, but you can pick up with most phones nowadays with an unlimited package. You can pick up. Uh, there you go. You can see me with my phone and my unlimited package picking up. Sounds a bit wrong. I'll not say that again. Picking up all the results live. So uh, you can watch from wherever. We're watching from this beautiful point, from the GoPro angle. You can see it in the panoramic. Stunning sight we're at. Stunning. Super lucky up here with uh, Thurso. They've got a fantastic bespoke built building right here on one of the best reefs in Britain. So yeah. What else? Other sponsors we got? We got Jacobs, we got Sea Monster. We got Christian Surfers. There's one there, it's the olive tree. Good to see. The more support, the better. And yeah, we did have a chat about Lost Shore. Lost Shore is going to be opening up. So Lost Shore is going to be based in between Glasgow and Edinburgh, more closer to Edinburgh at Ratho. So there's a team working in that. They have been for years trying to get that up and set up, set up and live and working and going. It is going to be going. It will be opening, fingers crossed, August 2024. So well looking forward to that. I've been lucky enough to bag some tickets on the early bird purchase. So I'm looking forward to getting down there. I've surfed a couple of the artificial waves. And uh, yeah, it's, it's superb. It's just a nice game changer. You can coach really well from the sidelines. It just sets athletes up to be able to identify immediately like a bottom turn or compression through the knees or hands open and wide looking down the line so it's a great coaching tool without a doubt and we are getting one in Scotland it's going to be one of the, the biggest I think it's a 20, 28 second wave ride I've heard that's perfect take that for sure so yeah keep an eye on that one if you're not liking and following that get onto that one Lost Shore have a look See what the progression's like. I know there's jobs being advertised there now, so that is a total next step. But let's get back to this heat we've got on the water. We've got in red, Mark Cameron in first one, 9.33. And white, Kieran Fosbrook with a 3.50. There's a second place. Blue in third place, Colin Buchan with a 1.80. And yellow, Joe Carlton with a 1.70 in fourth. I think I said Colin there with a 1.70. It's a 1.80 for Colin. He's requiring a 1.71 to move or progress through to the next round. Directly through. Or he goes into the repercharge. The repercharge is basically another crack of the whip. So if you don't get through in these first top two, top two will go through. The repercharge will set you up to try it out again and see if you can make it in that second set. So I hope you've got the weather like we've got up here in Thurso, wherever you are surfing in Scotland, and some people have got around the world, you probably have sunshine and warm water. Up here we've got the winter swells. So the water temperature is probably sitting around about, ah, let's say, 6 degrees centigrade. We've got a river flow coming out onto this break at Thurso East, and there's Colin up and riding in blue. Takes bottom turn, can't quite make it around that section. He's going to work to do it, or is he going to kick out early? There's the kick out, so he can get himself repositioned. He's got 8 minutes 30 remaining. And White's having a look. It's quite deep in this takeoff. 
maybe a bit too deep. They might get around the section. Now, going to choose to bail out of that one. So Kieran, possibly a little deep in that takeoff. But going for it, fully committed, as we like to see. And you'll probably see me if you go to that live camera facing me. It'll be me standing with my hand in my pocket to keep one hand warm and the other one on the phone. I'll be switching side to side. But yeah, that's the things we have to do for you guys. 3CI, I've got it sorted. We've got a, an athlete announcer at the other end of this break. So I can hear them over the, the slight wind. We've got a cross shore wind actually kicking in at the moment. So yeah, I can hear Dan Parking giving us some loud words of wisdom down there. Letting all the athletes know what's going on in the water. They have discs, they have priority discs that lets them know what position they're in for priority so they can get the wave first or they have a first choice of the wave if you like. They've also got a five minute warning disc, they've got a heat live disc. So there's a lot going on that people might not know about. Their ultimate goal is to get the top two wave scores to be the best. And we just got a lull. So the lull set waves normally come in about up here, five to seven set waves come through. Then there's a bit of a lull. Set waves meaning there's the bigger waves in the the set. So like the fourth wave will probably be the rogue wave out of them all. And we have yellow just having a look. So that little paddle there, there won't change his positioning and priority. Actually, it will because he was sitting third priority. So he might change priority position by that paddle. So he's going to go for another one again and choosing not to go for that either. So they can go, fourth priority, you can just keep on going for a wave. As long as you're not interfering with anyone else, it means you can have a go at each of them. When you're in first priority and you're sitting waiting for a wave and you paddle for it, don't make it, you've just lost that for first priority. So yeah, it's a tactical battle out there as well as surfing, as well as energy levels, as well as right equipment. Correct, wetsuits. Some of them might be surfing a summer wetsuit out there. Just because they know they've got a 20-minute heat or a 15-minute heat, they don't need to be in the water for so long. Therefore, they don't want a thicker neoprene to restrict their movements. We have scratch up and riding. Bottom turn there. It's a nice open arm. What, a bit of close contact there, potentially. I think it should have been clear and all right. So Mark Cameron still... There's a nice finish off the face of that last turn by scratch. And we have Kieran Frosbrook following him up on the next wave, trying to get some speed here, coming back in the pocket. There's a white face turned, just comes unstuck. So that will not get a score there with that one. Um, so yeah, he'll get a score, sorry, but it might not be a completion score, which is what they're after. Yeah, but a nice wave there from scratch in red, Mark Cameron. That was a nice little snag tag at the, snag tag at the end there on the finish of that wave. Nice. So we're coming up for five minutes remaining. This is where it starts to get tactical. A bit more critical for the surfers to be selective. We have Blue having a look. Colin's got to his feet. The wave just dying out of them there. So a little wave of the hand, not too happy about that one. So with under five minutes to go, we've got Mark Cameron in red and first with a 9.50. We see him live on screen at the moment. There's just a little close setup there, just sneaking around the side of that paddler. Now we're not sure what the judges will look at that. So you can get a paddle interference if it's going to hinder the wave. It looks like he's completing the wave thereafter, but if it's a paddle interference, it means blue will be marked down on their highest scoring wave. We'll see what the judges decide with that if it did have an interference. Because it was a very close call. Did Mark have to check speed? Did he have to reposition on the wave? So unsure, we'll see what the judges call.
So the way it works in the judges' tower, if there wasn't interference, they'll all have a mark next to that, and they'll, they'll recognise that in the judges' tower. They'll discuss it. They may be reviewing it. And they'll see if it actually made any difference to that surfer scratch on that wave. So the last wave scratch did get wasn't as second it wasn't as best. It's the second best, so it scored highly at a 4.17. So he's staying in first position at the moment, with White in second, Kieran Fosbrook with a 5.46 heat total. Blue with a third position, the 2.6, but it just needs to see if there's going to be an interference call. And in fourth position, we've got yellow, yellow with a 1.70. So under 2.30 remaining here, 2 minutes 30 remaining, we've got Oscar in the water there with his water housing and water camera. We've got Blue having a look at this wave, not quite getting into it. So Oscar will hopefully be getting some images out there in the water for us. And uh, there'll be a review video made which Oscar can nail. His team are on point with uh, doing some editing and pulling it all together. We have Blue Colin having a look. He's got to his feet. Nice takeoff. He needs to get a hit off the face here. We've got Kieran Fosbrook in the background having a look as well. He's up on his feet on his backhand. Having a look to Oscar. He's got a nice little spray onto Oscar's camera there. Colin's still riding that inside section. Both straight lining at the moment. And we'll see how that scores. A little bit of action on the waves, not big critical manoeuvres, but certainly up and riding and making the most out of the waves that they could do there. We could just see Colin on that wave. You can see just trying to get rail to rail, just putting the rail in, taking off, putting the rail in. It's just trying to get some drive through the water. So the drive through the water gets a bit of speed. It means you can line up for a manoeuvre. And Kieran's the same years take off. Oh, sorry, we're on live with Joel Carlton. Oh, I just bogging a rail there in the top of that turn. Because sometimes the waves can just hold a nice face. They can hold a face that backs off. Just got to read what's going on there and stay in that white pocket. White pocket's where all your power is. But super, superb up here. What a setting we have. Hosting this national championships. Little flailing arms there we can see from Joel in that last wave you just saw in your replay. 10 second counter about to kick in. And it looks like there's no review mark next to blue at the moment. So I think they've given that a clear. Five, four, three, two, one. And that is the end of Heat 2 for Open Men's Round 1 with Mark Cameron and Kieran Fosbrook progressing and Colin and Joel onto Repercharge. We have Heat 3 paddling out in the water and we'll get lined up for that. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, great to have you on board, spread the word, get the comments going, get some chat, get some vibe happening around the Scottish surf scene. And uh, I'm Campbell Scott. I'll keep in touch with you. Cheers.
is ready. Judge is ready. Five, four, three, two, one. And we are live here with Heat 3 of the Open Men's and the Scottish Nationals at Thurso East. In the water in red, we have Craig Sutherland. We have in white, Mark Eden. In yellow, we've got Ben Larg. And in blue, we've got Tam Hoot. Be an interesting battle out here in this setup. With some close local surfers going against each other here. This will be a, a start for Mark Eden, though, in white. So Mark looks after the company Sea Monster that is providing your wetsuit coat hangers. They are epic. If you've not got one, they dry your suits so well because of the way they hang and the way they're designed. So fair play. He's out there surfing it for us today. We're going in blue, just having a punch through that wave, just for the size of it. In red, just getting a little paddle on that white water takeoff. Craig Sutherland, suds. Nice. Roundhouse back into the white water. Arms nice and high, a bit of power. You can see a really nice edge of the rail there going in, just holding that line the whole way around. So it, it keeps us speed and it keeps us flow through that wave. As soon as it gets lumpy and starts getting bouncy on a real turn, you slow down, you don't quite get enough power to make that smack into the white water. So, nice opener from Craig there. Or Suds, as everyone knows. Suds by. And we have in blue, Tam Hood up and riding on his backhand. Just putting the brakes on slightly on that back foot there, maybe slowing down that turn. But what a nice takeoff in that first wave for Tam. From Bellhaven Surf Club. So out there in water, Craig Sutherland in red. Sand End Surf Club. Mark Eden, Lossy Surf Club, Ben Larg, Tyree Surf Club, and Tam Hood, Bellhaven Surf Club. We have Suds up and riding again in red. Holding a speed through that turn on the rail, leading with his arms, gets a nice turn into the face again just before that white water hits, and a wave's just pillowing out at the end there. So two waves in the bag for Suds. A good situation to be in. Now he can pick and choose. He's got two scores on the board. He's put himself in first position. And it means the rest are chasing. So just by taking a little bit of pressure off yourself and forcing the pressure for the other surfers, it means they're going to start to think, I need to get a good scoring wave in here, and they'll get a bit edgy and a bit testy, and that's where your psychology has to kick in. So you can pick and choose. Don't throw things away. So a nice bottom turn, getting up into the face, pulling his knees in position. Second position white, third position blue. So that compression through the knees for the bottom turn, it just sets up the power for the next manoeuvre you're going to do on the wave. We have Tam Hood again looking at the wave here. He's got himself on his feet and his backhand, backhand surfing at Thurza East. You got a nice back turn off it with a bit of power. He's working that with a bit of bounce through the wave, trying to create some speed. He's got a white face to hit off here. There it is. And he's ridden out of that. So a nice little wave there by Tam. He's still going to continue this because it should ride all the way through for him. But he's decided to kick out and doesn't want to do the big paddle. But he's had a little bit of face to play with at the end. But he's making, making a sensible call just to kick out. 
So noticing now, I've just realised that we only have three surfers in this heat. We have got red, Craig Sutherland. We've got white, Mark Eden. And blue, we've got Tam Hood. Yellow is not in this heat. So that's Oscar that's in the water with the camera system. So that's where we're seeing our four surfers in the water. So, uh, yeah. And we have white, white up and running, Mark Eden on his forehand. He's riding regular. Nice little check turn. We've got suds in the background as well, looking at this next wave too. So Mark's still searching for that wave on the inside. He's trying to keep himself riding through it. He's going to kick out, eventually call it at that point. Not sure if he's looking for a ride out or a completion. I think he's just trying to get around that last section. So took a big drop one turn and decided, nope, not for me, and kicked out and went for the next, setting himself up. So basically, he's got himself in priority where, he, where he's sitting at the moment, depending on where the priority line is by the priority judge. But he's being active. He's certainly getting himself active out there. It's a nice set wave forming in the background. And Red's going to catch himself just in the wrong position here. Just has to duck through that one, as they all do. And we got Tam out there with the, the white helmet, you can see. Just a good safety call. It's a slabby reef here, so it can be quite shallow in parts. Left-hander certainly can be shallow up here. They're few and far between, but uh, yeah, they can be quite a shallow reef for the takeoff. Hello, everyone. As you can see, we're all decked up in warm clothing. It's a little bit chilly here, but the microphone's nice and warm, so it's all good. I hope you're enjoying, because it's awesome surfing in the Scottish setup. And it's just nice to see everyone competing against each other. There's our nice panoramic of what we're looking at for everyone out there. And this is Thurzo East we're at today. Thurzo East. So looking over there at Scrabster in the distance, that's the ferry terminal. Northlink Ferry went out earlier on about an hour ago. So, uh, yeah, an active harbour here at Thurzo. So with 12 and a half minutes remaining, we've got Craig Sullen, Suds in first position in red with an 8.33 heat total. Mark Yoden in second with a 4.7 heat total. He's in white. Tam Hood in third with a 3.07 heat total. He needs 1.91 to progress. He will still get repper charge, which means a second serve for him anyway, if he stays in that third position. But he only needs a 1.91 to move into second position. So spread the word out there live on Facebook and YouTube. Let everyone know we are up and running. Get as much support as we can through this. It helps out our sponsorships. We have up and riding in red, suds again. Bottom turn, he's got a bit of speed through that. Just gonna kick out, seeing the face is not gonna do much. He's maybe thinking the cameraman might be in a position he'll get a bottom turn, or he's just reading the way the, the wave is going down the line. It's not enough power, and he's wanting something better. He is allowed to be selective. He's got two scores. He's in the lead. He's being active in the water. We've got White now having a look, so that's Mark. Gets the bottom turn. Comes into the white pocket. Trying to hunt as much speed as he can. Again, just doing check turns off the top. And kicking out at the end on that shoulder. And we have a paddler waving out the back there, so that's a situation update. It lets everyone know in the water what's going on. And we will at some point throughout the day get some interviews going on with some of the surfers. We'll get them live stream so you can see what's going on, how they're getting on the water, how it feels. We've got Tam sitting in position there, he's maybe going to have a look at this wave. But Suds is on the inside, just deciding, no, I'm sitting in first position, I'm quite happy. I'm just seeing White's wave there, so Mark's wave on that replay. 
And there's some of our sponsor banners there for you, Mystique, Sea Monster. Yeah, we've got a load, eh? Dune Ray, we've got Highland Council, 3CI Sport, looking after everything you've got, Foundation Scotland. NDA in there as well. Oh, we've got Tam up and riding, sorry about that. Just trying to gather some speed with a bit of a, a bounce to the wave. Suds in the background taking off deep, a nice takeoff in that background, well ridden through with Tam, is trying to complete. He has ridden out. And Suds in the pocket, just coming unstuck, but that was a ride out by Tam. So uh, that'll be a completion. And we've got under 10 minutes remaining. It's great to see all the surfers getting together as well over, all over Scotland. Because they're all mates. They all like this friendly rivalry. We've got up and riding Tam at the moment on our replay. There's a big bottom turn in his backhand. Trying to pull himself into the white face again. You can see he's looking for some speed. Just wants to get a bit of a punch off that white water. But this is, you'll see him get a manoeuvre here and get the right out. So he's going for the completion. There's a bottom turn up into the face. And this is where he's looking for his right out. So will the judges call it a completion? He's still looking. He's still on his feet. He's suddenly going to get taken away by the white water. And that is him down. So it's up to the judges there to make that call. Was that a completion? It was a pretty critical hit off the top of that face into a re-entry. So he... Nearly got a bit of air time there coming into it. But yeah, we'll let the judge decide if that was a completion. It looks like it was a pretty good score in the last one, so I think it was a call. So his last one was a 3.40, so well done, Tam. So Tam, certainly the younger surfer out of those older gents are in the water. So we won't go through any ages, but I'm pretty sure Sam, uh, Tam is the youngest one there. That's Mark having a, a paddle into this wave, a big bottom turn. Trying to get some power through it. He's got it there, he's staying in that white face, the white water, just to keep the power sitting on that back foot. And not really getting much out of that wave. A couple of turns, so a nice takeoff. And it is also about selecting good waves here as well. That'll be noted for a set wave or the size of wave you're picking off as, a, as an athlete in the water. Blue, 
you require 2.95. Blue, you require 2.95 to move into second position. Red, first priority. White, second priority. Blue, third priority. So we've got under five minutes remaining in this heat three of the open mend. And that means under five minutes remaining, the next heat is getting in the water. So at the moment, current standings are in red. Craig Sutherland is leading with a heat total of 8.33. In white and second with a heat total of 6.34 is Mark Eden. And in blue with a heat total of 6.07 is Tam Hood, who needs a 2.95 to move through to the next round. He will get a chance to the repper charge, though, if he stays in that position. But he's ideally looking to get a 2.95. So his best wave is certainly been above that and the second best wave has certainly been above that uh, just under that score sorry so he has got the potential to get through in the next four minutes and this is where you start to play with priority to see who's got priority and we've got red has got first priority we've got blue has got second priority and white with third priority so tam can let suds take away suds might just be sitting there in red knowing he's got under four minutes to do and he can now either start thinking about blocking anyone that's getting close to him but he's pretty safe through at the moment so he can pick and choose and that's the way he can tactically play out this heat if you feel there's a, there's a threat of someone going to take his first position he can then paddle into that wave and stop that challenger taking that wave score so it's all tactics in the last five. Three of them in the water, though. And they're all setting themselves up for this potential face that's coming through. And letting it run by. But there is a couple of set waves forming in the background. Look at that open face, unsurfed at the moment, coming through. There's one just behind it, about to do exactly the same. This is where it might be tactics as well, so Suds could play a tactical game of paddling around and moving position, and others might follow him and put them out of position. So it's, it's tactics in the last three minutes or so. Great to see. And Marks just got himself to his feet there. He sneaked one there under priority. So he was third priority, he's got a nice off the face turn there. So it's just off the lip, so did he get fin release in the top of that? But certainly a, a pretty nice wave. We'll see how that score comes through as. He's got a 4.77 to get him to first position. Under two minutes to go. So Red's now committed to this. It's taking off on a nice face wave. He's got a bit of speed. He's going to take a round house potentially. Oh no, he's going to ride all the way through. Hit into that pocket. And deciding to play the let's go for it attitude as opposed to tactics and sit and hold and wait on a wave. He may just run this one all the way to the shore knowing there's just over one minute to go. He'll have a look probably from the inside. He's still surfing that all the way through. He's about four turns right to the finish. He's checking his watch. And I suspect Suds might not venture with the paddle out. He'll just hold in the shallows and see what happens. So Tam's up next. He's in position. Is he going to get into this face though? He's working hard and not quite making it. So Mark, there's been a situation change. Depending on what the next score for red is going to come through as, but Mark has certainly jumped into first place with that last score of 5.5. .5. But we'll see, there might be a, a re-switch with red with their last wave that came through. But as it stands at the moment, white is leading in first, Mark. And Craig Suds is in second, but still waiting on a score. And then we have Tam with a takeoff. A turn into the face. And we have White again. It was a nice face turn there from Tam Hood. So Tam was requiring a 4.93 to move through. 
And with that turn, he may have just got something in with that. So this is right down to the last seconds on these waves. Brilliant. Three, two, one. A great heat there. Lots of activity going on. Bit of change in the situation in the last minute. And we're still waiting for a score coming through for red. And we'll certainly be waiting for a score coming through for blue. They got a nice critical turn off the face and into the lip there. So yeah, it's, uh, it's always good to see a bit of competitive edge right in the last minute. It shows the tactical side they're all working to. So that was an exchange at the top, or a situation change at the top there. And it might be a rechange again, but we have to wait and see. Oh, that's what it's all about. Welcome, everyone, on Facebook and on YouTube. Great to have you here up in Thurzo. 3CI Sports delivering for you with this live feed. And looking after me by arriving with granola bars and bananas. Sweet! Anyway, speak to you all soon. Cheers! So our last heat there, it was a white to win with Mark Eden winning that one and that was exchanged in the last minute, a heat change. And then we've got uh, Suds and Red came second. So that actually sets them up for the next rounds of where they scored. So it can either make it an easier or harder setup in some cases, some people think. So yeah, so we just see Suds and Mark exchanging a little hands with each other there. So a great exchange with the two of them in the last minute. Tam as well. That finisher on that lip was superb. So fair play for Tam as well, throwing in there in the last seconds. We have the next heat is in the water. Finn Clark. In red. Rudy Farkerson in white. Jamie Bain in yellow. And Dylan Fogarty McDonald in blue. So Finn Clark from East Coast Board Riders Surf Club, Rudy Farkerson from Belhaven Surf Club, Jamie Bain from Brock Surf Club, and Dylan Fogarty McDonald from North Shore Surf Club. We are away to kick off this heat four. Our first paddle from Jamie Bain looking like, and he's got himself to his feet in that first takeoff. Big open face, almost coming over the head there. He's got a nice wrap turn into that one, trying to get some spray, chasing the section. Still looking for the inside, he might get a finish on this. But a nice opener for Jamie to kick things off. And here's the finish, bang. Just coming unstuck, not making the ride through. We've got White now, Rudy Farkson having a look. He's got to his feet on his backhand. Taking the bottom turn, setting up into the face pocket, just checking a little bit, just so he doesn't get hit by the white lip, but coming unstuck with a bit of bounce on the wave. Two exchanges in the first 40 seconds. Spot on, this is what it's all about. Welcome to Thurzo East. I'm Campbell, I'm the one that talks non-stop. 3CI Sports looking after how I do that. We have Jamie Bain there just on screen at the moment. Nice little spray there, that'll be noted by the judges coming back into the pocket in a nice compressed position. Getting those arms to try and drive some power as well as the board rail to rail. Beating the white section. Looking for another face turn. Just a little check there. Just so he doesn't slow up and bog into the white face. He's still thinking about another section about to open up. So he can make a, a hit on this next face arriving. So that's what he's looking for. Right to the finish. And here it is. There's the hit. Just unfortunately timing it with that curl coming over. So we just get shut down on. But looking for a finish score, and that finish score would be completed with a ride out. And then that's big scores. So welcome to all those listening, watching live. Great to have you. So a couple of scores have been put in place. Jamie with that last one, a 3.83 for his first opening score. So that's Jamie from Brock Surf Club in yellow. His first score and secured under the belt. The 
We've got Rudy Farkerson waiting for his score from Belhaven Surf Club. And that sets them up. It eases the nerves. Always say it, but it's a great psychological thing to do. Get that first wave under the belt, get a score, then get your second, then start to relax and work the situation. Little bit of breeze picking up here up at Thurzo. Not bad, cross shore at the moment. All surfers just getting caught on the inside of that wave coming through. And Rui's got a 0.83 on that first opening score. And Finn Clark from East Coast Board Riders just having a look there and missing out on it. But we have in blue, Dylan Forward and McDonald getting to his feet on the front hand. So a right hand wave for him is his front side. A little check turn into the pocket, just going to beat the section off the lip into a re-entry. That'll score. Critical manoeuvre. Getting pushed by the face of the white water lip and landing in the position and continuing on through the wave. So we've completed that. Still riding through this end section. Still working it to the end and just coming unstuck on that last section. We'll see what that score does with the judges. See lining up that bottom turn. A little roundhouse check, bring him into the white water pocket again. Now he's looking for that off the face turn. Here it comes. There it is, a nice little kick and there's a small air landing. And we have Finn up and riding. And there's two up and riding now. We have Jamie Bain in the background as well. So let's look at Finn all the way through this. Still working that inside section. Jamie having to make it round. A little closeout section there. But Jamie got a nice little hit off the top, so all good. So we can see that wave from Dylan. That hit off the face has put a nice 5.5 score in place for him. So a great opener for Dylan. And Rudy's up and riding now on his backhand. Trying to keep on with the power and speed at the bottom of those waves. Just making sure it doesn't bog rail, just coming unstuck in that inside section. So Dylan's leading at the moment. We're still waiting for a wave from Jamie Bain to be scored. So a 5.5 for Dylan's opening wave, that's brilliant. That was the off the face airdrop he got. And Jamie's just switched around the situation change. So his last wave is a 2.0, which gives us a total of 5.83 for two waves. So Dylan's got one wave of a 5.5. And uh, Jamie's got two waves, heat total of a 5.83. So it puts him in first position as the top two waves of your heat get scored. That's the ones that are going to put your score to the highest point. The top two waves. And Finn's first opening waves are 3.17 with Rudy Farkson having a heat total of two waves together of a 2.83. You can see the slightly rounded nose board there from Rudy Farkson. That's his equipment of choice today. 
So it might just have a little bit more volume at the front end to get him into the waves earlier. These guys normally have boards sitting down on the reef or just at a situation where they can come straight back in to get a, a caddy board, if you like, a board ready to go. And Red having a look here, just having a turn and go, so he's still probably going to be in position to hold priority over White, because White's still coming out. Blue's in position here with a takeoff, a nice takeoff. So Dylan's just got a check turn into that face again, so another critical manoeuvre. Can he make the section? I think he's going to try and kick out. So pretty critical takeoff there from Dylan, but that will seal probably a a first place jump at the moment just because that'll be adding on to his first wave score of 5.5 so it'll put him into first position with add-on second wave score which it has done so it's put blue in first with a 7.63 heat total yellow in second with a 5.83 heat total so it's just that it can be a small score needed to jump that position which we've just seen there And Finn just getting himself turned quickly to get into that wave. Trying to find some speed. Can he get a little hit off the face? There it is. Throws a bit of spray and not ridden out, unfortunately. Just coming unstuck. Released the fins a little bit with a bounce after it. Which maybe just threw his balance slightly. But a great speed turn commitment to get in there. So it's a 2.4 for a red's last wave. So it keeps him in third position. But very close behind yellow with a 5.83 for yellow and a 5.57 for red. It's a requiring score you need to look at. That's, uh, I might have to stop everything because I've just seen some hot cross buns arriving around the corner for Marcel. Epic. And we have Rudy up and riding. Just a nice curvy turn with that board he's got. So you can just see Rory's carvy turn on camera right now. We have set waves arriving in the background though. Are they positioned to be able to take this wave? They, we might just caught it caught on the inside. So it's certainly getting a little bit sizable now. It's, getting, it's picking up a little bit more. Cross shore wind just throwing a couple of ripples through the face of the wave. But still pretty clean, still pretty nice for Thurzo East here at the 2024 Scottish Nationals with the Scottish Surfing Federation being hosted by, three, by uh, Thurzo East and all live being hosted by 3CI Sport. I mean, to be picking up, picking up signal from where we are right now is ace. Five cameras you guys are getting to see through. We will get some interviews of athletes at some point soon, I'm hoping. So it's got to be one of those weekends, I think we've all got to be careful, where when it's production team and uh, judging team and helping staff and volunteers, what they bring round in tray breaks is quite incredible and it's... It's worrying for me because I love a tray bake. What I'm looking at right now is half a cinnamon roll with it looks like caramel on top. There's a hot cross bun, a croissant, and I think it's something called a yum yum or it's a, an iced, an iced soft, I don't know. Oh, hang on, no, I'm not having any of them. The production team have just taken them all. All right, thanks. Only joking, only joking. It's all good. Let's get back to the surfing.
So at present we've got in blue Dylan Fogarty McDonald leading with a 7.63 heat total. Yellow Jamie Bain with a 5.83 heat total. And we have blue up and riding. Dylan taking another wave. A nice bit of turn in that bottom turn there. Looking for the face to get hit off. Gets it. And gets a white wall foam ride but just comes unstuck on that one. So looking for a white wall foam ride as well to finish on. That's the, maybe the way you can work a section if it's broken in front of you you can get a white wall foam ride right over the top of it or get a nice floaty air turn into it air turn sorry a floaty white wall turn into it and come out and ride it out so just a way to deal with a section to get a score out of but certainly a nice off the lip hit from Dylan looks like that's a signature for him up here in Thurso East so North Shore Surf Club so this will be a, a, an area he's riding all the time So his best is a 5.50 at the moment. And we'll see if that last wave changes that slightly. I'm sure it'll change his heat total, it'll punch him up slightly more. But let's get the judges to decide that one. I'm not in my judging hat today or my priority board. I'm just here to fill your ears with noise, I think. It might be entertainment. I'm hoping it is. So the judge is having a, a confab about that. Head judge might be having a look and overseeing that. So all good. And still waiting for that heat total to be changed for blue. I have Oscar in front of me here who was in the water. Let's get him in for a quick. He's dealing with his camera at the moment, but it's always good to speak to these totally on the ground guys that look after your knees. But we'll have a look at red riding first of all. Just coming unstuck with that wave. Let's get Oscar here in for a quick, uh, quick chat. Can we everyone see him on camera? We get Oscar in for a chat on this uh, camera system. Here he is. How you doing, Cam? Good, yeah, man. How's you? Yeah, good. Pretty chilly. We're just having a look here to see if we can get the, the camera for us. There he is. There we are. Oh, big guy. How are you? <laughs> you well, so tell you? me about the water out there. Uh, pretty chilly. Pretty chilly. What are we talking? How chilly? What thickness of wetsuit are you in? So you're basically in the water, holding a camera housing, trying to avoid surfers and get in the best position, basically, to get the shot. Is that correct? Yeah, basically, I'm, I'm sat in everyone's way, trying not to be in everyone's way, getting some shots of them surfing. Uh, there's not too much current. There's a pretty consistent waves this weekend. Um, good size, nothing too heavy, nothing too hectic, not much current. It's good fun. Good stuff in your wetsuit wet thickness. What are we wearing here? Uh, I was in a 5.4 then, but I think I'm going for the 6.5 next time because that was a little bit cold on the colder side for sure. And so how long were you in the water? Was that 20? You were for two heats, three heats there? Two, two and a half heats. And then I took four waves on the head and I got a full flush. So I thought I'd come in. Yeah. <laughs> Fair play. He's earning his cinnamon rolls without a doubt. Well, here, I won't stop you. I'll let you get setting up for camera system. Cheers. Thanks for speaking. Cheers. I'll speak to you soon. So we're sitting with just under three and a half minutes remaining in this heat. So that was a 3.4 score for Blue that did bump his heat total up. So first place in Blue, we've got, sorry, I'm just going to have a commentate on yellow riding here. So Jamie's up and riding again. Oh, he just coming on start. It was a bounce in that wave he just hit. But holding position in second at the moment. So yes, first place in blue, Dylan Forger to McDonald with an 8.90 heat total. Second, we get Jamie Bain with a heat total of 5.83. He's in yellow. Red Finn Clark with a heat total of 5.57. He needs a 2.67 to go over Jamie um, to progress. 
but we do have the repper charge as well, so all are going to get through for another surf. And Ruri Farkasen in fourth with a 4.13 heat total. So just under three minutes remaining. I've just been handed a coffee. That's a win. I'm seeing someone out there. So that is Dylan is not sure if he's just taken his hood down or if he has been riding this whole heat without a hood. But this is where I'm saying some might be going out in a a summer suit or a four mil, five mil. Um, yeah, we'll see. But certainly our, our cameraman in the water was in a five mil. Fair play. It's over an hour and then four waves in the head and a set wave down the chest. It's always got to be a chilly one. Up and riding in white, Rudy Farkasen. Nice off the top turn, he holds it. There's a bit of spray, he got a punchy hit there. We'll see what the judges score with that. He's riding through this section. Wonder if he's now coming in, he's deciding to go to prone position. I think he's coming in on that one. So a 5.5 and a 3.4 for a blue to be in first position right now. And yellow's in second position with a 3.83 and a 2 for his second position for Jamie. That wind is slightly picking up in the cross shore now. You can see the lumpiness in the face starting to happen. It's still pretty good, but it was super clean first thing this morning. So just coming up for the one minute remaining. And we can just see that off the lip turn from Rudy Farkson there. And here he's coming for the ride in on that last section. We've got activity going on. Red having a look out the back with Finn. Just seeing what's happening. Can he get himself in a position for this? He's got the takeoff spot. He's decided to go for it on his front hand. Airs into the pocket. Coming back again into the white ball. Just bogs a rail. Loses a bit of power through the wave. So both of those elements together just mean he kicks out the back and has to go and reposition. He was hitting a 5.08 to get through to second place. Would that top turn be enough? I'm not quite sure. And we have yellow in position. So that's Jamie to his feet. Trying to get around the section. Here comes the hit. There it is. A nice snap on that first front side turn. Looking for the next one. He's made the section. So that's... It's going to ride this all the way through. And he's hitting at 5.08 to progress into first position. Will progress through this heat, though, judging by those scores that have come through. And, yeah, a pretty good uh, heat four there from the round, from the men's round. Heat five in the water and getting himself positioned. But looking at it at the moment... Dylan Fogarty McDonald's gone through in first in blue, Jamie in second in yellow, and Finn Clark and Rudy Farkson for the repper charge. And Heat 5 is live. The Scottish Nationals, men's round one. With an interesting lineup in the water, Mark Boyd in red for the North Shore Surf Club. Ross Brown in white from the Tyree Surf Club. Cal Burns in yellow, Belhaven Surf Club. 
and Jamie Sutherland in blue from Sand End Surf Club. So heat is underway. Let's see what happens. We've got a local boy out there, Mark Boyd, who's Scottish champion many times up here. So let's see how this one goes down. And we have Mark Boyd having a look for the first wave. So get that one under his belt. There it is. There's a vertical hit off the face. So a lot of spray coming off that wave meant a lot of power going through that. But a nice opener for Mark. That'll settle the nerves. Still working that wave on the inside, using the white foam ball to find the power. Still getting some snap turns all the way through it. And when will he kick out? He's still looking for the inside section. One finishing section. Here it comes. And bang, hits it, rides out, makes sure he's landed it. So that's a completion, but his first vertical hit was a cracker. He'll take that. We may get a replay of that, everyone, to see what's going on. We got a bit of a lull with the wave, so let's just see what happens. But a nice opener for Mark. Local knowledge there, it looks like. Read that wave very well. Here we go. Here's a big bottom turn, loading up with power. Smack, vertical board into that face, gets the spray. So that's what the judges are looking for. Nice, critical point in the wave. Rode it all the way through to home. And we may have a wave getting set up for the next rider here. Let's just see. White was up and riding. Just a little check turn. Not much going on there for their first opener. So that was Ross Brown from Tyree Surf Club. And a 0 0.50, just an up and down, and then reset. But Boydie's opener, 6.83. So a great score to start with. We have another wave in the background. We get blue and yellow both paddling for this. So both having a, a paddle for that. Blue not quite making it in. White having a look in the inside of that same wave, but not making it into that one either. That's me. Hi there. Back again dicting my nose from the, the wind coming through. How's everyone doing? You're all watching live on Facebook, you're watching live on YouTube, you're telling your friends, family, relatives all about it, because you should be. This is awesome, because some great surfing going white, having a look at the moment, and they've got to their feet. Getting a wee check turn into the face and riding out of that one. So we got forehand for a surfer at Thursday when they're riding right hand is their left foot forward. So that's a regular surfer, left foot forward. That is their forehand at Thursday East, which is predominantly a right hander. Backhand would be a right foot forward on a goofy surfer riding a right hand wave. There's a lot in there for people that don't know. Basically, you're trying to be chased by the foam ball. And which whatever way you're going away from that foam ball is the direction you're going. So that's a right hand or a left hand. You can work that one out. There's a little check turn into the face. Does land out. Make sure just to pull the, the board underneath. Had a little hand slap there. Just not sure if that was a happiness slap. So Mark Boyd's still on that paddle out. He rode the wave all the way into the inside.
So that's the thing. The choice is to take a long wave all the way in, get maximal score with it, and then face a long paddle back out over and around the shoulder. Or get a couple of quick snap hit turns in, and then kick out and get out to your set up again just to get yourself in position. But Mark decided to take that all the way in, utilize as much of that wave as he possibly could, and certainly got a finishing maneuver on the end. So got him a high score of 6.83. White having a look with Ross Brown and not getting it. With yellow out the back having a look, not getting into that one either. White's in the inside, maybe going to get a hit with the white water. Ross has chosen to do that, but kicks out again. And blue now, Jamie Sutherland up on the feet on their backhand. Just a little bobble there in one of the sections. With a set wave coming in the background, it looks like it's got a bit more size. It might catch all of us out. There's one breaking through at the moment. But there's a bigger set wave coming through in the background, a big glassy face to it. set wave coming through So we've got the sunshine now kicking out up here at Thurzo. On this opening for the Scottish Surf Championships, or the Scottish Nationals, we have Red up and riding. Mark Boyd again has made it out back. Nice bit of power going through two of those turns there. And again, he's deciding to work that wave close to the inside. So he's got a paddle on his hands to get back out to position again. But that's a second score under the bag for Mark Boyd which will settle everything down for him, means he's got two scores which will help out psychology for him it's alright <laughs> lovely set waves coming through here at Thursday East the spray kicking off the back of it Still waiting for that score for Mark Boyd, who's sitting currently in first at the moment with one wave. And a 4.17 has just dropped for Mark. That puts him with a heat total of 11.0, which I think is the best we've had so far in the contest on this first opening day of the Scottish Nationals for 2024. Welcome online. And we have White up and riding. He's managing to get a bit of pick up on that section on the shoulder of the wave. Now trying to find some speed to complete some manoeuvres. Changing foot position slightly, having a think about it, going to kick out and trying to get back out in position. There it is, his take off just on the shoulder of that wave. So it's a safe wave ridden there by Ross. It's a little foot adjustment to have a look and just settle down at the end there. And now we've got the paddle out. So yellow's picked up first priority and the red has got second priority.
So we've got Dan Parkin on the far microphone, just letting all the athletes know what's going on in the water. Important for those guys to know what's going on if they can't see the discs or if they can't understand what position they're in. So you'll have situation update with arms stretched straight out side to side or arm and air saying repeat again, please. Yeah, important for them to know it's a tactical decision. It's under 10 minutes now. So I'd imagine most of them working five, 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 and five. So they do a five minute section, then they'll do another five minute section and then get down to critical last five minute section. And we get yellow up and riding. So that's Cal Burns getting his first wave for this heat. And he'll take a score from that one. So all on the board. You get Jamie Sutherland out there without the hood on, fair play. And the hood's come back on again. So it was a, I think it was a, one of those moments he's wanted to hear situation updates. So currently at the moment, Mark Boyd has got a heat total of 11.00. Ross Brown, he is sitting with the second position at 4.20. And yellow Carl Burns, he's got a 1.67. And Jamie Sutherland in blue with a 0.37. So welcome to the booth. That's where it's all at down here. These guys looking after me over my shoulder. I wonder if we can pan around and see what they're looking like. So it's uh, a computer setup system that you guys won't see normally. And they're Got all the scores coming in. There they are. That's them there. Give us a wave. There's a wave. Sorry for walking by. Hey, <laughs> that was Suds. I might grab him in a second when he gets out his wetsuit. And sorry for up and riding Mark Boyd. Doing his bit in his backhand in the sun, looking for this face to hit. There it is. And just coming unstuck, not quite riding that one through or completion. But a nice little score there. I'm not sure it'd be... Certainly one of his better scores compared to the other two we've got. So a 2.33 taking. So that was a check turn into an off the face just coming unstuck. A little check turn. And there's a little off the face, there it is. Uh, just digging the nose in, getting him unstuck, the board kicking out underneath him at the back. And we have Blue having a look here. Yes, getting into his feet, so Jamie's up and riding. He's got his backhand turn, riding as a goofy out there in the water, just getting caught up in that foam ball. Not quite making it out to make the next bit of power in section. So sun is out. The reef over to my shoulder is breaking as well, which I'm keeping an eye on, but that is shallow. And we have set waves coming through the back here. Position surfers might be out of position. Ross in white could be in the next best position. What's it going to look like for this next wave? Decent set wave coming through. He's going to paddle into it. He's got the takeoff. He's got the drop. Decent wave, got to get that front side turn into it, back into the foam ball. Just maybe riding in too deep, possibly coming unstuck in that one. And kicks out. Certainly a belter of a takeoff and a good set wave. One of the bigger set waves to be ridden here today. So we'll see what that does to his scores. He's getting an 8.73. He'll solidify up his score though. A 1.2 scored. 
So judges certainly looking more for maneuvers than the critical takeoff in the face. So we've got under five minutes remaining. This is where it gets tactical now. This is where priority is going to be shouted a lot. Maybe some hand signals going on. So Red's going to hold the first priority, I suspect, just to keep himself in front. Make sure he's going to get the best waves out this last three and a half minutes. White's having a look on the inside. Ross just turned to have a look. Trying to get the paddle, not quite making it. So at current standings, Mark and Red with 11.0. Ross and White with a 4.20. Cal in yellow with a 1.67 in third position and Jamie Sutherland in blue with a 1.5. So three minutes remaining up here at Thursday East on a sunny day, the north coast of Scotland. Idyllic site for this surf contest. They've got their own bespoke hut made. I say hut, it's a proper established concrete brick built building that's superb, the whole glass front to it that looks out onto this break. So when it is on and the elements are in, you can sit in the warmth and enjoy the views of the surfers out there doing their thing. We have a little paddle battle going on in here. Boyd is deciding to take that one. He's got the takeoff, he had priority. He's hit the pocket turn. Oh, and just coming unstuck, catching the nose in that wave face. But yellow is now going for it as well. He's got the takeoff. A nice, just a cruisy turn down that wave, trying to take it to the end. So two, that's our third turn in there with Cal. So this will probably be one of the better waves out of the two he's got. We've got Blue, Jamie having a look. Maybe a heavy wave to take off on, which he's decided just a bail board. Because he was right in the pocket of the throw there, so smart move there probably to get rid of it and get back into position. We've got two minutes or under two minutes remaining. So as judges were looking for that critical turn in the face of the wave, trying to get as much spray. So hopefully with a bit of speed, the power comes from our bottom turn. The more power we get in that bottom turn, the more vertical we can get that board delivered into the face and we get more spray kicking off the top of that wave. Anything that's going to involve you getting a hit off the lip is going to score you well if you land it and you continue the ride out. Anything that's going to get you a cover up, a barrel, certainly up here at Thursday East, it's known for his perfect barrels. We'll see if that changes at any point today, if people can get into that situation. Swell maybe not just running decent enough or big enough for that barrel, but certainly a decent swell coming through. Possibly direction to do with that as well. But yeah, it's, uh, that's the sort of things the judges are looking for. So 40 seconds remaining, looking like Mar Boyd is safe in red going through. We've got 1.8 needed from yellow here to move into second position. That's Mark Boyd in red up and running again. There's a face turn again just off the lip, just in that pocket. Good bit of speed. Here comes a hit. Nice bit of spray again being noticed by the judges. And we have White having a look out the back. Ross Brown just caught too much on the inside. And as that's coming to the end of this... Heat five, round one of the Open Men up at Thursday East for the Scottish Nationals. Thanks for watching, people, at this time. Keep on watching. Let's spread the word about Facebook Live and YouTube. Thanks to 3CI Sports for handling that side of everything in the broadcasting. <clears throat> and my voice to disappear for a second there. But, yeah, we'll speak to you in Heat 6. Cheers.
E6 up and riding. Riding. E6 live and going. That's probably better. The open men round one. In the water then. Let's have a look. We've got Andrew Robertson. St. Andrew Surf Club in red. In second. Blah, in white. Charlie Pugh from Belhaven Surf Club. We've got in yellow. Ansel Parkin. Belhaven Surf Club. And in blue we've got Chris Clark from North Shore Surf Club. Interesting, actually, watching where some of these competitors paddle out from or enter into the wave from. So quite nice to see how they do in different formats or different positioning. But that's our next heat up and riding, heat six. And that is in the water with 19 minutes to go. Maybe looking for the first wave here in red will be Andrew Robertson, but just finding themselves too deep there. Still no priority set, so you got to just... Make sure we get into that first wave. Chris Clark, I think, in blue, having a look there, deciding to kick out. Get that first one, make it important. So this will be the last heat for the men's open we'll be then going on to the women's open so this is the last round for the men's we have up and riding in red and robertson st andrews surf club pocket hit there it is off the face can he ride it out has ridden it out nice great start made sure the judges could see him finishing that maneuver then kicks out under control so a good open air for Andrew. And up and riding in white, Charlie Pugh. Good solid drop, using his arms for a bit of a ballast there, just to make sure he's balanced and landing it. Just unfortunately getting tangled up under that lip, looking for a hit off that, but it's closed down too early. We did have in blue there, Chris Clark did a, a takeoff. Going to have to paddle himself to get back into second position. So the priority will probably be set now with Ansel Parkin in yellow in first priority. And Chris will get himself into second priority with that kick out and into position. So we get three sets of scores away to drop from the judges. But a nice opener certainly for Andrew Robertson. Charlie Pugh is just unfortunate to not get that face hit he was after he uh, got snuck under the, the lip here's your finish from Andrew Robertson bang head dropping down hips up high legs up high good rotation through the body to complete the ride we have Ansel Parkin up and riding looking for checking for the speeds just unfortunately coming unstuck there didn't quite make it through Red, 5.67, each 
So Andrew Robertson's first opening wave there, 5.67, was certainly decent. We've got Andrew Robertson going for it again. Looking for another hit off the lip. Oh, he got a nice little snap at the bottom of that backhand turn. So there's a couple of good openers there from Andrew Robertson, just trying to solidify those scores. But a 5.67 opener is very good. So some good waves coming through here. Surfers lining up. Chris Clark possibly having a look at this. He's got himself in position. He's got the paddle. He's got to his feet. And here goes Chris on his probably his first wave. He's looking for the hit into the pocket. There it is, a foamy ride. And he's ridden out, so he'll kick out and show the judges that he's got control from that. And we have Charlie Pugh just having a look. He's got to his feet, managed a quick turnaround there. Looking for a bit of power with a bit of bounce through the face. Using his arms to get some rotation through that wave. Sean Robertson's last wave at 2.50. So not so much off the face that, maybe just a white foam ride. And that's what's been checked. Is there a little bit of a paddle battle going on here with the Gromit and the Master? We'll see. And then we're going to get Mark Boyd in after this wave. So Mark, when you come, let's go. And we have Mark Boyd arriving for us on camera. So we're just going to get that live for in a second. So you can all see. Here he is. Well done, Mark. So let's talk about, uh, first of all, in the first 30 seconds, we're talking about 6.83 wave scored. Give us your analysis on that wave. You wrote it quite long. Minute, the tide's high, so you get the opportunity. I've seen a couple of people miss a couple of opportunities, so I just thought you to react quick if you get the chance to hit the lip. So that's what I did, and it paid off. Certainly did. It's certainly a big bottom turn with a nice vertical smash off the lip. You chose to ride all the way into the shores. Give me a reasoning for that. Uh, I've got that first section's where all the scoring potential is, really, but if you're getting to get any other scoring potential, it's kind of just at the very end bit, so you've kind of got to milk it through and just. Yeah, a couple. And you Maybe certainly like half point extra or something at the end. There are certainly a, you got a last hit on the section without a doubt and rolled it out. That right out. Why is that important from a surfing point of view? I mean, I think from a judging perspective, it's just start strong and finish strong on a ride. It leaves a good impression with the judges, so that's kind of the, the goal. Superb. And the conditions today, enjoying it. Uh, Decent. Kind of complain for a for a competition that's glassy and there's plenty of waves coming through and dry and sunny so we can't complain it's brilliant and your overall analysis then of Scottish surfing how do we find it picking up is it getting better more people I mean there's as we've seen earlier on some of the juniors that are competing in the men's open are surfing really well so it's pretty exciting the so next they're champing at your heels or is that what you're saying the next five years is going to be pretty, <laughs> um, pretty exciting with some of them coming through so no it's good to see and it's good at um, Scottish surfing's finally closing the gap in the rest of the world spot on because you had a great opener you then finished really strong as well in the last closing seconds yeah. so surfing well good luck eh thank you very much. and uh, we'll see you in the next couple cheers. of rounds Thanks cheers much. Is Tom? Yes. Any? Is that on? Any story with the TV? Oh right, sorry. Just because the the woman from Sports Scot uh, Events Scotland, as he's probably seen, if that's something that's operating. See, he's got a plasma TV in his van that's been going the tent or that one in there. Well, she was a ride earlier, but um, sorry, I'll avoid the interviewer.
But Andrew Robertson again delivering. So he's sitting with a heat total at the moment, 8.17. That was a great little wave he just pulled through there, so he's going to see what the judges score for that one. Certainly got a solid, powerful turn off that last section. He got full extension through the legs, bit of an arch through the back, and got some spray. So, solid surfing there from Andrew. Great interview there with Boyd. It's interesting to see the take on Scottish surfing. It's actually getting better with the younger generation coming through. That means there's grassroots work that's being done. Um which is superb to see. And here's one of the juniors up and riding at the moment with Charlie Pugh. And just coming unstuck, getting hit off that face. But, I mean, it looks all fairly standard on the camera when you're looking from there. When you're sitting out in that wave, head high to head and a half to double over, it can be quite a, quite a feeling, quite a psychological impact on you with that sort of thing. So you've got to control those emotions all the way through. But nice to hear from Boydie, who's leading the charge, I suppose, with Scottish surfing over these years. Um, certainly working for Sports Scotland in a Scottish Surfing Federation role and still competing at a high level too. Talking about the, the youngsters coming through, that's a, a really positive thing for Scottish surfing. I'm sure William Watson will be watching as well from uh, down under in Australia. So we have Blue up and right at the moment. Just Chris just doing a bomb drop there with his chest and his head. He'll come out of that all right. I'm sure he's used to those for a couple of times. But, uh, yeah, it's just nice to hear that. Hope you're well out there, Watson, and you're enjoying this. <laughs> and we got, we've got Suds just arriving on the inside here. And we might get a... Might get a yeah. So we're going to get Suds. We're going to interview with Suds soon. We're just going to wait for a cameraman, Suds, at the moment to come in from a distance. So the world can see you. The what, sorry? So the world can see you. Oh no. So we have Blue up and riding. Who's this? That's Chris Clark. Just having a little... That's Chris. Yep, yeah, he's going for it. I'm sure the young guns. If you step up here, and just we'll get the camera lined up so Miss Tom can just abandon ship and go back to his post. We got a little lull here at the moment as well, so we should be able to get a film here of Suds. So Suds is uh, one of our local surfers from Sand End, who's got a surf school down there, and uh, he's just competing in the last last setup. And you come, Suds, let's have a, a chat. So, how did you find that wave? Uh, it was pretty fun. Yeah, it was a bit different to normal Thursday, a little bit slopier, uh, which probably suits the old timers. Uh, but yeah, yeah, quite enjoyed it. Your work rate was phenomenal out there. You were working hard. You probably rotating about four waves back to back to back to back so explain that what's your training for this sort of thing time in the water you're in the gym you're paddling hard wheat of it <laughs> now i think i burnt out in about five first five minutes ten minutes i was done in after that but it solidified you had a little it was just i think in the last minute your heat was pretty full on in the last minute there were some changeovers and changeovers and changeovers so i think you got pipped there into second position yeah, that yeah, right yeah, yeah, you were yeah, solid all the way got, through got a good couple of hits i could see from the back that oh, he's got that so it and was close on scores and i thought <laughs> i'll try and sit on the it was time out as well and a few good scores too and it was close so i thought i'll have to try and monitor these guys make sure they're not getting anything good i didn't think mark was going to catch his weight the way he got okay and he, he got it and he got a beauty so uh, yeah well done nice then. and you're riding what so i won't well we won't ask about equipment that's all that's a surfer's technicalities there but wetsuit are you chosen to go for a summer suit or are you still sitting with a winter suit? <laughs> Probably a summer suit for me, like a five mil, hooded five. Hooded five, okay. Yeah, I'd normally be in a six out here, but just about for a heat. Yeah, yeah. You, you just want to be flexible. Exactly. Yeah, oh, that's you're good. burning energy so you keep warm than you mean. Spot on. Thanks very much. Thanks for joining us well, and enjoy the rest of the, the well, competition. Good luck. Cheers. 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 <laughs> cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers, Oscar. Woo. And we're back to it. We got a set wave coming through. Is anyone having a look? We've had a couple of exchanges during that time. But we may get some replays in there. But current standings are at the moment with Andrew Robertson leading the charge with a heat total of 10.17. We've got Charlie Pugh in second position with a heat total of 6.04. Chris Clark in third position with a heat total of 4.0. And Ansel Parkin in fourth with a heat total of 3.93. So it looks on paper 0.0. .0 Seven separating Chris Clark and Ansel, but the important number is 3.94 below Ansel to get him through to second position and 
3.97 below Chris to get him through to second priority. That's the important numbers to look for. Top two go through, remaining two go into the repercharge. charge. So that means it's a second crack of the whip, if you like. So hope everyone's enjoying. It's great, I forgot I get fueled by coffee all the time up here, it's nice. Treats, I'm letting the camera guys have that. I'll, I'll back off and look after my figure. It seems to be looking after me, so that's fine. So we're coming up for our last five minute section. We've got Ansel parking out the back, having a look at this. He's in first priority. It's going for the, and just missed it. So that paddle may have just lost him that first priority. Which it has done there. So that's, he's looking for a 3.94. Just by not getting into that face, it might have been the difference, but there's enough time to get into it again. And with Andrew Robertson just having a wee turn round there, he's looking and he's going to go for it. He's pulled the pin. Backhand take off. Nice deep pocket tur bottom turn there. Coming back into the white water section, looking for the power. He's got the arms ready for the wrap. And again, just bogging rails, feeling a bit frustrated with that last part of the turn. That's just taking him out that wave. So maybe not one of his best. And we have Ansel Parkin and Charlie Pugh trying to. Who's gone for this one? Charlie Pugh's gone for this one, or is it Ansel? Ansel gone for that one, sorry, it was yellow. I couldn't see the between the yellow and the white. <clears throat> so there's been a, a situation change with red in first position and blue has gone into second position. And we have white, have a look at this one. Just missed that paddle there. So three and a half minutes remaining. It's all got active now. A lot of paddling going on. And we have White, Charlie Pugh. He's got the white water boost, he's got the takeoff. He's looking for a face to hit here. There's the lip, comes back in the pocket. Not really getting too much from that wave. We then have Ansel Parkin got the takeoff. Just trying to find the power through that turn. Still working it into this inner part of the water, feeling frustrated there. Put the head in the hands. Still got under three minutes to get out there and get himself in a position. Blue, you have Red, you have so blue holding on to first priority here. This is where it could get tactical between Chris Clark and Andrew Robertson. So Chris Clark, North Shore Surf Club has got some no local knowledge. Andrew Robertson has been surfing well from St Andrew's Surf Club, who's holding a 10.17 lead over a 6.3 lead. So Chris is looking for a 5.94 to progress into first position. But both at this stage should be going through. With our third place, Charlie Pugh and White looking for a 2.64 to knock Chris Clark off that second spot. And Ansel Parkin looking for a 4.21 to knock Chris off that second spot. But certainly at the moment, the red and blue are going through. But there might be a, there might be a little priority battle going on because Chris Clark holds priority in blue in second position. So this could be a, a training session in some ways, if you like, to work on a priority battle. We're just looking at Ansel Parkin on screen at the moment. He's got a little turn into that face again. You can see him hunting constantly for that speed. Having to come into the white water foam ball just to make sure he's got some speed with it. We've got a bog rail coming up in a second and there's the, the head goes onto the hands. Chris Clark has chosen to relinqu relinquish his priority for this wave. Ah, just working that one through to the inside with under 90 seconds remaining. Andrew Robertson holding fast out the back. And we have Charlie Pugh has arrived. So Ansel, um, Andrew Robertson's holding first priority with Charlie Pugh probably about to be given second priority. And he's needing a 2.64 over Chris Clark. 
So with one minute remaining. And this is where Andrew either takes the wave or just sits and holds fast. And Charlie Pugh capitalizes on the inside. It's all tactics now. There is set waves approaching with 45 seconds remaining. So could this set up Charlie Pugh for that little steal on the buzzer beater? We'll see. It might be taking off on the shoulder. It might be just a bit too on the inside of this wave coming through. He's choosing just to paddle around the side of that. So could that be the second place steal? Ended there from Charlie Pugh. I think he's having a think about that. The head's gone on the hands. Or the hands have gone on the head. 10 seconds. And there we have the end of that round with Andrew Robertson and Chris Clark progressing through with Charlie Pugh and Ansel Parkin going for a repercharge. And we now have the women's. And it's the quarterfinals, heat one for the women's. And it's two in a heat for this one. So great stuff up here in Thurso East. Some great surfing going on. Nice to have had a couple of surfers speaking to us. We'll catch up with Craig McLaughlin, one of the locals at some point soon, I hope. Um, just to get his take on what's going on in, our, in uh, Thurso East. But yeah, open women's quarterfinals in the water. And we have our first wave coming through, both surfers choosing to ignore that one. With Lola Mitchell in red from Brock Surf Club. Pretty sure Lola's just won an award in her swimming as well, which I saw online. And we've got Robin Larg from Tyree Surf Club. So it's a trek across the water for Tyree, uh, from Tyree for Robin. And family are over. And I'll be hoping to catch up with them soon at some point. But yeah, two in the water for this heat. Or this quarterfinal, apologies. And we'll see what goes down. Thanks for watching, everyone. A big shout out to our sponsors. There is um, many of them Jacob, Sea Monster, Olive Tree, Lost Shore, um, Scottish Surfing Federation, Dune Ray, Foundation Scotland, Mystique, Finisterre, NDA, Dune Ray, and we have Red Up and Riding on the first wave. And just getting one under the belt as our opening there for Lola Mitchell. So yes, there's still many more sponsors to uh, get hold of, but here's Lola's take off on that pocket wave. She's looking for that white water speed. And just waiting for the first score to set the the heat up to see what the judges are going to come back with. Looks like a slightly changing face of a wave just because the, the filling in here at Thurso East. Still set waves coming through.
Anyway. Still waiting for that score to drop for Lola Mitchell. And these two out there in the water know each other well, so they'll be having a good yarn. Catching up, waiting for waves. Just looking at a barreling wave just over to my right, but I know that it breaks in about ankle depth water. So Lola's first wave there, we've got us a 3.0. And she's having a look at this next wave. Robin has priority though. Got herself in position. There's the takeoff. Big drop. Compressing the knees. Looking for a little wrap round into the, the white water. Just seems to fizzle out there as the changing tide here might be affecting that. But certainly got one in the bag for Robin. And our first wave coming back is a 2.0. You just see from that rail, holding onto the rail, trying to get as much power as she can and holding for ages to see if it would work. But just had that little flat spot in the wave. So yeah, Red, Lola Mitchell from uh, Fraserburgh, Brock Surf Club. She's uh, leading by a point at the moment from Robin Larg from Tyree. And Ty's just changed a little bit, as we can see. It's just uh, shifted the peak slightly, made it fizzle out slightly earlier. But uh, still on, though. Still on for sure. So yeah, welcome to uh, Thursday East. It's, it's getting chillier, but we're not bad. It's an offshore wind now. It has shifted from cross to off. And uh, yeah, we're enjoying this today. And here's a wave about to come up for possibly Lola or Robin. They're just going to paddle over the top of that one. So, yeah. Hello. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> 
That's Kai Krugshine just arrived here. Kai, that camera's not live. Kai, come back here a second. Let's have a chat. So you're out there at Thursday East. Tell me, what's it like? I've never been. You mean you've never been? Where were you surfing recently? I saw some great pictures of you. Secret. Secret, oh, talented Grom here. Not giving away too much. So, tell us about your surfing then. What are you, uh, goofy or regular? Goofy. Okay, and you come to the, the microphone. You're goofy. Sponsored? Uh, yeah. Excellent. I've got, I've got Skin Dog, Ocean Frog, and Daisies. Very good. So. And Sea Monster. What's your favorite maneuver? What's the best maneuver? You're one that's signature. Tube. Tube. So a barrel. Yeah. So is that like a, the whole thing folds over the top of you and you come out the other side? Does it clamp you? Is that which one is it? Yeah. Um, chandelier. Okay. Oh, okay. Got you. So that's when you're cutting through the water, dripping in your head after you've been fully covered up. Pretty much. Okay, you're looking forward to getting the water here? Yeah, I am. So we got out in the water there, it's Lola and Red. And yeah. you surf a Lola, haven't you? She's from your neck of the woods. Yeah. How do you think her surfing's doing? Really good. I mean, everyone's doing good. It is. It's a really high calibre out here. We've got Lola here up and oh, just coming off the back of that wave. But yeah, really high calibre. So do you see that from your point of view, from the youngsters coming through? Yeah. All challenging each other? Yeah. Okay. And uh, how's the coaching getting on? Who's been looking after you? It's my dad and Suds. Dad and Suds. You've just come back from a trip away, haven't you? Yeah. Where was that? Um, Is it Portugal? Yeah, Portugal. Okay. And enjoyable? Really? Got a lot of time spent in the water. Do you get a lot yeah. of land-based training? Yeah. So you're already looking at land-based training from your age. So how old are you again? 11. You're 11 years old. You're already getting put into land-based training. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that's a promising future for you in surfing. Yeah. So good luck and we'll see you in the water. Cheers, Steve. Mike, you need 1.31. Mike, you need a 1.31 to move to the Next up, we have Olivia Mackay and Georgia Nicholson. So it's always good to grab these aspiring groms as they come through. He made the mistake of trying to get in front of the camera and I collared him and says, yeah, you're getting interviewed now. Yeah, he's surfing well, eh? I think his, his dad actually, Russell had a pretty solid surf as well and picked off some barrels out in Portugal when he was out there coaching. He got a bit of town time to go and have a play. And it's great to see him still nailing it in the surf, still performing well at high level. So yeah, big shout out to the Cruikshank family. Good on you guys. Just nice to see all the Groms getting stuck in. The youngsters are certainly a, a development going on without a doubt from the Scottish scene. Um, and it's nice to see them coming through in the water and all mixing it together. So it's like good friendships, good rivalries, and they actually bounce off each other, they push each other to do more, and that's what it's all about. So, excellent, nice to see the future's safe and getting better. So we've got eight minutes, just under eight and a half minutes remaining here in this quarterfinals heat one of the Open Women. We've got Lola Mitchell in the water at the moment, leading by a 3.30 heat total. And Robin Larg sitting in second position. She's needed a 1.31 to move into first. So. It's spectacular sights up here when you look around. It's brilliant. We're just waiting for some good waves to come through here. It's died off just for a second or two. There's another peak I can see in the distance in the middle of the bay that uh, is empty at the moment, but uh, it's got a name I'm probably not going to mention on, on air. And there's your GoPro image of what we've got in front of us. So trying to get yourself positioned in this, this heat a challenge with these waves coming through. There is some to be had, it's just about being in the right position. Lola having a quick scratch at that wave, not getting into it. Robin looking potentially, it's one behind that might be swinging wide and landing on them, it is. So having to duck dive for the pair of them through that wave. See a hard shifty peak to read now.
And Robin having a look at this wave. Just backing out in the paddle. No, she's sitting in a priority position, really. Another wave in behind. She's making a commitment to this one. She's got the takeoff. Decent drop. Can she make the section? Not going to be able to get around that one. But certainly got the drop. And that is a second wave to put her score up. She's looking for a 1.31. That's what she's chasing at the moment. So that'll be a, an up to feet along the wave and not too many manoeuvres on it. So we'll see what the judges put in with that one. It's a fairly critical takeoff. So that have has put has put Robin in front with a 1.33 score. So a 0 0.03 is the winning score if that was to sit like that. So Robin Larg in white with a 3.33 heat total and second position Lola Mitchell with a 3.30. Close, close, close. So when you read the 0 0.33 as the next wave for Lola Mitchell, it's basically a stand-up, right along, one turn will make that score work. So, yeah. It's about finding the right position for that wave to get the takeoff. And she's got under five minutes remaining, 4.50 left. So Got to play the game smart here if she wants to do the, the leapfrog over Lola, uh, over Robin, sorry. A big set waves coming through again. She's sitting on the shoulder here. Either makes the decision to go for it to commit. Doesn't quite get into that one. So I think there was a second part of that wave ridden by Robin Larg in the inside. Chose to pick off one on the earlier in the, the close by sections. So that's waiting for a score to come through there, potentially. But Lola's sitting out back. She's going to make a call on this. Where she's going to commit to it. She has decided to commit. She's not getting into it. She's got three minutes roughly remaining. She's going to be selective here to make sure she can pull in that point three three if that's what she's looking for. And she's got three minutes sitting out there on her own at the moment. I think Robin took a wave all the way into the inside. She did. So her last wave on the inside, Robin, which we didn't see, was a 4.50. So she picked up a second part of the wave. And uh, that's put her into a bigger lead with a 3.51 needed by Lola Mitchell in red. So well done there for Robin Larg in that inside section. She managed to pick up a second part to a wave and capitalise on that with a reform. So it means Lola Mitchell is requiring a 3.51 to progress into the first position slot. So it can be a lonely place out there on your own when you're thinking about chasing a score and you know the time's ticking down. It'll be a tough place for Lola right now. But she's a savvy lass. And there are set waves arriving she could pick off. She's looking for a 3.51. So her best so far has been a 3.0. So this wave behind it may be the one that's going to change that up for her. It looks like a set wave. It's got shape and face to it. She's got to really commit to this if she wants it. And she's deciding to paddle over the top.
But there is uh, another one out the back that's maybe going to swing round for her and put her into a nice position. She's going for this first one. The one behind may have been the one with 1 minute 24 remaining. So one minute to go, chasing a 3.51. I'm trying to see if Robin's making that paddle out. Yeah, Robin is making that paddle out. So that's been a big paddle into where the river is and round the shoulder to get out back. We've got 40 seconds remaining. There is a wave coming through. Could this be where Lola decides to turn, pull the trigger? and score big, or she caught too far on the inside on this one. Just slightly out of position. We're coming down to our last 10 seconds for this quarterfinal heat one in the Open Women's. And there we have it, Robin Larg has progressed through and there'll be a repper charge with Lola Mitchell to be entered into that. And typically there's a wave set, wave comes in behind. And there's Robin Larg just taking a belly surf all the way in. So heat two for the quarterfinals about to go next. Um, Olivia Mackay will be in red from North Shore Surf Club and Georgia Nicholson in white. She'll be from North Shore Surf Club. So stand by for that. Thank you for tuning in. Keep on watching. Spread the word on Facebook, on YouTube. It's a sound day of surfing up in Thurso East here this weekend. First day of the Scottish Nationals. So welcome to all those that have tuned in. Speak to you soon. So that was Olivia Mackay making a first wave set there. A first wave set? Actually, was it? Not sure who that was. Sorry, that was a false call. I think it was Lola Mitchell. She decided to catch a wave, which... I'm not sure the heat had quite started at that point. If it had, I mean, technically it should be a prone surf in. I think it'll be all right. The judges will have noticed who it was with a prone surf in after that. So, yeah. It is being counted as Olivia's score at the moment. I mean, I'd like to check that and see who was riding that wave.
So that's me back. Sorry about that. Back in the play. Had to go and do a quick run there for a second. So Olivia's got a 3.17 there. So her last wave was a 2.17. I did see it from running from one side to the other. So that's holding Olivia in first position with a 3.17. And second position with Georgia Nicholson with a 1.50. She requires a 1.68. And we set waves coming through in the back. A wave just shelving up in the back there. It's got a little double up section. Look at that. Wow. Solid size waves there. A solid set of waves coming through there. So we do have a Facebook comment section there. You can put down and say, what's the best country you surfed in so far, people? Let's get some feedback. Let's get some interaction. We've got a shout here from Australia. He's saying in a weird way, it's Australia. <laughs> Australia. That's it. That's it right there. Whereabouts in Australia? South Oz. He's not giving anything away here, is he? South Oz. I've had a couple of grey friends in the water come and have a look at me in South Australia. That's a bit worrying. I think it's because I eat Marmite. I'm not sure. So under 10 minutes remaining in this. Heat 2, the quarterfinals for the Open Women, with Olivia Mackay leading at the moment with a 3.17. And Georgia Nicholson in second position, needing a 1.68 to move to first to switch up the positions and leapfrog. And we have next up, Phoebe Strachan will be getting in the water as a local and the current champ at the moment. The sun is out. So yeah, it's good. We've got a few people here that can uh, commentate on this link today. So we're going to get Scratch in next, I think. Well, I might actually do a wee interview to Scratch and hand them over. Look at these set waves coming through, though. And two surfers just caught on the inside at the moment, battling to get at the back there. So yeah, that Facebook live feed is there for, to comment to add some of your insightful knowledge. Get a bit of chat going throughout the weekend. The guys will make sure they highlight that for me and send a shout out. So if you do want shout outs, give me a big hello. Roz, I can see you from the other side of the, the bay here at Scrabster HQ. I hope all's well with you, lass. Amber did himself well in the water. It's been good to see. And I hope you're well over there. 
looking after that whole side of the the water because that's that's what you do. You're top dog. So it'll be an interesting round this next one with Phoebe Strachan and Callie Cruikshank. Callie Cruikshank's been hitting some waves. She's been on fire with the camera I've seen down in the Brock Surf area. And uh, Phoebe's being Phoebe up here in Thurzo and smashing this big Thurzo East wave as many times as she possibly can. So it's going to be a good head-to-head -head battle here in this next heat coming up. A little inside section ridden there by Olivia and Red. And here's Robin Lar coming in for a chat. Getting mic'd up. Woohoo! We good? Yeah. <laughs> That's the weather there. How are you, Robin? Good. How was the travel over? Where have you been? Did you? I was in St Andrews staying at my grandparents. Okay. There you go. That's better. Thanks. It means I can hear you. So, how did you surf then? How did you enjoy that? Uh, it was well, good fun. I was in the water with one other girl, so. Okay. Yeah, it was perfect. Uh, yeah, perfect. Fast. So, pressure-wise, how does that feel? So, one surfer takes a wave. And then you're sitting there alone. Do you notice anything? Does it make a difference to you? Or you feel quite happy to be sitting solo out there waiting for a wave? Um, I think normally I would be nervous, but today, like, the waves are super nice. And, um, like, I was speaking to Lola in the water and stuff. So you so kind of didn't feel as much pressure. Yeah. OK, so it's a mate's chat in the water. Yeah, yeah, that's that quite cool. So yeah, that's quite nice. So there's no head-to-head -head rivalry. Yeah, it's kind of a friendly just like rivalry. a free surf. But... Oh, wow. OK. Yeah, but free good. surf, you're really hoping to get scores. Yeah, yeah, pretty and so, much. Temperature-wise, so you're Tyree then. What did you notice a difference here with Tyree and uh, the Thursday away for heat in the water? Yeah, definitely. It's definitely. freezing here. It's freezing but, here. Um, it's good. Like, when you're paddling, like, it's kind of a big paddle, so... OK. It, you got warm, it was fine. And was it... Uh, What's it like there, daunting-wise? I mean, you're probably getting some pretty hefty waves out in Tyree. Are you getting the same sort of size in Tyree as you are here, or is this slightly um, different because it's breaking onto slab, onto reef? Yeah, probably a bit different because it's on a slab. Like, I'm kind of used to beach breaks. But... Okay. And a breach breaks, so you're chasing that down. This breaks quite consistently in one spot, so that's quite yeah. easy to reach. Yeah. So that's quite a, it's a bit of a bonus. Yeah, I guess so. Nice. Yeah. Oh, well, so you're yeah. enjoying it, enjoying your time yeah. over here. I'm sure it's going to be a great place to catch up with everyone. Yeah, it's And the setup's lovely. all good. You enjoying that? Amazing, yeah. Nice. Cool. Thank you very much. Good luck with the comp. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> awesome. Robin Larg. Great to hear that friendly rivalry with, with friends in the water. Seeing as a free surf. I mean, that's the way to do it. It's competition, but it's actually a free surf. I like that. I like that a lot. So it should be a bit of fun and banter in the water. So many places you go to can be a bit... a bit hard work in the water. You're having a bit of a battle. But it's nice to hear that in a competition setup with Robin and Lola having a chat in the water. Brilliant. Love it. Thanks, Robin, for that interview. Good on you. Warmer in Tyree, everyone. You heard it here. Looks like that's the next destination for me. I think the, the Junior Series is going to be out to Tyree this year. So a couple of days worth of travel, but uh, certainly uh, an awesome spot to go to. So it's not just surfing it out there, you get windsurfing as well. We've, yeah, fairly active island for sure. So we've got three minutes 20 remaining. And the action's been more or less on this inside section at the moment with Georgia Nicholson leading the way at the moment. She's just taking off on this next wave. There she goes, up and riding. Just using that inside section, just in behind the flags. We might be missing that with the camera work. Three 
But white is in first position with a 4.33. And red's in second with a heat total of 4.0. Red needs a 2.17 to progress into first position. And white's just picked up a score there. And Phoebe is just paddling out into main thirds of least at the moment. And getting ready for her heat to start. So just over two minutes remaining in this heat two of the Open Women quarterfinals. So White's just got a 1.53, so that's just pushed it up by 0 0.03. So Red is requiring a 2.20 to move into first position with 1 minute 38 remaining. And Olivia Mackay having a look here. And just missing out in that wave with one minute remaining. And there we have the end of that heat. Two quarterfinals of the Open Women. Georgia Nicholson progressing through with a 4.36 win over Olivia Mackay with a 4.0. So there will be repertoires charge though for Olivia to get into that one and work it out. We've got the heat three in the water with Phoebe Strachan in red and Callie Cruikshank in white. So Phoebe Strachan, current Scottish Surf Championship, champion, sorry, from the North Shore Surf Club and Callie Crookshank, Crookshank from the Brock Surf Club. So, standing by for this one to start, this will be an interesting matchup. Both surfers on fire, both been delivering the goods. So we'll see how this one goes down. And we are underway. For Heat 3 with Phoebe and Callie out there head to head. Callie's having a look at this inside wave. She's got to her feet. Uh, she's going to work the problem. She's kicking out, just deciding that's not worth it. And Phoebe's just trying to reposition herself out the back to see where these set waves are coming through. Looks to have got herself in a spot and maybe deciding to angle surf into this one. Has got the takeoff. She made the drop on her backhand. Big bottom turn, nice spray off that first turn, coming back in the pocket, another big solid drop into the second part of the wave, make it around the section just, working the inside section, here we go, will it give her an extra bit to play with, choosing to kick out of that wave, and set herself back out the back. Nice opener there from Phoebe. Callie Cruikshank got a stand up and down. She worked a wave and decided it didn't have enough power, so she kicked out, got into place. And then Phoebe's taken a solid wave behind that one and uh, waiting for the judges to score it.
<laughs> and here comes our replay of Phoebe. Solid wave there. So head to head and a half. There's our first turn into the pocket. Here comes our next vertical dropping in. There it is. Trying to beat section, not sure she's going to get around it. Then eventually does kick through it, but the wave is fizzling slightly, so she will just choose to ride it for a second and kick out. Just a little cheeky turn at the end there to get the foam pocket and then kick out. Here with Callie Cruikshank up and riding. And she's just working that wave. Nice little takeoff and kicks out from there. So wave's been taken by both surfers here. That first wave for Phoebe Strachan, a 6.83 high in the score list there. That's a nice opener for Phoebe. That's in under five minutes she's taken that. So being selective, stamping authority, I think, from a, a local point of view here. She's defending and she wants to make sure she sets herself up for good scores. And we have Red having a look again. Position herself up. Committed to it. Taking the drop. Just compresses there to make sure she can catch that bottom turn. Pocket turn. Just coming unstuck there. Getting the rail hooked up in the lip. And then just bogging out of that wave. But it's solidifying two scores there for Phoebe. Then she's kind of got control. With those two scores in the bag. But it won't take long for Callie to come back in. Callie's a solid surfer and might just be choosing what wave she's going for here. So a 2.33 for Phoebe's last wave there. Putting her with a 9.16 lead at the moment. Or, well, a lead of 7.66 for Callie to be catching. So 15 minutes remaining here with Red in first position. There's still set waves coming through here at Thurzo. Interesting to see the, the different wetsuits and speaking to the different surfers as they come out, what they're wearing and some going out for a longer surf and a different peak just further around the coast at the moment. They're all in six mils and a contest that athletes are wearing. There's one wearing a four mil, but five mils normally. There's me on live again on the screen. Hello all. So where are you all watching from? I want to see that. I want to see that in the Facebook comments. Whereabouts in the world are you watching from? Let's find the furthest place that someone's watching from at the moment. Got a feeling it might be Watson out in Australia, but come on, see who's got it. Send some details on Facebook to us live and we'll, uh, we'll comment back to you saying, you're aware? Wow. It's nice to see where the reach is going around the world. That'd be ace. Anyway. 
back to it, hopefully. And we have Cali in position here, maybe looking for this wave. He's made the paddle, not quite making the drop on that one. Big barley set wave over to my right hand side, just working away at the moment. And Phoebe taking a bit of a drop there, coming unstuck on that takeoff. Solid wave to commit to. And she's back on the board, ducking through this next wave. And again, these guys will be working with, with each other, will be mates. They spent a camp out together in Portugal. So it's great to see the juniors getting the opportunity to travel abroad to experience different waves. It's a big part down to you guys as well out there. So it's just all about, we get more subscriptions into the Federation, we get more funding, etc. to looking out for these youth development camps happening so that's a big part of the, the federation trying to get up and running um, so your membership number goes a long way to grant funding so the more members the merrier so get signing up also get so many bonuses with uh, discounts in certain places throughout Scotland surf schools, coffee shops kit um, and yeah it gets you insurance as well to go out and surf so a good thing to do support back into the, the grommet section and get them producing the goods as they're growing up. So spot on. So, so we've just got over 10 minutes here remaining. Phoebe sitting on a 9.16 with Callie requiring a 7.66 to move through or jumper in position. And Phoebe having a look potentially at this wave coming through, trying to position herself up for it. She thinks she'll let it bypass. And Callie having a look at the inside here. She's got the paddle. And the wave's giving her that kick as she to her feet. She has, she's got the wave. Nice bit of speed there in that bottom section of the wave. Coming into the white water for a bit more punch and speed. So just under 10 minutes remaining. We've got a score to drop for white, but as it stands in further position, red, P total 9.16. And we have Phoebe potentially looking at this wave forming. She's got herself in a position. She's scratching the surface and she's going to get into it. Yep, she's got the drop. Whoa, a bit of a wavy one to start with. Got a little wiggle, but recovered it. Good recover, unfortunately, just bogging a little bit to keep the power going, or the speed going, sorry. But yeah, starting to check on that drop for sure. So waiting for a score there for both Phoebe and Callie.
And we just see that live of a replay there of Cali on screen. And a 2.13 for Phoebe's last wave. Where's that wiggle? On the takeoff. And that wave we're just watching in camera at the moment, just watching the, the judges' score come through for that. been handed my lunch bag. Awesome. Thank you very much all the volunteers looking out for us. This will be very much appreciated and eaten well. Cheers. Here goes Phoebe on the takeoff. Big set wave. Nice solid rail there to get it going. Looking for that turn off the lip. Another big drop after that first turn. Solid surf to be waved there by to be ridden there by Phoebe. Gonna take that all the way into the inside. She got so over six and a half minutes remaining. She's riding all the way to the end, wants to make sure she completes it. There's a little stab turn at the finish. She gets a little foam ride. And just completing, and here comes a kick out. And that is her completed. Good wave there from Phoebe. We'll see what that score is like. Interesting to see if it tops her first one. I'm not sure. The first one, pretty critical maneuver in there. It scored her high of a 6.83. So this one, we'll see if it's uh, certainly a bigger wave. But was it in the critical pocket like the first wave she had? So let's see what the judges score on that one. But well served, Phoebe. There's a replay coming up. Nice solid drop. The rail is sunken to the face. She's hoping to get that big hit off the lip, but it has to take a second to drop just the way the wave was reading it. She's read it very well. You see just a little bit of bounce on the face of that wave. Still waiting on the score, but she's choosing to ride this the whole way in to the inside. So she's had a pause moment. There's an extra session section in here. She's a turn, she then gets a a foam ride, a little snap into this face. There it is there. Well done, Phoebe. We're awaiting a score of red. We're coming up for four minutes remaining. Callie just trying to find her position there out back. So it's just a little fraction less that wave for Phoebe for 6.77. Her first wave is a 6.83. So maybe just a maybe a more critical part turn would have maybe scored her higher. But it's still a cracking score. A 13.60. 
for a heat score, heat total. So three minutes remaining. Phoebe got a nice 13.6 there. Heat total. Maybe, yeah. So it's a combination score needed for Cali to knock her off hot spot. What a weekend. <laughs> Absolutely. So Callie trying to find that position out there. She's got two minutes remaining. But Phoebe has certainly racked up those scores. So 90 seconds remaining, that's Callie up and riding on a clean face wave. Yeah. Little snap turn into the pocket, and it's just fizzling out for her. I meant to say, can you do like we did a couple years ago where I put you to like a retap? Yeah, yeah. It's like a one minute thing. Yeah. Can we do that? Just have a think about the exciting bits. Yeah. 13.6 score there for a heat total. Or you 30 seconds, he gets a 6.83. Yeah. Which is good scores there. Yeah. Like that, yeah. Cool. Perfect. Nice. It's a nice little wave there from Cali. Just looking for that thing to keep the face open all the way down that, but just dies out for her, unfortunately. Just a bit of frustration being thrown there, just with the straight arms and arms down, looking out the back. Just hoping for a bit more from that. We have Phoebe having a look here in this little pocket. We've got herself in a position. There's a kick, paddle in, up and riding. I think it's just going to fizzle out for her. But with 33 seconds remaining, I think it might be a prone surf in. She's done pretty well in that first heat of being in the water. And we're coming into our last 10 seconds. With Phoebe progressing and Callie into rubber charge. I think. Next up, we have Hannah Sharp from Belhaven Surf Club, Katrina McDonald from Sandem, and the Boat Rock from North Shore. So we have three in this next heat. Stand by surfers. And it's uh, an all out battle. We have White up and riding, that's Callie just getting a wave in at the moment. So heat's not started, so therefore she technically can ride in without the heat having started, but whenever it's, there's a heat on and you're finishing, you've got to come in from your last heat, it should be a prone surf the whole way in. It can actually get you into a, a bit of strife with the judges if you ride a wave in when another heat has started because they could score incorrectly. So it's all right for that one there with Callie, I'm pretty sure. So this next heat we've got, Hannah Sharp. So this is heat four of the women's quarterfinals. Hannah Sharp from Belhaven Surf Club. Katrina McDonald from Sand End Surf Club. And we've got in yellow, Vaux Brock from North Shore Surf Club. So Hannah Sharp in red, Katrina McDonald in white, and Vaux Brock in yellow. And there's waves on the horizon. 
Could we just go straight into this? We'll find out. Red is having a look, so that is Hannah Sharp. Ash got herself in position for this next wave coming through. It looks like it could be. It seems to be a wide swinger. And now it's got hefty. So you're going to not commit into that one, I don't think. Me, however, I'm going to commit into the sandwich. Because I think there might be a lull between this next wave, so I can have time to eat. So three minutes into this heat, four of the women's quarterfinals, the open women, and scores yet to be scored, waves yet to be surfed. I've yet to see if I've not even checked the Facebook yet. I've yet to see if anyone's commented, commentating. I better go and have a look. I'm going to have a look at the Facebook and see what the comments are. None. Come on, people, what's going on? Just want to comment on Facebook. Just someone to say hi there. You're there, guys. We're here. We're watching. And you're there. Delivering. Even a signature. Cheers. And that's going to be spelled with about four E's, an R, and a Z to finish. Just want to see one of them on the Facebook comments. That'd be a win. First person that does it gets a shout out on the camera.
Oh, 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 we might have had our first comment. We might have had our first comment. We have a cheers. A great day for surfing. Thank you, Lawrence. Like it. He's the first. He's the first. He's got the shout out. Who's next? Hopefully you're enjoying Lawrence from wherever you are. You're getting to see the action. There's me there. That's me on camera. Someone's going to shout out. Come on. Lawrence has done the first one. Who's next? I've seen drones now. Drones have gone live. We've got drones in the air. So that's going to be good. Still waiting for our first score to come through in this heat. We are five minutes down, about six minutes down now. And here we go with Hannah having a look, Hannah getting to her feet, nine minutes knees. I told you. It was a celebratory sneeze for Hannah getting to her feet there. And just coming unstuck. A nice takeoff though. And first wave scored. And waiting for that score for Hannah for the first one of the heat. We have a 2.50. And we have up and running, that was Vaux Brock from North Shore Surf Club. And we're just seeing what the score was. It's a 0.67 for yellow there. So that's, that's put red into first and yellow into second. White yet to score. And this wave is loading up, it looks like. Katrina might be on for one here. Just got to turn and burn and get committed. Just going to break in her head, unfortunately, a bit deep. And we have in red, Hannah's having a look at that remaining section of the shoulder, having to build the board. And you can see that offshore wind blowing it back out to sea. And Katrina taking another one out back there in the head. And she's in position, Katrina. Is she going to get to this? Just not getting into it. So 10 minutes remaining on this final heat of the Open Women's Quarterfinals. We've got Katrina McDonald there getting to her feet. She's got her first wave in the bag. She's going to try and work the problem with it. Nope. Wave just fizzling out for her. But first one scored for Katrina.
And Hannah just up having a look at this one, just getting hit by the lip, pushing her into the into the drop zone, unfortunately. So that's white wave score, put her in second position for Katrina with red in first with a 2.93 and white in second with a 1.33 and yellow in third with a 0.67 needing a 0.67 to move into second. And we get the Masters up next, that's going to get in the water next. So we'll see how that one goes. I heard Dan Parkin say the old dogs. I mean, whoa, that's a, that's a bold statement to come out with. Experienced and wise, I think, is maybe the way I would look at it. But great to see the crowds up here at Thursday Weiss. There's a lot of people watching, a lot of people on the, the shoreline. still feels like Saturday, I don't know why, but it is Friday, I've got to remember that. And a good crowd of people here for a Friday. Easter weekend, folks. So that means I expect a load of Easter eggs delivered to me tomorrow, because I like Easter eggs. We all like Easter eggs, don't we, Tom? Massive nod with an Aussie, oh yeah, mate, that's awesome. I wonder if they've got that sorted in Australia for Watson. William Watson out there, known as Watson. How the Aussies pronounce it. Roy Watson has a guy, mate. Who knows? Who knows? I know I'm going to get grief for my accent. Someone just said it's Welsh. Thanks very much. Thanks, Aidan. Like to see that comment, it's flat here. It's because you're in London. Definitely going to be flat. But thanks for commenting and thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying it. Now you're in London. Let's see. Are you, please don't say you're stuck in an office. It could be dressed down Friday, though, so that means hopefully not in a shirt and tie. That's if you are in an office. But Aidan, thank you very much indeed for the comment. So we get coming up for the five minute window for this heat, the final heat for the women's quarterfinals here at Thurso East, the Scottish Nationals of 2024, with Hannah Sharp in the water from Belhaven Surf Club in red leading the charge with a 
Katrina McDonald in second position from Sand End Surf Club. She's got priority with a 1.33 in second position. And Vaux Brock in third position from North Shore Surf Club. She's needing a 0.67 to progress through in second position. So we're going to Masters straight after this. I managed to eat half a sandwich so far. It's very good, I must say. There's more trinkets and treats in that bag of food I've got. We're waiting for some more waves to be ridden here. A tricky one to read, actually, the way the tides are. It is breaking further to the right of east, but it's closing out and it's a fast, fast wave onto slab. Very shallow slab. So... So three minutes 30 remaining, a little wave coming through here, anyone having a look? Someone should be lined up for this one here in white. We're having a look from Katrina McDonald. She's committed to it. She's taking the drop. And what a drop it is. Which ah, Just dunked her. And Hannah in behind her. In a good pocket here. There's a takeoff. How can she work the face of the wave? It's seeming to fizzle out a touch. She caught herself in the white water there. Going to kick out. But a nice solid takeoff. But Katrina certainly, what a drop that was. So hard work there. So scores to drop for that one. There's a 0.63 there for Katrina and White, which moves her a little bit further away from Vobrock in third. And at Hannah, we are looking for this next score. It'll be slightly better than the 0.43, I think, and boost her score up slightly. So the 2.23 certainly will. So that's put Hannah Sharp up to a 4.73 and Katrina McDonald up to 1.96 with Vaux Brock in third needing a 1.302 move into second position. And 90 seconds remaining. That's some set waves coming through there now. Woof! That's head and a half double possibly overhead. Look at that face. Hoocha! <laughs> Couple of surfers getting caught on the inside there. We've got coming up for 30 seconds remaining. Looking at the standings at the moment for. Hannah going through and Katrina going through, but still 30 seconds left. And coming up for our last 10 seconds remaining in this heat four of the women's quarterfinals. And there we have it.
so I may have had too many coffees, so I might have to run away and come back. I'll speak to you all soon. And that's Mark Cameron up and riding for this Masters Round 1 Heat 1. Making good work on that wave for sure. Getting everything out of it he can and kicking out. So we're back, we're live. We've got Masters Round 1 Heat 1 in the water with 17 minutes and 51 seconds to go with Mark Cameron in red. Picking off the first wave score. We've got Mark Eden in white. Dylan Fogarty McDonald in yellow and three surfers only in this heat and I'm standing up here thinking I could have been in the Masters and getting Thursday Weiss with four of us only on it but I thought I'd look out for you guys and there's Mark's replay nice spray off that turn coming back in the white water a check turn in there just get a bit of power off that white pocket Cruising back along, looking for some more speed. Another little snap at the end of that turn. Staying quite low in this wave in his body position. Making sure he's getting some power going through the legs. And again, holding up in that white water, getting a bit of power again. And then going for the last and finishing kick out turn. Nicely done, Mark. Scratch. So Mark Cameron, known as Scratch, everyone knows him as Scratch, and he's in a band that are epic. So we remember the after party up here. Jamie and Scratch were on stage. We have yellow up and riding. That is Dylan. Nice little wrap turn there. It's all a bit of spray coming off the, the wave and a check turn just under the lip as it's almost coming over the top. He's looking and hunting for some speed. He's a check turn into the face again. Some good speed, nicely linked turns. Beats the sections. So we'll see where the comparison is. Mark has scored a 5.0 for his opening wave. And we'll see what Dylan's going to 
get scored for on that next wave. There's Dylan's wave being checked on replay. Nice bit of spray with that contact there. So that'll be recognised and scored. Will it jump a five though? That is the question. Some nice waves coming through here at Thursday East. Still unloading onto this reef. So Dylan's first wave score was a 4.17. So the one and two are set. Red up and riding. So Mark again getting some work in there. Yeah, a nice carvy turn into the pocket. It's three in a row now. It's got a nice wrap into that pocket to always check on the white ball. It's kicked out. Another nice solid wave again from scratch there. So it's a 4.0 there for Mark. For his second wave, puts him with a total of nine. And two chasing. So Mark in third place in white, needing a 3.01 to progress. Dylan Fogarty in second position, Dylan Fogarty McDonald, sorry, in second position from the North Shore Surf Club in yellow, needing a 4.84 to get into first, but sitting with a 4.17, which will see him progress. Solid set waves coming through. Look at this. You just see the shear in the face from the wind. And we have takeoff. Nice takeoff there from Dylan Forger to McDonald's. Solid drop. Is he going to work it all the way? Is he going to kick out early? No, he's still finding the speed and power. He's got a nice bottom turn. He's trying to stay just in front of that foam ball. Nice. Solid surfing just there from Dylan Fogarty McDonald. Well done in the yellow. That's a great takeoff, a good set wave choice. How will that see him with the scores? Yeah. <laughs> All the way around, yeah. yeah. So let's see what the judges make of that one from Dylan. We can just see this replay, that first takeoff was spot on. He just sets up here, he's looking and thinking, he's just, am I going to go for it? But it just seems to power up and go again, Deliver, delivers him back into the pocket with speed. Gets his bottom turn back up the face. Would the judges be looking for a vertical off the top there? So he gets a bit more bottom turn, rides that face of the wave up nice and high and checks, turns into the top of the white ball. Would that have scored him higher? But certainly a lovely wave surfed. One thing I could definitely say for surfers, if you want to get out there and help improve your surfing, is go and do your judges course. It makes a big difference because you suddenly realise what judges are looking for. And that does help and improve your surfing. So, 
Speed power flow is the most crucial part of it and performing the big manoeuvres in critical parts of the wave. So big manoeuvres in the critical parts of the wave, that's vertical surfboard going up the face, nice solid bottom turn, maybe releasing a fin, releasing fins on the wave, then you go into acrobatics, it then goes into a different level altogether, some air manoeuvres. Air manoeuvres and rotations. And I'm back on camera again. You always catch me out. Just dancing from side to side, and you guys are seeing what I'm doing. So, yeah. <laughs> It's a warm microphone. So it's good stuff from the masters here. This is working well for them. They get some good solid waves coming through. Positioning well. And we've got Dylan Fogarty Fogger as Dylan Fogarty McDonald, sorry, has just jumped Scratch by 0.44. So Scratch is in a 4.45 to move back in the first. Here's Dylan again having a look. He's got the takeoff, bottom turn. There's a pocket turn, bit of spray, and again, another nice solid spray turn there, kicking out the back. So two solid turns there, one in a pretty vertical part of the wave. Let's see what that does to his score. It might improve in that 4.17. Will it be better than the 5.27? 5.27 was maybe a bit more of a critical wave, bigger size wave, sorry. So, we'll see. But all in all, it looks like the head-to-head -head battle is on here at the moment with 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 minutes going between Dylan and Mark. As in Dylan and Scratch, let's call it Scratch because there's two Marks out there. So Mark just biding his time. Keeping an eye on what's going on and he'll be selective. That's all it takes. Selectively choose the best wave. Just still waiting on a score for Dylan there on that last wave. Two solid turns, a bit more vertical with a bit more spray. So there's possibly a lot more power in that drive off the bottom turn. With Andrew coming in with our teas and coffees, what a guy. So our last score there was a 5.37 that Dylan got. That has increased his lead. So close to the top of this Masters round one, heat one. With Dylan and Scratch going head to head here. And Mark just waiting on a score from that last wave he just surfed. Hello, oh, I have. So seven minutes remaining with yellow Dylan Fogarty McDonald in first position with 10.64. In second position in red is Scratch with a 9.0. And third position is Mark in white with a 1.17. He's needing a 7.83, I think it is. It is to move into second position. We have our next heat getting themselves out in the water. I'm actually going to call that might be slightly early. Ah, they're just walking to the edge of the reef. That's what it is. So they're not actually making paddle battle yet. So that's fine.
So how's everyone doing out there on this, I'm going to say, is it a bank holiday Friday? Is it a bank holiday Friday, gents? It is a bank holiday Friday. Good Friday. Certainly is a good Friday. It's good surf Friday. And there's surfers paddling for something they've all seen. Last time last year we saw an orca. We had a pod of orcas go through, so... We'll keep our eyes peeled for that sort of thing. We have White having a look in the inside here. Has got the takeoff. What a solid set wave to the head. Just got caught up on the inside of that lip and unfortunately sucked over the falls. Great commitment nowhere from Mark. Ah, solid wave to take. So we're under five minutes remaining. There's a set wave in the background. Who is in position? Is anyone in position for it? All getting it on the head. Wait, yeah, beauty. It's Good Friday, that means Easter egg soon. Looking forward to that. Just sitting, waiting on these waves coming through. Second heat is in the water for the Masters. They are paddling out to get themselves in position. You got a couple of free surfers surfing a reef off to my right and I'm seeing this barrel spitting. And when I see what it's breaking onto, wow, fair play. It's super shallow reef, and they're having to kick out through the face of the wave or over the top of it. It's hefty. So two and a half minutes remaining, and currently we have Dylan, Fer Dylan Fogarty McDonald in first position in yellow with a 10.64. In second position we have Mark Cameron Scratch with a 9.0 in red. A third position Mark Eden in white with a 2.50. And we have Red having a look. Red up and riding. Big bottom turn. Whoa, nice check turn under the lip as it's just breaking. Scratch delivering there back into the pocket. Looking to try and get himself into first position with that wave. Nearly, nearly could have tucked in there. Just didn't open up for him quite enough. But certainly two solid manoeuvres. And we have out the back taking off. That's Mark Eden. Eden, sorry. No, it's not. It's Dylan again in yellow. So a head-to-head -head exchange here. Let's see if it changes positioning. But certainly Scratch had a nice under-the-lip pocket turn. That'll be a, a scoring part of the wave without a doubt. Let's see what it delivers. Coming up with 90 seconds remaining. He is needing a 5.64. Will it be better as a critical part of the wave to do a solid turn into?
Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking that. Pretty sure that's Mark that has lost his rash vest. I think. So that shows how solid that last wave was that he took. His rash vest has been ripped off him. That's impressive. I'm still waiting for scores to drop there. Uh, I'd like to see whether these are going to make a change to this heat or not. So, Mark Scratch was needing a 5.64, and he's starting to get a pocket turn under the lip. Good thing is, I'm nowhere near judges or anyone like that, so there's no influence from me at all. But I'm just interested now. I want to see how this changes things up. We're waiting for the, the judges' circles to stop spinning and deliver us numbers. Next heat is on standby at the moment, just waiting for these scores to be sorted out, the judges. Interesting. It's good, yeah, it was. It's been a really good heat there. Next heat is on standby. We're live. has done a switch there with Scratch. He's just taken a 7.17. What has bumped him into the lead? What a last buzzer beater that one was for us all to see. We now have in the water heat two for the Masters round one with Chris Clark and Red from North Shore Surf Club, Ross Brown and White from Tyree Surf Club, and Martin McQueenie in yellow from East Coast Board Riders Surf Club. They all need a 0 0.01 to progress. Oh, hang on. I've not started yet. But welcome to Heat 2. Oh, the Masters. Woo! As you can tell, two coffees have now kicked in. And we have Red having a look here, Chris Clark, just coming off the back of that wave. 
no prior to be worried about at the moment. Look at that barrel though, woof! Backhanded barrel on that left-hander. So coming to you live up here in Thursday East with 3CI Sport. They're looking after all your live streaming. And I'm looking after the fluffy microphone. So you're hearing everything that I'm seeing. We've got Mystique, we've got Sea Monster, we've got Jacobs, we've got Olive Tree Cafe, we've got Lost Shore, we've got NDA, we've got North Shore Surf Club, Christian Surfer Society, we've got Greencoat UK Wind, um, who else? Dunray, Foundation Scotland, the Highland Council, everyone looking after us. There's many more and I've got to try and remember them all. I keep on trying to look at the screen, but it's hard to see them from this distance out. We've got the Masters Heat 2 in the water. The last one was epic. There was a great battle off in the last few seconds of that heat. It did see a switch in situation. So well done, Scratch, for that one. Scratch might be getting interviewed regarding that, and then he'll probably take over the microphone. So all good. But yeah, he's waiting for some waves to come through. That was our first wave there taken by Ross Brown. And we got Red out the back having a look. Committed to the paddle, but nothing taken. It's Ross Brown with a one scored on that. One scored. And we have yellow up and riding. Guess the bottom turn for Martin McQueenie. There's Martin's wave. So Martin McQueenie has got first position here. 
in the Masters Heat 2 with a 1.5 and yellow, rose, uh, yellow, white Ross Brown has got a 1.0 with red yet to score. So Fen Scotland looking after us as well. That's another one we have to mention for sure. So Sport of Scotland have got things working with the Scottish Surfing Federation. We're getting positions actually, full-time posts in the surfing scene up here in Scotland. Um, but it's a massive step forward, massive step forward. It's all coming together. We've got sports science going on with a link through on the universities in Scotland for North Shore Surf Club. North Shore Surf Club, sorry, Lost Shore. So Lost Shore, whenever that opens up in August, it's going to be a game changer for surfing in Scotland. Everyone's a bit like, it's a bit artificial, it's a bit orchestrated, but it's probably one of the best coaching platforms you can get without having a microphone attached to someone's head in the surf. It's a consistent wave coming through. It lasts up to 28 seconds, which is what we're looking at for the Lost Shore down at Edinburgh, just outside Edinburgh, in between Edinburgh and Glasgow at Ratho. So a uh, good team leading the charge down there to get that open for August. So we're all looking forward to that. I suspect it's going to be exceptionally busy. And I can't wait to use my vouchers, which I've already pre-purchased. Woohoo! Also did a crowdfunder one, which I'm looking forward to redeeming, which is a VIP day. So uh, Lost Shore, yeah, I'm looking for that VIP day. I think I'll have uh, Salmon and Calf. No, I won't. I'll just have as many waves as I possibly can, because that'll be epic. So all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, that's what makes these events happen. The sponsorships that we get makes these events happen. Your membership helps make these events happen regarding grant funding. It's not so much the money you pay for your membership, that certainly gets your insurance, but it's the grant funding over and around that for the amount of numbers we have signed up to the SSF that actually makes a difference. The more numbers we have signed up, we probably get more grant funding. So that's what we need to be doing, looking into that. That's what helps Scottish Surfing Federation move forwards. We have White having a look. And White is up and riding. That is Ross. Nice little carvey arcing back turn. And a second one there, a little check turn just again. Looking for the lip, kicks out. And Chris Clark out the back in red having a look. And he's chosen a substantial size wave in the set here he's got the advantage on his backhand for that powerful backhand turn make it around the section so yeah you've got a choice of the backhand turn which would be a goofy surfer here at Thursday East on that right hander or front side surfing which would be a regular surfer looking down the line of the wave some people find the front side easier some find they get more power out their backhand so it's just personal preference and how you find your surfing. Let's see that replay there with Ross. He's trying to work a bit of power with a bit of bounce through the wave. I've got to stop this man here. We've got a man coming past us. I want to ask him a couple of questions. So Mark, you're in that last... Uh, you're in that last exchange. Tell me, am I going to say you got robbed of your clothing? <laughs> well, it's uh, like it's my weekend passion is like taking my clothes off. So I thought I'd start early this weekend. <laughs> so the rash vest, you took one hefty drop and one hefty full set wave. Uh, well, I felt there was a bit of pressure on by the 10th minute after not getting any waves. So I just thought full, you committed fully full send. <laughs> Engaging full send. And so we're now looking for a white rash vest, is that what we're seeing? Well, I think apparently I've got to pay them back in sea monsters and, <laughs> and split bags. So 
product placement. Because <laughs> the sea monsters, you're delivering that. Everyone's absolutely raving about it. It's one of the best hangers, without a doubt, if not the best hanger. It is the best hanger in uh, yeah, surfing. I don't even like. Did you just say like one of? I know, but <laughs> it's the best surf hanger. Are you having it's, a good day? It's good. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, these waves are epic, eh? Yeah, it's pumping. Absolutely like, pumping. Look at this. That left is working and all, which doesn't really happen at Thurzo. Yeah. But the right is delivering without a doubt. No excuses the day. Exactly. <laughs> Go and find that rush, miss. Have you interviewed Zach yet? Yeah. You need to get Zach on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Good luck. So Ross is leading our way there with a 4.17. That last wave to him was a 3.17. So he's put him in the lead with Chris Clark taking his first wave as a 4.0, which is a great scoring wave for Chris. See, yeah, that was incredible for a rash vest to be ripped off by a wave. That's a hard feat. It's hard enough to get the rash vest off physically yourself, but for a wave to come and do it to you. So we'll be keeping our eyes out for that, washing up on the shoreline. So we've got seven minutes remaining on this Masters Round 1 Heat 2 with Ross Brown in white leading the way with a 4.17 heat total. Chris Clark in second in red with his first wave as a 4.0. A solid wave to take his first wave for sure. And then Mark McQueenie with... Now I'm going to call this a suspended priority. I'd like to know what that one is. Um, I want to go and find out what's going on there. But um, with a wave of... Heat total, sorry, of one point... Or sorry, a wave of 1.50 which will be the heat total of 1.50 at the moment, as it stands. And Martin just taking another wave there on his paddle out, another wave on the head. You can sometimes get a clean run out, you can't. It's always a battle when you're feeling tired. There's another wave and it's relentless. It keeps on coming through. Some of these waves are just absolutely on fire today. And Martin's caught right in the face of them at the moment. So that's the next heat away to get in the water for the Masters. Hopefully you're all enjoying from wherever you are around the world. Sometimes the comments have stopped working on Facebook. I have to reinvestigate that one because it's always nice to see some chats coming through.
We've just found the feed for comments. Everyone's commenting. It's actually awesome to see. And Sophie in Bali, you're watching. That's awesome. Hello from Thurso East to Bali. So that's our furthest round the world at the moment. Thank you, Sophie. Will Catron watching in the office. We've got a split peak going on right now for Wilkie. A left-hander rare at Thurso East for Chris Clark. And we had Ross taking a pretty hefty right-hander there, but getting caught in the lip. Hope you enjoyed that, Wilkie. I see you're watching in the office. So Rudy Farkerson giving a big shout out for Martin McQueenie. We've got a couple of cheers as well. That's nice to see. We've now found that little live comment feed. So apologies to those ones put up an hour ago. Yeah, I hope you're still watching. We are getting through them now. We have got in white Ross Brown taken off. A little, little, little bit more activity from Ross going on. He seems to be hunting these waves out and found a solid spot for takeoff. Just getting a little check inside that, well surfed. So a few scores waiting to drop. And thank you for giving the shout outs on Facebook. Keep them coming. Let's see, give me a hands up if you have surf Thurzo East. That'll just be like a high five wavy symbol. Give me one of those if you surf Thurzo East. And I'll keep an eye on that. There's Chris Clark taking a beefy number, having to kick out. Kick out, bail out. Big shack as to Joe. Nice to see you're watching, Chief. Uh oh, now Chris, please say you've still got your leash attached. He does. That's okay. So Chris at the moment is sitting in first with an 8.33. So that's in red. White, you're in second position. Ross Brown with the 5.94. And Mark McQueenie, you're still sitting with the 1.5. But you've had a hectic amount on the head out there. So it's understandable, but still out there delivering it. Come on, Martin. Great to see many people watching, though, but Bali, well played. Big takeoff there from Ross. An airdrop with a little pirouette to finish. Lester, it would be good to see you, man. We're missing you. You're offshore. Hope you're well, Chief. I got the bagpipes with me, so Suds might get another rendition. So that was a finishing heat of Chris Clark in red, progressing through with Ross Brown in white. We now have... Mark Boyd in red, Cal Burns in white, and Jamie Sutherland in yellow. And we're straight into this next heat. Mark Boyd, North Shore Surf Club, up in the Masters. Going for the double header 
this year, I suppose, I expect. Let's see what the battle goes on round about him, if he can get anywhere with it. We've got Cal Burns from the Bellhaven Surf Club in white. We have Jamie Sutherland from the Sand End Surf Club in yellow. Three in the water. Heat is underway. All good. Oh, you're good. I'm going to call the heat. You will. You're in now. Okay. Right. <laughs> we have a... We have an ex-commentator arriving with me. A legend. Because he just surfed some epic head-to-head -head exchanges in the last battle. Let's welcome in Scratch. Mark Cameron. Scratch, in you come, fella. Thanks for having us, Campbell. Eh? So how was that then? How was your last year? That was a bit head-to-head. -head. I know, we've waited years for this kind of good surf. We've been brims the last few years. And to see this kind of surf with nice weather, nice to take advantage and rip it in a couple of waves. And ripping a couple of waves you were. You're right in the pocket in one of those, I think it was a 7.17 you pulled off by getting right under the face of that lip. It's and just, it's smashing a turn and coming out of it. The tide's just started to go back a little bit, Campbell, and it's just starting to wall up a little bit. So we're looking for the next two hours. It's got to be premium. So great viewing, folks. The next couple of hours has got to be just fantastic, I would say. Spot it's looking, on. It's looking good. And my arch rival and friend, I think Mark Boyd could be in here. He is. He's in here, a hot dog himself. Uh, he's, uh, he's done a lot for Scottish surfing. He's uh, super keen. So we'll see if we get some of this heat, Campbell. And oh. think, thinking of that, Scottish surfing then, what's, what do you reckon? What's your take on it? On the up, for sure. I mean, I've been suffering out here for 30 odd years. The professionalism now, with the, with, with your commentary and the judges and the the um, coaching, is just beyond next level to what I had. And I'm really excited for the next generation and my friends' kids. But what I keep telling them, Campbell, it's not just the enjoyment of surfing. It's the lifestyle of people you meet, the places you get to go. It's a fantastic hobby I've had over the years, and it shaped my life. And so, if we can pass on our skills to them, and then it's great to see them uh, carry the flag, if you will. For, for the next uh, 20, 30 years, really. So it's very exciting times. I mean, exactly. As, as an island, I suppose, when you look at the whole of Britain as a whole, we've got water all around us. We've got a playground. It's promoting safety to a point. I mean, the surfers seem to be able to read waves, be able to punch through waves. They've got an understanding of how... Because they have to, to understand weather systems. I mean, that's what's delivering our waves. So would that be a fair point? I mean, it's... Oh, yeah, I mean, just the, the just being in the water, for example, whether it's a paddleboard, a surfboard, just the... the, the, the um, the joy of being in the water, and then you pick up the skills with that as well. And uh, it's it can't be dangerous, but I think it's quite a safe sport if you know what you're doing and you're going to the right times and you're with the right people. It's a fantastic thing, and with the with the wave garden coming to Edinburgh as well, uh, to, to teach people and give them a, a sense of the power of waves have. And it's got to give people confidence to surf through the summer and bigger waves, and uh, excited for that to come along as yeah. well. Like, the wave yeah. garden, we were talking about that earlier, the wave garden has got an advantage point of being able to stand on the side of a wall as a coach and deliver directly to that surfer coming through. That's a game changer in surfing, yeah? Well, you think about a skateboard, you try a kickflip with the same curb, so to get an automatic, kind of almost perfect wave to try that air reverse or a tail waft, whatever it is you're doing, uh, time and time again, here is Mark Boyd, oh, and he yeah, just beauty. under the lip, lash, he loved that. Right now he's flexing inside, but he used to finish his wave off. Nice gouge back at the pocket there. He's pleased, he's pleased with that one. He'll milk us. He's, he's throwing some power down, isn't he? He's, he's looking good in there. That was a nice first turn. That's all the money's got to come for that. But he's got to milk it as well. That's what happens. But that first section, if you can really crack that first section, that's where the excellent scores will come from. Because yep. uh, it does kind of taper off a little bit. And if you can whack that first section, commit to that first section, that's, that's what a lot of commitment, that's what the judges want to see, basically, so... That's exactly, that. the judges are after that critical spot right there for throwing vertical boards and a lot of power and spray, yep. Yeah? And your power and spray is coming from the power from your bottom turn, that's what's delivering it, really, isn't it? People, that's the most underrated turn in surfing, is the, everything comes to the bottom turn, that compression and then release is where everything's coming from. But I, I kind of simplify it, speed, power, flow. Who's yep. going the fastest? Who's throwing the most water? Who's connecting the dots? So it's quite simple when you look at it in that terms. You can tell by looking who's 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 looking good in a wave, yeah. as well as being technical. I'll just well, cancel oh, that. He's got... Just picked up a phone call halfway through this because everyone's seeing him live. We've we got, go. uh, I've got a surfer here in yellow. With that is, but Jamie Sutherland, ball. Jamie Sutherland from Sand Ends, up and riding and on his up. backhand as well. And that's an interesting topic there. Backhand, how do you find do you get more spray off a backhand turn compared to a front hand turn? Uh, Which, you, sorry, to interrupt you there. Yeah, it just depends on the wave. Sometimes you want that kind of vertical backhand attack, certain days suits backhand surfing, yeah, but it's always been perceived as harder, but I think backhand ball riding, that's a skill itself as well, yeah, yeah. but you, you can't take that in consideration, it's how deep you are in the barrel is what we look at here, here we go, here we go. Here, uh, Cal's up take, again, take that one away, Campbell, Cal's just finishing off this wave, it's going to fizzle out for him unfortunately, got the takeoff, but it just fizzled out, 
I mean, 20 minutes is quite sharp out there, Campbell. It's really? A five, six minute paddle back out. So it's, uh, even though it's just 20 minutes, it's extremely tiring. But maybe yeah. I'm just old and uh, old and wise, or I don't know what it is. These old arms uh, take a bit of Old arms here. But, uh, you had two different <laughs> for setups you're in here. You're in the, the Masters and the Open. So you're delivering, and you're also seeing the waves all the way through to the inside, which is causing you a bigger paddle out. Are you, have you changed your wetsuit? You into a five mil, four mil? You you sticking with a six Can I, mil? I've got a six mil, but really a five four is enough because it's so intense paddling. Yeah. It's different from a free surf. Yep. Super hot out there. Super hot. Super hot out there. There you go. I think no one surfers in a realise. It's like jogging outside, Campbell. Once you heat up and you keep moving, it's it's very comfortable. Yeah. Surfing if you've got the right gear on. Yeah, exactly. So really, the water's what a fantastic place to be. There's no reason why anyone, any age, any level, can get a good wetsuit and enjoy the water. It's very comfortable. And the great thing with the wetsuit, it provides that buoyancy as well. There is some buoyancy through that wetsuit, so it does keep you afloat. If you're struggling a little bit, you can have a moment just to have a rest, but you've got your board as well. So and it's it's always someone watching from the beach line anyway. So it's as I crack as you say, it's a safe cracking sport. And look at the crowds it's drawing on a good Friday. I mean, I don't know if everyone's off, but it's certainly busy. Yeah, it was my suggestion to have it. Easter weekend, I think, is a good weekend. Because people's on holiday anyway. It's the end of the surfing season. So the finale, the creme de resistance, if you will, is this weekend where we've practiced all winter and we put our skills to the test, see what the yeah. standard is this year. And Easter can be late, but this year it's in March and it's really delivered. So I'm excited for this next few hours and tomorrow. Looks good, man. So tune in, guys. Uh, great commentary, some great surf coming your way. And... Uh, a really good weekend shaping up. Well, spot on. And what, are you want to take over for the next couple then? Do you want to, do you want oh, to have a I'll handle take, this? I'll, I'll take a next heat if that's okay Aye, then. We'll, get a, little, we'll get a cup of tea. Christian surfers are here giving us I know, I'm going to go down and have a cup of tea. I think that's and, a, a good shout. Uh, I want myself on caffeine and sugar. That's, that's <laughs> what my energy comes from. Uh, so my, 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 my sugar high might drop shortly. So and I have to keep my, <laughs> my come back and see I'm still on the go here. So I'll, yeah, I'll make sure I'll go and maybe find some treats for you there. Perfect, that's fine. But you I'll, enjoy. I'll take over. Everything's set up. Thanks everyone. Speak to you all soon. Cheers. Hello, Wide Web. Welcome. Here we are, the 51st edition. 1973 was the first Scottish Championships. The first World Championships was 76. So the Scottish have been going longer than that. So a lot of history there. And uh, really we're looking forward to the years ahead. And quiero decir algo a mi esposa y mi hija también. Te quiero mucho. Gracias por viniendo. Vale. My uh, Spanish wife is here, just a quick hello to her, thanks for the support. And uh, yeah, it's nice to feed out to an international audience, wherever you're tuning in from. Bienvenida and welcome to the Scottish Surfing Championships. Here we are in Thurso, the most northern part of Scotland. It's uh, definitely worth a visit. I don't know how the waves look online, but uh, really it's, it's some good surf. Here's Red Parlin here, I don't know who this is, but it's Smart Void again, that's who it is. I can tell that bottom turn. A nice swallop under the lip there and just fades back at the power source and again you got a nice top turn again so really he, he, he kept in the pocket there shall we speed that second turn that was crucial for that second turn so really good surfing in my eyes it's a, it's a good wave it's a second good wave so because he's had two good waves now that gives him the chance to paddle right with the back wait for a big set and put pressure on his other uh, competitors there Ah, here we go, the screen's there, perfect, okay, lovely, so I see my competitor, she's in the gyms. Okay. Perfect. I'm just a little bit of technical issues here, I'm a new man in the scene here, I don't know how it works out, but here we've got White up and riding. Called Arms, and he seems to be happy enough for that one, a nice little check turn and then comes off the bottom again. Nice one, Carl. I mean, 20 minutes is not a long time. You've got to get busy. I mean, I see Mark paddling back out there. That's a good five, six minutes to paddle back out. So you have to kind of get busy, really. Three waves, probably maximum, with your best two scores out of 10. You've really got to get busy early. And I can see lines pouring in here, folks. It looks lovely. Here's a replay of Mark in slow motion. Fantastic technique there. Just a nice up under the lip. And here's what I was talking about earlier. He just fades and then just waits off the bottom. So his next turn is also in the pocket as well. And there he goes. It's a little bit of a stall at the top, but good surfing. You'll be happy with that to get the ball rolling. So yeah, thanks to Campbell for his commentary. He's a good lad, he's based in Aberdeen. He's got a wee blog you might want to check in with something. He's a good lad. And he's got uh, some good people skills as well as uh, the knowledge to, to pass on to, to our viewers and people in the Aberdeen area. 
So go and check him out if you're in the Aberdeen area. Um, yeah, we're breaking the action here. It's this northerly, northerly swell uh, this weekend, which tends to be a bit more consistent. As you can see, that headland in the background there, uh, that kind of makes the westerly swells, it kind of blocks a little bit of swell. It has to be quite a big west swell to get into the bay here. So the northerlies are a bit more consistent. Great for the competition, uh, a bit more sets during each heat for our competitors to have a crack on. So we're in the Masters round one, heat three. I'm not sure, there might be one more before we get to the, the Repa Charge heats. So this year, if you get knocked out in the first round, the Repa Charge is like a, a second chance really to kind of have a go. And they're going to score some good waves. So I almost wish I was in the Repa Charge heats looking at this set up here today. It's uh, some great conditions really. So thanks to everyone who's uh, helping out the beach here. Christian surfers, teas and coffees, and we've got uh, People's Champ there. Look at him on his phone, looking sharp. He's got some uh, some merchandise for sale, which is fantastic gear actually. The Luna stuff's really good actually, very reasonably priced as well. So come along and you would get a purchase. And we'll have all the people helping on the beach, the judges and the, the staff behind the scenes. It's quite a big operation here to sit up for this. Lifeguards as well, they're all on hand in case something happens. But uh, it's just nice to have some nice weather to hang out as well. Look at the sun just hitting that surf there. Cracking waves coming in just now at the back there. It's uh, a couple going unridden. So I hope you're tuning in and uh, all day really, wherever you're at in the world, welcome. And uh, like I was saying earlier to, to Campbell, what I'm looking for in surfing, Speed Power Flow who's on the best, best waves, flowing, showing power, and uh, just uh, looking good on the wave is what we're looking for, really. Um, it's not the distance of wave or what it was many years ago. It's just kind of quality manoeuvres, and the steepest part of the wave is what we're looking for. So we'll keep you entertained, and we'll see Mark Boyd, the scores here. Mark's well in front, really. He's, 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 he's looking good here. He's got a 13-point heat total. Carl's in second, and James is third, but he's still got a good chance of getting second, doesn't need much, so a couple of paddlers here, and they've got Mark Boyd again, cheeky chappy, look at him, on the hunt, I think he might kick out after this turn actually, because he knows it's going to be a keeper, see he's got a good brain on him isn't he, he knows that first section just didn't quite hold up as much as he thought, worth a, worth a crack of the whip though. We've also got priority system, which is a fantastic thing. So Mark is now in last priority, and the people up the back, they have priority over Mark. And once they, they make a concerted effort for a wave or take a wave, then Mark has a turn. So really, um, to have a chance at Thurs Reese with priority, and the next wave can be yours, is a, is a fantastic thing itself, really. Um, so it's a great system. I find it's better than it was years ago, with just closest to inside of the wave was the ticket, and people tend to get pushed too deep but it became a bit of a, a paddling procession which can be fun to watch itself but we want to watch surfing not paddling so uh, I do like the new system excuse my phone's ringing I'll just uh... okay I think there is one more master sheet I see a person in there with the rash vest on I think that's the canny walk I know of suds and a couple of competitors there there's two ways to go into the waves here if you go into the right side of the wave it's a shorter paddle, but if you get caught by a set, it can be curtains, but it's, it tends to be shorter. So it tends to be the favourable route, especially at a lower tide. So we'll see how this one pans out. We've still got six minutes for the guys to get something. There's a, there's a priority board there that tells them who's in priority, and also a five-minute flag so they know five minutes left. Get busy time or get your stress on if you need a score, and it's still very tight between second and third, so we could see an exchange, it might change things here, and White's taking off, oh, he made a great takeoff there, but he's, oh, oh, a little fist there, he's a little bit of frustration after that takeoff, he just couldn't quite make that section, a little bit of wind held him up there, he just couldn't penetrate down in time to get onto the face of that wave, that'll cost him a bit of time, but with more than five minutes left, he should get one more crack of the whip, depending, this set could be in the head, if he paddles left, quickly, 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 he might manage to get back out of the back unscathed. As we see Red having a crack loop again. He's pretty deep here, Mark, but he can be because he's got two good scores already off the bottom. And just a nice top turn. That was fantastic. Threw a lot of spray there. 
And SPF's got to stand up again, and he belts it again. Twist your tail. He, he compressed, but not quite enough. It, if he compressed a bit more, he might have came out of that, but he'd every reason to give it a good barrel. He's got two good scores. So he's looking to unleash Fury on that second section, and it certainly looked fantastic. Just didn't quite pull it off. But nevertheless, very entertaining. See the Atlantic swells of the, of the North Shore. I live in the East Coast. We get the, the North Sea's a bit smaller. Tends to be less favourable. More wind swells. But I come up here quite regularly to get some waves and hold the phone. Here's yellow. And just a nice cut back into the power source there. And a little compression. This has got the stand up again. With a nice little cut back there. You might milk his throat's worth. Because he's in third and he needs a score. So this could be a game changer. What does he need on that? I'm not sure, but yeah, that could be enough for him. I'm not sh quite sure the scores. Forgive my uh, lack of knowledge. This is a quite a new thing for me. I've got quite a lot of screens here and mics and cameras, but it's pretty cool. A replay of Boydie now here as we see that first turn. And I think this is the one where he gets this nice tail release. Just look at that compression. That's what you want. Good technique here for your folks at home. Release the tail and just he try to compress and save it. Just couldn't quite save it. But... Uh, Nevertheless, great surfing mark. And you should advance to the next round, barring some miracle the next three minutes. But yeah, Mark Boy, one of the favourites. Uh, he's uh, a multiple Scottish champion himself. And uh, like I said, behind the scenes, a lot for the sport. We appreciate everything you've done, Mark. So, Red got a 5.3 when they fell off. And here is Yellow. And I'm not sure what he needs to get into second place, but that could be enough we'll see what the judges think leave it, I'm not a judge we'll leave it up to them there's more lines rolling and the white's out there somewhere himself he has the whole of Thor's Wiestel himself look at his day that's worth coming up and competing for Thor's Wiestel to yourself next wave's yours anyone you want great result great result so here we are end of the surfing season it's been a a lot of easterly winds in Scotland this year so the east coast has been lit up uh, a lot of dreary dree dree days in Frisabran along the east coast there. We've been surfing a lot with the wind and, and rain. It's been quite favourable. And Thurzo kind of had a slow start to the season. But the last couple of months there's been some surf. And the next month or so is a good time of year as well, with a bit lighter and a bit warmer. So get yourself a surfboard and get, get out there somewhere, wherever you are in the country. A good time of year. So I think we've got one more Masters heat next, if I'm right in saying that, after this one. So we'll look forward to... I did see Suds earlier, so yep, we'll, uh, we'll see how they get on. Yeah, clock's changed this weekend, so it's dark at 7 o'clock, it'll be 8 o'clock tomorrow, so... Sunday, sorry, yep, so remember to keep that one, folks. A bit, a bit more lighter than nights for an after, after, after work surf. Not quite so frantic to get a quick hour in. Leaving your work early, it's a way to go. So, okay, so we'll have a little change there. Uh, James in yellow isn't a second, and Carl just needs a two, and he's well capable of that. He gets a set wave, and one good turn, it's there. So it's quite exciting. I like these close heats, even if it's not big scores. When it comes down to that one wave at the end, and you want a set to come, and that's the frustrating thing being a surfer if the wave doesn't come then he's all out but will it produce will it not produce so it's uh, it can be exciting or like oh, anti-climax sometimes <laughs> depends what the ocean delivers really so it does make it quite exciting so we'll see hopefully Carl gets one more crack of the whip at least I do see some lines out there less than a minute left actually so he, I don't know what to say about that at all he's But yeah, they've had some good waves, this heat, plenty of waves again, so I'll put the opportunity. I can see Yellow's only had two waves actually, he's been quite quite picky. Um, and f and f four, five for Mark and four for, for White. They've had some surf. Like I say, if you have that good wave early, it gives you an opportunity to sit out the back and really wait for a, a better wave really. Um, so depending on how your start goes with the heat, your tactics can't change. We all look at the surf and think, what's my tactic? Should I get busy early? Is it worth waiting for a wave? And White's going to sit this one up, I'm afraid, folks. But there you go. That's the heat done. Well done to Mark Boyd. 
Um, he's got to progress through comfortably, and it looks like James Sutherland in second, but uh, that's unofficial. And uh, but Carl's going to get a chance at the ripper charge heat. So I mean, really, it's win-win. You get through, happy days. You don't, you get a surf again, happy days. So really, it's all good. So here's a here's a few names I know quite well. Donald Peace, he's a, a good friend of mine. And we've got Craig Sutherland, Colin Buchan, I know, and of course Andrew McLeod, who's uh, local here. You want to do some commentary? Are you okay? Uh, no, explaining them so we're over to ship pipe. Okay, forward. perfect, thanks very much. Much of it. I shouldn't see she fought me, but uh, thank you. So it's uh, my friends away just over the next wave there to get my practice in with their kids, keeping sharp. It's getting that balance of keeping sharp and keeping the arms <laughs> and not surfing too much. But if you're over frothing before a heat, you need to disperse the energy somehow without dispersing too much. So um, there's a nice little wave over there. I see the tides running back. So it'll be great just for a little practice pre heat surf. And here we go. This is a good heat, actually. These people can all surf well. So I'm expecting a close heat. Hopefully the ocean delivers. and We get a few sets for the guys to show their skills, if you will. Oh, okay, so we've got this heat. And then we've got a wee 10 minute delay after this heat, folks. Then we'll get back in action again. So plenty to watch still today, guys out there, girls. It's, uh, and here's a wee set coming in. No priority. Start of the heat, so we'll see who's going to pull this. Was red, I think that's Donald Peace with the inside. He might pull in. Oh, maybe so close to that little barrel there, but he's still got to get a wee turn off and get a ball rolling. He'll keep, he'll milk us in. Try and get all the car out of that. And it's great to get a, a wave straight off the bat like that. It feels really good, actually. Everyone else is still sitting out the back. So that first section of Ludenham, it was like. Should I do a top turn? Should I pull in? And it's it's that's sometimes what happens. You you get an indecision and a lot of surfing spontaneity. It's just making that decision. What's the way of doing? What should I do? And often it's a wrong decision rather than skill that makes you having a good or a bad score. And we see white under the lip late takeoff. Oh, that was a spectacular takeoff. And unfortunately to lean back to keep that nose out and it just fell back. So you'd be underwater going blah, 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 raging. What a bummer. But it's the start of the heat, plenty of time. But it was a chance to kind of get an early start there, like Donald. But there's still plenty of surf here. So, uh, yeah, we'll look forward to this next 18 minutes with the boys. Andrew's got a shout to back with. Here is Andrew, actually, picking the lad. Here he goes. A nice little wall in front of him. Oh, and he gave it a good top turn. I'm really uh, impressed with that commitment. And a good job as well, because look at that way fizzled out. It was really only at first section. But like I say, you can get a lot of points with that first section. If you really go, you don't have to go a long way. If you just really commit and give it a good tail waft or a, a spank, uh, the judges will appreciate that. So it's not quality, a, a quantity, it's quality. So a nice start there for Andrew. That good top turn there. He'll be happy. And that leaves Colin out the back. Thursday East is yours, Colin. Any wave you want. Okay, so it's fine. I can see uh, just a little bit of wind picking up here. It just changes the game. When that wind goes offshore and it holds you up and that uh, takeoffs, it's just a fantastic feeling to get at the elevator drop and pull it off. But uh, it does make for a few mistakes as well as we see somebody paddling. So if you see that, that was a con oh, there's a replay on the screen here. That's Donald's first wave. Sorry. And uh, Yep, as we see it, first section, just elude him a little bit. We've got a couple of nice turns after that, so he'll be happy with that. And we just missed someone paddling for a wave. So pa making, making that conscious effort and not catching the wave also loses priority. So that's a bit of a sickener. And uh, tactics plays a lot, as well as your skill and heat. You've got to know when to paddle for a wave, when not. And really, priority is huge. I mean, if, if you can catch the best waves of the heat... You've got a huge advantage because the competitors are not on them, regardless of your ability. So straight away, you've got a, a, a huge advantage. If you can be on the best waves, that's what you want before you've even done a turn. That's the that's tactic you want. And I can see a couple of nice lines coming in and the guys are stroking out the back. I'm not sure who's got priority, but I'm sure somebody's going to swing in this next one. It might even be too far inside, actually. Oh, that looks lovely. Oh, I wish that was me. Look at this, white. Great. 
big up for that first takeoff. And you see compresses, and he's got a nice shove at the pocket there. And he'll knock us in. There he goes, nice technique there. And just, oh, banks off the white water. A lot of turbulence with it. Bank off the white water, a bit extra point. So they're just a cut back itself on the open face. As we see yellow taking off. And a little cut back himself. And that's got a whip, nicely nice. Look at that look. Great little wave for yellow. Oh, he fell off. But he'll enjoy, enjoy the ride nonetheless, even though he fell off. Colin it was there, he'll get back out the back and regroup and like I say he'll be in last priority as competitors will have priority but it's pretty consistent today so really priority could be crucial at times but today it's not such a big issue um, if it's that kind of inconsistent and you wait a while for a wave but I'll tell you when you've got priority and you wait a long time for a wave and that wave comes it can be quite nerve wracking it's, it's a fantastic feeling when you pull it off but if you don't it can be a bit upsetting. There's my mates here. They're just kind of egging him on, which is quite nice to see. Um, so, look at that inside. It's really starting to get a good stage of tide now. Huge tides in, uh, in Scotland, four or five metre tides. So the difference between low tide and high tide, especially on the East Coast, it's, it's, it's night and day, really. So, same with Thurzo, it tends to favour certain tides, depending on the swell. So... It's been a few good waves to start the heat, so pleased with that. The guys have all had a crack of the whip, so that's excellent. And I can see Donald Peace with just a, a little edge on his competitors, but we're actually still waiting for Craig to sc score to come in. And I can bid it in white there, and he's got a nice little wave as well. Is it going to match Donald's? I'm going to say it's pretty itchy peachy, really. Here it comes in. A little bit more, yep. I just think it was a little bit more critical that first section, wasn't it? A bit more speed. Replay there. That was his uh, four point order here. We've got some action at the back. Red pulling it in a bottle. And he gets gobbled up. Oh, we've got a nice vision. So that would have looked good for a while. Uh, I mean, that's tubing right hander. When you pull in that wave and time seems to slow down and you get that vision, it's hard to think about technique in that situation when you first do it because you're just in such a awe of the surroundings you're in but you need to drive or slow down depending on what the wave's doing to maximise your time in the barrel there but Donald got a nice vision and even though it might not be a big score it was certainly a lovely way for him and he'll appreciate that view he had and uh, a good effort there Donald so we've got a replay here and just clipped him didn't it a little bit it took all the speed off and he just went down, so that's, if he just ducked a little bit quicker, maybe he would have kept his speed going and managed to come out of that one, but certainly the technique was there, just a little bit unlucky, that lip clipped him, took a bit of speed away. So we've got white here paddling, and it looks like a good wave. Here he goes, oh look at this, got a wah joy, yeehaw! That's what you want, a nice real gouge off the top, love that. The judges will appreciate that, first section as well. He'll milk it because there's like a little inside as well. Great first turn, really impressed. Well done, Suds. Ah, the white water gobbled them up. But the damage was done. That first turn was just fantastic. If we can see a slow mo of that, or uh, certainly hope there's a few photographs. Uh, photographers on the beach, maybe he'll get a little still of that one for his wall. Ripping it up in his, in his rash vest, Craig. I think he does a lot of coaching as well. Fantastic for the Scottish team. The team were recently over in Brazil for the World Juniors, I think. And uh, what an what experience for the, for the juniors to go over and mix it up with the best in the world. And certainly uh, Scotland was represented well. And the guys and girls did a fantastic job. And I was really impressed. They got through a few heats in, the, in, in a world stage. I mean, what an effort and experience. So good on Craig for passing on his skills. As we see at Turner talking about, as you can see, at front arm, just right around. That's what you want to get that tail release. And uh, backed up with a little cut back there. That's what you want. That front arm to come right round and just twist that hips. And if you do that, one thing's going to happen. That tail's going to come round and you're going to show some spray and, and, and power and that's what the judges will appreciate so a lot of technique, little subtleties that you maybe kind of quite pick up as, as he goes down there here's White Score coming in so there you go Craig got a, White got a 5.33 for basically at one turn so it just shows you if you can really smash that first section that's my advice, go all out if you really commit to that first section that's where the big scores will come from
as you can see me here with my hat on and uh, well, yeah great to have us appreciate you having us on here to kind of pass on my knowledge we're coming here for a lot of years 30 years and seen a lot of change in the surfing world in Thurzo it's been uh, fantastic to see uh, the competitive thing uh, really from the Scottish surfing just going strength to strength a lot of coaching a lot of my friends kids are now surfing and they're starting to get waves off us with that little little fresh arms <laughs> Um, it's great to see the next generation coming through and like I say with the online YouTube and thing and we can watch videos and, and the video analysis a lot of, a lot of good mums Lenny Cruikshank and, and, and people like that coming through and filming their wee ones and it's just a great hobby for them as well as we see White and inside kind of wave but it might wall up for him here on inside here I can see what he's thinking look at this look that's that top turn I'm talking about. And he just, he compressed and he came out. I see how he compressed. That's where you kind of get that speed back down the wave and allow them to get in front of that whitewash. Because you have to really get in front of that whitewash for the judges to say a completed manoeuvre. So they're quite big on that. They're quite fussy nowadays. You really have to complete your turn and ride out. So this compression is, is really vital for kind of coming out and, and keeping your, uh, your balance on the board. So well surfed. See that inside wall there? Wasn't he a big set, but it could be a keeper score, depending on what his scores are. He's got a 10 point heat toll, that'll be quite uh, close as we can see that again. Doing a line, you can see he comes off the bottom here and compresses. That's where the speed comes from, and then you're up and then straight into the lip. Throw the arms up. He disappeared altogether for a while. He came out with the foam there and uh, no claim. I thought I might have got a little flex for him, but it was almost a no claim claim there. It's hands dangling. Eh? So I think he did enjoy that, and I certainly enjoy watching it, Craig. So well done, you, and you've been a, a good heat so far. So hats off to you. As we can see, the Pentland, uh, the Holborn head in the, the background there. It's a lovely set in here. You can see the ferry going back and forth to Orkney quite regularly. That's a regular in, in Malcolm's photos, local legend, Malcolm Anderson, a uh, great photographer. If you can see him on Instagram, I'm not sure what his name is, but he's got some cracking photos uh, and video clips on there for everyone to go and have a look. And uh, he's been a wonderful asset to the local community as well, spending a lot of time with his famous green jacket on the, the rocks there. He's seen many a, a squally day on the rocks doing his bit, so... Good on you, Malcolm. We, we appreciate your time and efforts, and he gives away all his stuff for free, which is uh, is fantastic, really. And the guys get to see the waves and analyse themselves and see where it went right or wrong. In fact, I think normally he makes a video, uh, which will be shown the whole winter's collection of surfing. Basically, is shown on Saturday night in the Holborn, I think, for Pentland. Sorry, to kind of nice to see kind of. What, what happened this winter and who's, who's been hitting for him, really. So it's Malcolm's. He will see somebody up here, blue, with a great takeoff. That's Andrew. Yeah, a nice compression and a great little under the hook lip there. He'll be looking for more than this one, I would say, because he had a good first turn. It just backed off more than he thought, but he's still going to get a little section here to work with. Yes, off the white water as well. We got cut back for extra points. That's pretty much all she wrote. That's. A little kind of a half claimed stance there. He's got to keep going in this one because we've still got seven minutes left though. He's got a long paddle back out after that. <laughs> but he's in third just now, so that might change things. Out the back to look at Ash Red paddling. We've got Dono. Donald Peace. Look at us. Wow. Oh, again, look at that first turn. That was a great turn. And it's still got to hold up for him. And again, it just backed off a little bit, but that was a great first turn. That was the best I've seen all day. So he's got to be enjoying that. And we've got yellow as well. So what an exchange. He just comes off the top. We have a little top turn there. Colin. And he's got the milk up for all it's worth. That could be his best wave. So that was great uh, from Donald there. He just really took advantage of that first section. Threw an arm around. A great technique. And he also passes on his skills to the, the youth of, of Scotland. With a few kids himself at Surfer. A big surfing family as we see a replay of, uh, I think that's uh, Andrew with the blue vest on here. He had a good wave as well, as we can see his first section. He sprays somebody paddling out there. That was, uh, Craig got a great vision. Um, it's just wonderful paddling out and watching people uh, on a wave, even uh, even if it's not yourself, and you get a close-up view and uh, to see the power 
uh, that close and feel it, it's just a fantastic thing, really. And if you've surfed yourself, I'm sure you can appreciate uh, the, the power of the ocean and how good these guys are at negotiating these walls of Joy at Thurzo as we see his second turn there at the whitewash for Andrew. And we've got somebody up riding again. We've got Red. It's Donald again with a nice top turn there. That's what happens. You can sit for quite a while with nothing and then just this money train comes just to get into rhythm and one wave off leads to another. You paddle back out and just... You kind of buy rhythm, and it's just great when it's your turn to just kind of take waves, and sometimes you, you kind of buy it, and it, it's frustrating, but it doesn't happen. But uh, when it comes your way, and you, you get in rhythm of the ocean, it's just it's a great thing to have, as we see a replay. I think of that last wave of red, and that was a nice little... That was his second turn, it was his first turn of that wave, it was a nice one. So, uh, he said a good heat, he has Donald. What a great vision as cups are, your tea stays hot for so long, so nice. So yeah, I, I, I did predict the start of this heat, it was going to be a bit of a winner. There's four good surfers out there and they've all produced and it's certainly close as we get the five minute call. So anything can happen in the last five minutes, really. So exciting finish and as fans, we want an exciting finish. Hopefully Thursday delivers more waves, but gone by what I've seen, there's been plenty surf, man. So I think we're going to be See other shit as we see a replay there. Well, Donald on his second wave be a nice little hack and he compresses there to kind of come out with that conversion of whitewash, if you will, unscathed, and he pulls out. And I go, I was a bit of a claim stance. That's what we're going to say about that one. That was a, he liked that. He enjoyed that. He really enjoyed that and we enjoyed it ourselves watching. So if you're just joining us online, welcome to the Scottish Surfing Championships, 51st edition. Um, been going a long time now since the first champion. I think that was Andy Bennett back in the day, 1973. Um, things have changed a lot in equipment in the last 10, 20, 30 years, but especially since back then, equipment is just incredible now, especially wetsuits. Uh, suffering in this part of the world, the flexibility and the warmth of wetsuits really makes it a lot more advantageous for surfing in this country now. So, um, hats off to the first generation who had the old two-piece wetsuits back in the day and they were quite stiff so difficult to surf for them and uh, you can get anything you want to deliver to your house now so here we go guys less than five minutes left Craig still in first with a 10 point E total and Donald's right behind him with a 9 but he might be due a score not quite sure and Andrew's right there as well so really that's us Andrew needs a 4.72 and he's already had a 4.5, so he's, he can easily get that if, if the wave comes his way. Hey, what priority is he in? He's in second priority as well, so we're set up for an exciting finish here. This has got to be good. Let's just watch and see what happens here. So again, White's, White's in charge. He's in the lead, and he's got priority. He doesn't need to take a wave. So he can just say time, maybe block. If, if, if Red or Blue want a wave, he can take that from them. And so that's kind of the advantage of having priority over the last few minutes, really. So that's a big thing as well to have, which he's got. But with a lot of waves coming in, I still think the boys will get one more crack of the whip as we see a nice lines approaching. What's going to happen here? I can see a set of the back. Oh, yes, what a result. Cool, I'm going to get a good finish here, I think. <laughs> what does White do? What does he do? Is he trying to block some of these? He's sitting the deepest as well. I can see a couple of lines here, maybe only one. So Andrew's in second priority. If he just sits inside, maybe, from White, gets a bit of space from him. Looks like, look at that inside wave. It doesn't even want inside wave as well, look. So they're all sitting quite deep, actually. But maybe White's done that in purpose, you see. If he sits too deep, people think that's where he needs to be, and they follow him. He, he, he. So there you go. He's got to pull them over. They don't get a wave. So that can be a thing as well. But as we see, Blue paddled and he missed it and then we've got yellow up and riding and he's currently in fourth so he needs a good score but he was just a little bit too far down the line maybe to take advantage of that first section and as you can see that effort for a wave by blue lost in priority he didn't catch a wave but look at this he's going to get a second bit of the cherry 4.72 needed here he goes he's up first section Holds up and he gives, oh, harm. Oh, he went down, but he, he had to do that. So I, I, I agree with his attacking uh, spirit there. And I thought he had it. Oh, he thought he had it too, I bet he just 
three quarters of the way there. I uh, hope they get a replay on that one, but he'll be playing that one in his head later if he doesn't get through his heat. <laughs> he had the chance. So that's all he can ask for, is to get the chance as well. And he, he certainly went all out, and he's, it was a good technique there. But he just couldn't quite pull that one off. But he's still kind of out the back with a minute or so left. Oh, I don't know. But I would say maybe White or Red's going to look at pulling this set out the back here as we see Red paddling. He's going, he's quite deep as well. He's to get up quick. As you can see, he missed that, lost his priority. So, but probably no harm, no foul there. I didn't see much more sets coming in. So, I think that's all she wrote. But uh, that was an exciting heat to, to comment on. Um, sometimes heats are low scores and sometimes they're high scores. They're all exciting coming down the end there. But it was some good, some good surf. The guys took advantage. You at Tiger going out at the first section now. It's fairly getting steeper, and that's where that kind of the money turn is. And uh, it was a few good turns there for the guys. I think they all kind of produced as we see that fall off from Andrew in a great turn. He just he's three quarters of the way. He really had it as well. So great effort from Andrew there. As we count this one down, four, three. You may get on a wave. And I think that's just late. You've got to get actually to your feet. It's right on the buzzer up, wasn't it? <laughs> he's always... It's okay because he's got through the heat, but uh, if he needed a score, he'd be pretty, pretty, pretty upset. But as we see, Red just coming in as well. Great heat for Donald. I think unofficially, uh, we have Donald in second place. And he had a big turn after it. <laughs> so Donald and Craig both advance to go through. But hey, Two guys in third and fourth, they get the, they get the stuff of repercharge and great surf. So really, like I was saying earlier, it's a bit of a win-win really. And the guys get the surf again and they're both good surfers. And uh, Andrew is a, is a great surfer, local lad here. And so he'll be looking to make up for that last failed attempt. As you might pass you on to my colleague again. Oh, what? And You're doing such a fine I job. I think I'm talking quite, quite fast. I think I'm, I'm quite bad for that. I get You're excited. absolutely brilliant. So it's, uh, we'll, uh, I mean, check this boy out, everyone. I was, I was, I was Nailed like, it. That was a great heat to call, man. It was a lot of action there. Cracker. So Absolute cracker. In, man. This is just fantastic to comment on. I mean, you just can't argue with that. So we've still got Donald is staying out because Donald's about to go into the men's <laughs> open eye. <right>? So there's... <laughs> You've got to do a look at that too, man. This is brilliant. You walk your rocks and look at us and you'll be in awe, honestly. <laughs> well played. No worries, I was being spot we'll on. Nice <laughs> <See ya. laughs> that was epic. Electric, there's scratch for you, everyone. I mean, where do I start? How can I even compete against that? What a fella. So scratch. I don't know if that was coffee in his flask, boys. Did you notice? Was it coffee in his flask or was it uh, Lucas Aid or? Wow. Yeah, impressive. What an excellent <laughs> heat that was. Just fully, fully electric from everyone. So we've got a, a 10 minute window here with the moment with uh, Donald's out in the water and they're just gonna paddle themselves out and get ready for it. And uh, aye. There we go. So, we'll have a breather, we'll go and get a bite to eat, and uh, we'll catch you all soon. Cheers!
Yourself, you had bumps here with a shock that I mean, um, John Stewart yep. Hailstone said. I remember when the bike was leaving, yeah. 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 Yeah.
that? No, no, Mark Yeoman. You didn't, sorry. Mark Yeoman, you didn't. But yeah, so that's, I was knocked out. I got a, I got a double broken cheekbone. Surfboard, caught in the barrel, ripped out, and bang, the rail off my face. And I bashed a stem from the rail, and I was out floating on my back, luckily, for about, what took me about 360 metres, I was floating. You see me coming in on the watch, and I got woken up by... Back on the rail? Yeah. I got woken up face down, and that's when I woke up, and I was like, what happened? That's my first memory. First memory was trying to gather my surfboard in the chalet. Second memory was Colin Buchan hobing me up on the road. And he said, Campbell, you're about to go across the road. Get in the van. And I was like, I freaking... And I, put, I managed to persuade him to let me drive my own van to Spiffy. And I drove to Spiffy. My next memory, I was on the beach being held by my neighbour. And she said she saw me walking around the beach. I was in and out of the shops, saw the houses. Because it was all on the watch. You see the whole thing on the map. And I went into the hospital. I'd Thursday, it happened the 11th of March. And I didn't properly string a sentence together until Tuesday. And it turns out the Tuesday I got assessed by a... a a and E doctor, and he said we can't tell right now with the swelling. So they put me into a CT scan on the Saturday morning, and then facial scan. And they're like, "Shit, this is all sunk in. You need to go to surgery." And I was like, "Oh, so they, they, they couldn't do. Oh yeah, yeah. So they, they couldn't do anything with it at the time. So they said you're going to be in in about a week. You just have to let everything settle and settle down." So on Tuesday, I still couldn't speak, and they were really concerned about that. And then eventually, one of the guys, Prof Bird, phoned home and said, "Can you try something for me?" I was like, "What's that?" He said, "Go and equalise. That's weed and diving." So I equalised, and I remember hearing all this air bubble go, and it suddenly it was like the movie Limitless when you take the chewy tablet for the good brightness, and I was like, ah, well that's it, and you just, everything came to, and the whole cheekbone was sitting on my olfactory nerve, so all of my eye sockets were just pressing on the nerve, giving me constant knockouts, or constant concussions. Look at this. So I was a lucky lad. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my God. So I, yeah, I was lucky. A lucky boy. So uh, yeah, eight weeks out of the water. Yeah, I went to hospital for that. Well, that's quite a while ago. That was quite a long time ago, and that was years ago. So I was like, a lucky call. I mean, a lucky one for me. And everyone's like, oh, you don't surf alone. You shouldn't do that. It's a rare help. And I was like, uh, what have I been? I've been out surfing again, alone. But it was just a freak. It was just a freak. The wetsuit keeps you up, and I proved the point. So it's it's not a real bad thing. But they did a uh, they did surgery on me. And they were all sitting there. I know the radiographer, I know the uh, the surgeon. And they came in to see me the next day and they're like, Hi Campbell, how are you? And I was like, fine, what's the practice? And they're like, well, and Marky was a really thick, a southern Irish man. And he came in and was like, oh, you know, you should get one surgery and it's quite sloppy and like a jigsaw piece. And I was like, yeah, yeah, but you, you put metal in. He was like, no, no. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And the juniors, I know all the juniors and the radiographers, and they're like, what's wrong, Campbell? I was like, tell me. You put metal, you've got a plate, you put a pin, something in there. And he's like, no, nothing. I was like, what's wrong? I was like, I have to stay for eight weeks out of the water. And he was like, oh. He says, I've got to stay for two weeks at 45 degrees while this repairs. And he was like, oh, shit, you're right. I mean, it's my livelihood at the moment. And he was like, I didn't think about that. And he was there. I was like, I feel fine. I'll just stay. So you did nothing for a week or two at all. You were nothing. Just yeah. Just got by with yeah. So I had to let it sit in my face and rest. And it's, it's there, it's good. I was hoping to do a lot more to my face, but. <laughs> cool. Right. Good luck. Yeah, that one right there. 
Uh oh, I can't find the update. We're back! How can I compete with Scratch? That was absolutely epic commentary all the way through, but what a heat! So, back into it with Donald Peace in the Water wearing red, and we've got Joel Carlston in yellow, in white, sorry, Tam Hood in yellow, and Rudy Farkerson in blue. This is the Open Men Round 2 Repercharge Heat 1. Just unbelievable that last set of waves that came through for the, the last heat. Just fully electric. The contest the battle that was going on was on the money couldn't get any better than that couldn't get any better than that and you had the commentary of all commentaries scratch was electric so a big shout out and thanks to him for sure i've got to try and live up to that now come away so we've got four just sitting having a chill at the moment we've seen some solid set waves come through while we've been waiting there's a 10 minute interlude just to get everyone set and ready and watered and fed and loo breaks the whole lot and we're back to it now with at least head and a half double over coming through in some of these set waves. It's absolutely pumping here at Thursday East. So great to have everyone. Paul's in town. How are we doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> good, good. Doing good. Taking a rest. Taking a rest. You've been many photos out there. I got a few, yes. It's been unbelievable, isn't it? It's some really serious good. surfing going on. Aye, fantastic. And you're seeing some of the, the Groms just delivering. The youth of today, they're absolutely on fire. But yeah. when you saw that last heat, that was just... Yeah, that was that was awesome surfing. It's been great waves. And it's still coming through. It's yeah. up there for sure. I couldn't believe the other guys surfing this little peak over to our side here. That was uh, oh, shallow breaks. Yeah. So amazing. So we've yet to get our first score here in this repercharge round two. And awesome. So did you travel up last night, today? No, this morning. This yeah, morning? Left at six o'clock, arrived about half eleven. So. There you go everyone, 6 o'clock from Aberdeen to get here for half 11 and into the thick of it straight away, the Roby's on, camera's in hand and getting some shots. PLB photos everyone as well, have a look at that, check them out. Oh it's PLB surf pics as well now, what a beauty! Game changers here everyone! Woo and typically just when we start at the heat it's now gone into a silent set of waves. Don't worry, the lull before the storm it will come through. We have got, uh, so that is Tam, yeah, Tam's gone out with a, a gath on. It's, going, it's obviously getting shallower now, the tide dropping. Yes. But that's certainly delivered in that last two rounds, was, was just on fire. So I think we'll get all repercharge done today, and we'll see what we're moving on to tomorrow, we'll find out. Our technical, or director of the contest is floating about next to us. I might ask her a little interview with him. Will do. So it's trying to not get these lull spots with me and God you had that with scratch, it was quite impressive. He could he commentated about anything. It was electric, his arm signals, hands, everything. It was fully... Uh... <laughs> yeah. No. Doing it off.
Starts there. That was Tam just up and right in there. The waves are starting to come through, but we have our contest writer here. It's going to give us the intel and the info on what's going on. In fact, we've got a wave being ridden. Let's just hold for a second. We've got red up and riding, hunting for the barrel, and just getting clamped in that, I think. Yep, so that was red. That would be Donald Peace. He's just been out there for the last heat, and he's gone in for this one again, straight away. So what do you take? What's your take on this this weekend, then? You, what are we saying? What are we saying? Well... Is it successful so far? I think so. I mean, as ever. Surfing contests, believe it or not, rely on surf. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know it's stated in the obvious, but look, this is one of, sort of Europe's premier breaks, yeah? And when it turns on, it is spectacular. And, and I mean, we've all been pouring over the weather charts and the forecast charts all weekend, uh, all week. And it's, it's producing the goods today and hopefully tomorrow, possibly Sunday. We're not sure yet. Possibly Sunday. Sunday. Is that, are you you're trying to entice me to say I might get a surf on Sunday? Is that what we're saying? Um, or we're going to be still going for competition? I think we could be still be going for competition. Well, let's, let's see how we get on today and tomorrow. But e even then, I mean, you know, for you, Campbell, there is a break over there for the lesser <laughs> skilled people. Like it, and are we? I believe are we? Uh, have we got the sunshine out up here? I, What's the rest of I saw like? a bright light in the sky. This is incredible. And I, was, I was quite shocked. Um, apparently, the rest of the, of the UK, like especially the southern end of it, is not very pleasant this weekend. It's, oh, uh, there's gales and storms and all sorts of things. Scots, we've got our sun cream on today. I, I would <laughs> if I was uh, you. It's, it's epic. We've yes. got, that's uh, is that Donald up again? Is this boy, I know it's Rudy Farkerson up there. It's just there's just wave after wave. The last heat was unbelievable, it was game on, that was just superb, the exchanges were epic, but it's just nice to see, I mean it's as you say, we've got the sunshine and the rest of the place is raining to bits, yep. you couldn't have asked for more than that, you couldn't, you couldn't, and is this anything to do with you, have you got a link, well you know, have you I've run with somebody, I did you're very well connected, well connected, exceptionally well connected, <laughs> had a finger in many pies, <laughs> <laughs> so I've been told, anyway on that note, <laughs> see, thanks for the update, it's, uh, it's one of those jokes we had. I maybe popped a finger out in uh, one of the last contests we were at, and our, was, uh, our contest director hurt. My finger was pointing the wrong way, and he looked at me and says, Are you all right? I was like, No, I'm not all right. So we had a laugh about it, so my finger is back to normal. So, yes, great shout out from our contest director. Back to the action. <laughs> Interesting to hear about the rest of the UK. You're all in the rain, so I hope you're enjoying this in the live stream. 3CI Sports got us covered. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube. Let's get those numbers up, let's send the messages in. This is uh, what it's all about. We've had some good exchanges going on there. At the moment, we've got blue in first, Rudy Farkson, 3.3. Tam Hood in second in yellow with a 2.67. Third, Donald Peace with a 1.5. Tell you what. A solid wave you took. Are they getting harsher in their scoring? Are they realizing it's an epic pumping wave? Is that time having another look on the wave? Sunshine, look at this. This is just epic. The jacket's off, the hoodie's on. I do have about five layers underneath that though. And this wave is just delivering. Every time I saw a split peak go on to, there's a left-hander being taken by Red. Big backhand hit in there. Is that Donald again? It is Donald, just hunting out these waves. He's active, he's so active. We've got White up and riding, that is Joel. Joel trying to hunt to get into that. I mean, there's definitely a hollow section that can nearly be barreled through. It's just superb. But Donald there taking that left hand on the shallows. When you split a peak up here, so one going right, one going left, that's a, that's a rare sight to be seen, and especially in competition, especially with the size of the waves we've got coming through. So fair play to them all, absolutely fair play. Chasing down every single, eking out every little last bit of wave we can get. Welcome to Thurso, everyone. This is what it's like, 2024 Scottish Nationals. We've had Scratch on the mic, he was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. We've had interviews with some of the athletes. We've got Blue up and riding at the moment. So Two-tone underside of that board working there. 
staying quite tall on that wave, just trying to gather some speed down the line. But it's dying out with the tide, it is backing off. But it still doesn't beat the fact the sun's on us. We'll take that all day. Well, happy Easter Friday to all of you anywhere, wherever you are. Give us a shout out where you are. Give us a cheers online. Give us a Facebook shout. Connect with friends. Let everyone know. Share, like, thumbs up. Shack us the whole lot. Let us know you're enjoying this like we are, because this is just on fire. There's a chinky binoculars every time I look over at Scrabster. I see Rose is looking out the window, just checking everything's all right. Hope you're well over there, lass. So we got Donald in the lead now. He's picked up on that last score of a 2.73. So it's red, Donald Peace, blue, Rory Farkerson, second, Tam Houdin, yellow in third, and Joel Carlston in fourth. We have got eight minutes 30 remaining in this heat two. Repertage, repertage, sorry. Heat one, I apologize, repertage. So what are you doing and where are you in the world? Let's hear from you guys. We've got yellow, Tom having a look. Oh, he's just coming out of that one. He's thinking he's too deep. Probably could have taken a risk with a tuck, but he'd prefer to be in there with the mix. Make sure you're getting the wave he wants. So it has been a situation change. Ruri has gone into first position over Red Donald Peace. And another wave. So the wave, the, the way the wave is building and then wraps around to the side, it's a, a wave you can read it and you know where it's taken off from. It's always a win. So it comes down as well to the choice of boards out there, some thrusters going out there. Some are going for a groveler when the wave changes, so groveler just means it's a, it picks up easier. What am I seeing going out there is a Piazel gremlin going across the, the rocks at the moment. So we've got six minutes remaining in this heat, with Ruri and Blue leading the way, and Donald Peace closely behind him in red. Tam Hood, you are needing a 1.57 to progress through. So 1.57 is not a big score to get. We have Red up and riding. There's Donald again. Bang! Off the face. Can he recover it? He just comes unstuck. Doesn't make it off the, the lip and into the shallows to ride that one out. But certainly, top marks for commitment and effort. He's been active, eh? He's just come from another heat. Had a 10-minute window where he actually got a couple of waves in a free surf. And then he went into the next heat. So Donald, wow, you better be eating your porridge today, boy. And the replay is there. Look at that, just off the face, trying to land it. Just kicks out and comes down shoulder high. But full points for commitment. Donald will give you that. Landed? Ah, what were we saying? Sixes? It's nice to see the influx as well of photographers that we've got from all over the place. There's many people, not as part of the production team, but many others have turned up. They are loving this. There's a load of people watching all on the front. The sun is out. A lightish offshore breeze. We'll take all of this all weekend. Quite happy with that. If you are at a loss and you're thinking the weather's rubbish where you are, well, you might as well just get in the car. It's not that big a drive. Get up here and enjoy it. 
Come and say hello, have a word. If you do travel from a massive distance out, come and give me a shout on the, on the microphone, we'll have a word and uh, see what your journey was like. You're welcome. So we have got four minutes remaining. It's open men round two, repertage heat one. Our man for the hour, Oscar's about to get back in the water. He's in the six mil, I think. Is it six mil wetsuit this time? It's got a hole in it. It's got a hole in it. That's, that's where your head comes out. It's all good. No, no, that one. We've got a summer suit on now again. A wet summer suit. A wet summer suit, and you're about to get back into that surf. I love it. With a, a very large camera. It's very large. It is. That's going to certainly capture some images with that. I'm not going to say look, people with big cameras. I don't want to know. Big lenses. That's it. I take it that uh, so you've got a... Uh, a leash on that, like you would have on a go on a bodyboard. A bodyboard, yeah. Bodyboard leash on the bottom. So is that the only it. device, or is it is there a, a backup? I'm no, not. No, I shouldn't have said that. No, no Let's backup. touch wood. No, no, We're no, good. No, no, no. I don't, we don't need a backup. <laughs> We're touching wood again. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> good luck out there. Enjoy. Three minutes remaining. No exchanges while we were speaking to Oscar. Tell you what, another person, fair play, getting in the water there. So he's in the water with fins and a camera, trying to get into the right spot for the surfers to not hit him, but to be in the right spot for getting that perfect shot. So yeah, that's, that's commitment. That's a different love of photography for sure. But epic to see, it's not just these surfers in the water, there's surfers all around us at the moment that you might not see in the camera. And there's just different peaks going on up here at Thurzo. So it's just a heads up shouted from the, the beach commentator, Dan, who's doing a splendid job for us today. I'm normally on that one, or normally doing this one, or normally doing that one, and some scores, and some judges, and some priorities, but no, today... You're lucky to have me. You've had Scratch, which was epic. We've interviewed Boydy. We've interviewed Robin from Tyree. We've, yeah, it's had a few people coming through for the interview setup. We'll get more of that. We want to try and keep you updated. We want to try and get more people on the live stream. Spread the word. I'm going to explain. Could I do that now? What we've got left? We've got one minute 30. Let's try and do it in one minute 30. About your Scottish Surfing Federation membership. You get that, oh, in fact, we've got a paddler. No, nope. you get that membership. It's just, it's not just about insurance. It's not just about the, the SSF membership. That membership is actually a number. You being a number. That number then gets added up. And the amount of members we get in the SSF. Well done for that take there, Tam. A little left-hander. We've got white as well. Sorry, I'm just going to continue on with the commentary here. And that's Joel. We've got coming up for one minute remaining. So let's get back to that membership. The more numbers we get, it adds to grant funding. So it's not about that money you put into the, the club. It certainly is about your, your person, your number. The money helps with the administration of that. But it's also about the more we get in the Surfing Federation, the more grant funding we can hope to achieve because it needs to be supported. So we want more people recognised. We know you're all out there. All you surfers are out there. Sign up. Sign up for the SSF. The more members we get, it will come back in figures of grant funding. So please do that for me. That would be awesome. We have Blue having a look on the goofy takeoff. Trying to find a little pocket just in front of that white water. So Ruri Farkerson just having a nice, nice curvy wave there to enjoy all the way through and kicking out with 15 seconds remaining that'll probably be his last he'll probably take a belly surf in and that'll be ending the heat still with a white waiting for a score eight and seven and six thank you dan there he is so there is our heat one gone for repercharge the repercharge of open men and there's still waves coming through. So we're straight into the next round. And 
and we have White just finishing off that wave, coming in, taking a prone surf all the way back home. That was Joel Carlton, just got an absolute cracker to finish on, unfortunately after the buzzer, and luckily before the next buzzer, because that can sometimes cause problems. If, you, if you're riding when the next wave is on, the judge can score you as the next competitor, and it's not you. So yeah, it can actually disqualify you, so be careful there. We now have our next heat away to start. We are up and running. Cal Burns in the water in red, Bellhaven Surf Club. Ansel Parkin in white, Bellhaven Surf Club. Colin Buchan in yellow, Aberdeen Surf Club. Eben Parkin in blue with Bellhaven Surf Club. Colin Buchan looks like he's out there on his own with a group of friends from all from Bellhaven Surf Club. Are they going to gang up? Is Colin going to have to fight his way through this one? I think he's got this. As an Aberdeen surfer with a Bellhaven surf crew, I think it will be a cracking little setup out there. And there's a little set wave coming through in the back. Where are we all sitting? How are we looking? We good to get into this? Who's going to be first to draw blood in this next heat? We've got Yellow having a look. Yellow's not quite getting in there. Blue's now having a look. Blue has got first wave. That is Eben. Bang, under the pocket. Oh, he's just made that through. Nicely done. So strong through that lower section just to keep himself and decides for a belly flop out the end of it. That was a proper inside the lip hit. And uh, yeah, he's... He never got put off his feet by the lip, so that was impressive strength from the young Eben there. Well done. And next wave coming through in the background. Who have we got lining up for this one? Just reeling off like a machine. All just caught too deep, too much in the inside of that wave. But it's hollow and just peeling. Look at it go. That's what it's all about. So a nice start there for Eben with 3.83. That's his first taker, and uh, he needs to back that one up, and then he can sit, not and relax, but sit and choose and pick. He can get what he needs. Just giving a shout out for Rue there on the last heat. This is lovely. Sun is blistering out now, team. I put the puffer jacket back on just because we're in the shadow, but I now don't think I need it again. It's beautiful, stunning. Two having a paddle. Blue has seemed to have picked the wave off again. That's Eben Parkin. And kicked out. I believe the rumour is that there's bad weather mostly over Britain and we are with sunshine. We'll take that. Set wave in the background, some movement happening out the back, just think they're going to get caught just off the side, they can maybe take the shoulder hit. There it is, that's red having a look. Red is up. Carl Burns. Some of them can be nice waves. And just peel all down the line. This one's actually still holding, still getting a wave out of that. Come on, still gathering speed, trying to get the inside section, still riding. Get a little check turn in there on the inside and kicking out onto the shoulder for the easier paddle back out. White having a look. Nope, wrong position, not taking off on that.
That's Colin with a 1.83 second position. So we've got blue Eben Parkins in first at the moment with a 4.23 and Colin in yellow with a 1.83 in second. Carl Burns in third, waiting on scores. And Ansel Parkin in fourth in white. As you can see, the sun is out. This is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Welcome to the sunny part of the UK. Right here, we've got up and riding again. Eben Parkin is just absolutely on fire out there. His work rate is so high. He's getting as many as he can under the belt. And we have White trying to beat that section, not making it through, but still going for it. Epic. Work rate's good. We get 20 minutes, but I think we do have a wave count limit of 15, so he's got to be careful. You gotta keep an eye on that, because that can actually get you scored down for going over that limit. But a couple of whirly wheels still spinning just for the scores, wait for them to come in. So again, another cracking score from Eben Parkin with a 5.5 in that last wave. So he is leading with a 9.33 heat total at the moment. So yellow's leading a 1.51 to move into second. So we get blue up in the lead. Evan Parker with 9.33 with red in second place, Cal Burns with a 3.33 and yellow, Colin is looking for a 1.51 to move into second and white Ansel Parkins requiring a 2.57 to move into second. And there's a nice top turn from Evan, big bottom turn coming up, look at the spray off the bottom set, the fins, bang, another top turn wave, uh, turn What a cracker there by Eben. Good on him. Deserves the 5.5 there. It's a spray in that bottom turn. The bottom turn counts for so much. It sets up the next part of the wave. We have paddle there from White, I think it was. And another wave coming through the background. Who is set up and in position? No one deciding to go for it. Tell you, I realised today when I, I went for the shower this morning, I forgot, forgot to uh, take my shower gel and I used the hand wash. Hair is weird today. <laughs> A little bit of uh, personal detail you need to know about. But still waves rolling through here at Thursday East. 2024 Scottish National Championships. We have White having a paddle and just not quite making it into that one again. And we're still looking for a white, white rash vest. We interviewed Mark earlier, Mark Eden, and we have up and riding in red. And down, so Carl Burns. And more set waves coming. Coming up for 10 minutes. Nice solid wave coming through. Someone set up for this one to the in position. Inside. Here comes the takeoff. Lovely takeoff by Eben Park. So that's Ansel Parkin. Oof. What a cracking wave coming through the back of that as well. Well done for Eben. That's his, uh, sorry, Ansel. Get that one right and white.
That's Ansel's first wave. So that was a great wave, two brothers in first and second. Eben with the blue, with 9.33 heat total. And Ansel in white, in second position with a heat total of 5.44. So two brothers side by side here. So Bellhaven Surf Club delivering. The brother rivalry going out out in the water. It's probably pushing them and pushing them to make them surf against each other better and better. And I'm pretty sure Father is delivering on the, the microphone down the far end because that's Dan Parkin. So he'll be extremely proud sitting there and being truly professional all the way through by just calling them by their colours and not by their names. So we're under 10 minutes now remaining in this heat. Surf still delivering. Sunshine is out. Two brothers head to head. This is turning into a little battle in the family. Are they going to be separated later on by mum and dad for a scrap in the back of the car park? I think it could be the younger brother that's leading the charge here, actually. Just such a nice wave when it comes through. So how's everyone doing out there? What have we got going on? What's happening with you today, wherever you are? We're uh, we're the Scottish National Surfing Championships up here in Thurso, with 3CI Sport looking after your live stream. Five cameras on site. We've got still cameras on site and we've got a surfer nearly up and right in there but not quite i think that could have been yellow having a look not quite getting into that wave Seven minutes, 30 remaining. The brothers at the top. Blue, Eben Parkin with a 9.33. Ansel Parkin in white with a 5.44. Cal Burns in third with a 4.2. And he's in third in red. And yellow, Colin Buchan in fourth with a 1.83. And it's just finding that spot. The pressure, the challenge. You're coming up to that five minute marker window. Five minute pressure window. Gonna make sure. So that's a little paddle battle going on there between the brothers. Has that changed out the priority? Blue didn't move. White already had fourth priority, and we have a set wave coming through the back. And red has gone for it. Red's got pulled the pin. Cal Burns has taken off a good set size wave there. Still riding it out, kicked out along the side. I mean, what a face it came through in that wave. Imagine a nice take off, a good solid rail dig into the wave. And we're checking for time. His dad making a statement, but the athlete did cover. He did call. He did call. Put his hand up, looking for a situation update. Now everyone's asking for the updates because it is getting down to that last part of this wave, this wave, this heat. Sorry. Five point four minutes remaining. Five point four minutes. Five minutes forty seconds. <laughs> Thank you. 
And we have a paddler. We got two of them going for it. And no one getting into it. it. Can be sometimes really tricky to get into those. We have White up and riding. Ansel is up. Whack. Ansel parking, doing his bit to try and get back into that. Oh, nice inside section. He's coming unstuck. Whoocha. What a cracking little wave, though. So at the moment, it's blue. It's Eben Parkin in first. Red, Cal Burns in second. And white, Ansel Parkin in third. And yellow, Colin Buchan in fourth. But we'll see what that last wave did with white. Might be a change. That was solid. Just if he'd ridden that last section out, he'd have been spot on. Let's go to the Parkin bros. Nice shout out. Like it. Chris Gersley, you're after the Parkin Brothers to get through this. Here we are up and riding. They're delivering for you. Look at that. Nice little off the top from Eben. Looking for some speed. Trying to get into that next section. And just completing. So a little bit of spray off that top turn. Chris, you might need to do some more shout outs. You seem to just suddenly turn them on them when they're surfing. Flicked the switch, off he went. Right, Chris has asked, I better deliver. So we're waiting on a, a white update at the moment. It may see him jump Cal. He was looking for a 1.59, and I think the last score he got was pretty, pretty solid. If he'd completed that last turn, he would have been game on. Here's your off the lip. There it goes, there's a bit of spray. Well done, Eben. And we have in red, up and riding. Cal Burns. Two solid turns there. Still riding this one out. So White, your last scores put you into first position. So White and Blue, the brothers are having a rumble at the top. Ooh, Chiaba Uti. That's what it's all about. 9.44 and 9.33. That is going to be trouble back home in the living room, parents. In fact, they're both going to go through if they stick like this and the heat stays like this. That's not so bad. But you better leave them separated for a couple of hours. Still waiting for a score for Red to drop. Could it switch in the position for second? He's looking for quite a high score of 6.08. I think the Parkin brothers are parking it. Two minutes remaining. Dad's on the shout out. You can hear him getting excited. <laughs> Definitely a dad joke. Jane and Dom would be delighted. One forty-five remaining. And we have up and riding. <laughs> the Parkin brothers are just going for it. Ooh, we have a front foot slip off. That was for Ansel. Front foot slip off and just decide to slide face down on the wave. No waiting on too many scores at the moment. I think Ansel's one will be a, not a throw away, but... Uh, I don't know how many, what the count is for them. It'd be interesting to see what the count is for the Parkin brothers. How many waves they've taken out this whole heat. But they've been active. They're obviously getting fed properly by the parents. So we're coming down to our last 40 seconds. Parkin Brothers leading the way here. Ansel Parkin in white in first with a 9.44. His brother Eben is right behind him with a 9.33 in second in blue. We have up and riding. 
in yellow. That's Colin Buchan. This is... Is it too late? Is he getting something with this? He got the first turn under the lip. And it's just mellowed out that wave for him. Probably his better wave of the heat. We've got 10 seconds remaining. The Parker brothers are delivering. The excitement's just gone on. I've never seen someone count down from 10 so quickly. Quite impressive. What a heat. So that's the Parker brothers have parked it. Well played. Wow, it was a proud dad moment there. Ansel and Eben Parkin progressing through. Big shout out and a, a big cheer down the far end. What's that? Did they? So the brothers just to give a, a, a punch to each other in a good way. A congratulations knock. Here they go, they're on screen. They're having a chat, it's a friendly chat. It'd be something like, did you see my last wave? Yeah, did you see my last wave? Yeah, we came first and second, so you saw both our last waves. Yeah, yeah. They'll be buzzing. There goes a drone flying past the screen. We have the next one, he three. So that was a cracker, that last one as well. It's game on here. Finn Clark. Whoa. I'm full, full, mat, full fat, thank you. With Finn Clark in red, with Ben, no, Ben's not here. With Charlie Pugh, how many are out there? Give me a second, let's just do a double check here. Where, where, where? I think Ben is here. I have Ben paddling out on the right. Yeah, we do, we got all four in the water. So we got Finn Clark in red, Ben Larg in white, we got Charlie Pugh in yellow and Jamie Sutherland in blue. So how's this one going to go down? Finn, Ben, Charlie and Jamie. Wave out the back. Here we go. We have Red having a paddle. Red is to their feet. Red is taking a nice drop, looking for any form of barrel. Not quite getting it. There's the pocket turn. Ooh, yeah, beauty. Coming unstuck on the, underneath that lip. Well, what an absolute starter that one is. Landed. That would be a belter from Finn Clark. A nice wide takeoff there for sure. Great to see, great to see Finn Clark kicking off with full commitment and hoping to get more like that with a landing procedure. That's going to score massive. Sun is out, waves are here, surfers are surfing well indeed. The treats and trinkets are arriving when we need them. Everyone's doing their bit. Nice to see the brothers walking up together, having a chat from that last exchange. There's no gloves off on the slab. That will wait that for later on. But they have made it through. This is delightful. You've got no idea. The weather is just brilliant up here in Thurso. The waves are perfect. I'm happy with this. Do I do it? 
Yeah. 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 Y
I'm just going to see if there's a replay coming in. Just superb. This is what it's all about. There's three or, three or four jobs going on again. Camera live for you guys there. There's a replay coming up in here. I can see myself on screen. We're looking at scores. And we have a writing. Is that red again? Trying to look for that tuck in, just getting around the bottom of that wave. There's the hit. Oh, throwing an air spray from Finn Clark. Fully committed. We have up and riding in white. That's Ben. Off under the lip. A tiny little bit of airdrop there. And another one leaning back hack. Just comes unstuck with the slowing of it. But still solid surfing here with this heat. That's what it's awesome. It's all about. I'm still standing with a phone that's not mine. He was looking at me thinking, what's going on? That was in red, that is Finn. And bang, there's a spray off the lip, nice. There's me, wow, that was close. You see my bad hair was using hand wash. So it's all gone on, Hugh, you've delivered. Contest writer standing here, absolutely delighted. And I'm standing with his phone. It's a very big phone, this. <laughs> so we're waiting for a load of scores dialed in here. Look at that. A little bit of air just coming unstuck. So what have we got then? Red. We get Finn Clark in first with an 8.90 score combo or heat total. Ben in white in second with a 2.83. Charlie in third in yellow with a 1.90. And Jamie Sutherland in fourth with a 0.93 in blue. We have someone having a paddle in white. Up and riding, <laughs> Ben, whack, laid by a kayak, but just comes out of it. Look at that left-hander as well throwing. So it's nice to see some fairly acrobatic manoeuvres going down there. Still coming through, still coming through. Blue having a look out back. Jamie Sutherland. Here he goes, Jamie, have we got it? He's got it, the takeoff solid. Digging in for that hit. Checking on the face and again. BBC News, Radio 4. Hello, Campbell speaking. Yes, can indeed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. 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 
One red up and right in there. Yellow, you have first priority. White, you have second priority. The waiting scores are blue and red. Five minutes. Hello. That's all right. Perfect. Today's all Sunday. We should be working with the, the waves we've got, and uh, it's delivering all right. It looks to be the same for the whole weekend, so it should be on for the whole weekend. Great. Um, and what's the best way of introducing you to Campbell? Uh, Campbell Scott, Scottish Surfing Federation MC. The voice of Scottish surfing. That would be it. What a great job you've got. It's spot on, yeah. It's, uh, you've got to come up with a lot of content, though, continuously for the whole day. But... It's good. It's something when you love it, it's good. And how long are you sort of broadcasting this morning? So broadcasting, we kicked off this morning at... First heat was in the water half past seven, eight o'clock. So we started at that point and we will probably be on until darkness. So around about seven o'clock, half past seven this evening. Then we have a pack up and away. So a whole day of surfing. <laughs> no worries. So it's speed, power and flow. So it's about wave selection. Um, it's about critical manoeuvres or best manoeuvres in the most critical part of the wave, but continually having, having speed, power and flow through the wave. So you link manoeuvres together um, according to the size of the wave and the manoeuvres you can do. It probably happens in the first five seconds of the wave anyway, because that's the most critical part of the wave. And if you, if you can get vertical turns in there, if you get covered up by a barrel, then that's going to give you high scores. And also riding out a wave strong. So starting strong and riding out strong, you've got to complete your manoeuvres to be able to score them. So that's the most important part. It's Scottish National, so it's, you've got to be, uh, I think, in Scotland for four years, and then you can compete. So resident in Scotland for four years. Yeah. Grant. My name is Campbell Scott. I'm working for the Scottish Surfing Federation up here in Thurso. I'm the MC, the voice of Scottish surfing. We have got sunshine. We have got in between a couple of clouds coming through. It's mostly predominantly sunshine that's hot. It's nice. 
we're up here for the Scottish Surfing Championships. That's all right. Yep. Um, and we're up here for the Scottish Surfing Championships uh, for 2024 20, held at Thurzo East. So we've got uh, a men's open, a women's open, and a masters, which is about age categories. Um, it's heats of four contestants. The top two go through. The tops, the next two, so positions number three and four will go into a repercharge, which means a second attempt at getting through the open setup, the whole competition, and then it starts to come down and down and down. So it's like the best goes through, the best goes through. You narrow it down to the finals, which is four against each other, so four in the finals, and it's the winner will win, second place, second, third, and fourth. So, and it's all scored on your most critical maneuvers at the highest or most vertical point of the wave. So you're trying to create speed, power, and flow throughout that, but delivering a big score by doing a big maneuver in the most critical point of the wave. So the most critical point is where it turns vertical and you've got the white water just catching up with you. That's the most powerful part of the wave. The waves we're looking at riding here at the moment, we call them double overhead, so it's probably about, on the face, 12 to 14 foot faces. So decent sized waves. And just a bit about, um, as you're saying, you're going to be commentating on it, and this is going to be, you know, what looks like 12 hour commentating, so it's your own kids going to be as well. And I'm tired of, you know, talking about surf. Five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. Yeah, we're going to be commentating all weekend. So that is from today, Friday through till Sunday. We're doing probably 8 in the morning, finishing at 7 at night. We're live streamed on the Scottish Surfing Federation website and Facebook page and YouTube. And uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's commentating about what's going on in the water, what the surfers are doing and continually filling in with extras around that with surfing. And what our weather's like all the time and what we've got with the Keith Ness Lab up here in Thurso, which is quite unique and creates these almost mechanical waves that come through. So it's it's a world-class wave we're looking at here at the moment in Aberdeen, sorry, in Thurso. Yeah, Pat Kiernan, yep. Wow. So Scott, your mum was a teacher up in Thursday, used to hang out with Pat Kiernan because it's actually going a live feed here as well. It's brilliant. <laughs> Nice one. Cheers, Ren. Thank you.
are we then? We live? Yeah, we're live. We're live. Hi, back. Hello. Well, that was interesting. Radio 4. Well, we're back live. That was interesting. Radio 4 for a bit of a live interview. That was quite cool. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Heard myself talking back to me there. That was quite weird, but cool. So Radio 4 checking us out, just find out what's going on with the, basically the weather to start with. Then there's a, a lot of cracking questions regarding surfing, what's going on up here, and they've shown a massive spark of interest in that, which is brilliant. Scott, lovely guy to have a chat to there. So thank you, Scott, for being in touch and getting a little interview there. So we have two in the water. We've got Mark Yoden, Martin McQueenie. Mark is sitting with a one. 16 minutes remaining. So round two, heat one, repercharge. Nice. Still delivering the waves. I mean, what can we say? This is the north coast of Scotland. This is what it's all about, surfing up here. I will bow down to no sponsors, but I'm just opening a lovely can of cold Coca-Cola. Ah. Other brands are available, but I've chosen this one. Hmm, what was that I heard you pop in the background? Was that a crisp with some description in the tube? Once you pop, you don't stop. Someone's got to comment then and where that quote came from. There are other brands of cola available. So which movie? Which movie and which famous actor was in that? I'll give you a hint. Race suits. And here's another wave rolling through at, Fra at Fraserburgh. My goodness, I'm moving all over Scotland here. At Thurzo. And we have it up and riding in red. That is Mark. Nice carve back into the white water pocket. He's got his rash vest on this time, so this is good. It's not been robbed by the sea yet. Just coming unstuck in that last section, but a first nice roundhouse into the white water. Lovely on rail game there. And that will give him a, a good score. Here it is. Up and live, there's a takeoff, there's a big bottom turn, nice spray coming off that bottom turn, digging that rail in, so rail to rail work there, back into the white pocket, looking for that power surge. And just going for the next turn, maybe coming a little bit unstuck in this one, just coming a bit too deep into that white water pocket and getting sucked up. Three point three three from Mark, leading him with a four point three three total at the moment, with Martin and White needing a four point three four to progress. And hopefully still everyone's viewing out there. Hopefully we've still got people watching and enjoying. There's another exceptional nice can of something opened. And it is one of those cola drinks. So has anyone come up with what movie quote it was, where it came from? Anyone said on Facebook? No one has said, oh dear. There's got to be some engagement there, people. Wow. That van was very close.
<laughs> Donald is just reciting for me what happened. I just saw his van lurch forwards. Donald was just surfing the last heat. It's landed, let's say, about four centimetres from his competition board he's been riding because he took the handbrake off to swivel the seat, forgot it was in gear, turned the ignition to wind the window up with the electricity, and then uh, the van surged forward with him suddenly a look of panic. So yes, everything's okay, Donald. We're all good. <laughs> it's a thumbs up. <laughs> Excellent. Look at that little face riding all the way through there. Yeah, sorted. <laughs> so a bit of a, a lull, just a bit of a, a quiet spot at the moment. We've got two other surfers going in for the next heat. They're 10 minutes out. So they have a five minute wait on the side of the shoreline. We have set waves coming through. We have Mark having a look. We've got Martin yet to get a score on one of these. Look at that glassy bomb coming through. Wow. Lovely, 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 lovely waves. Hey, Martin had a hard session the last, his first one he had out, he had a, a lot of waves on the head. The big set waves coming through, he was caught in a, an inside position. So he might be feeling this little paddle a bit. But he's still out there. The kahunas has been cancelled because of lack of numbers, but... Uh, He's gone into the Masters instead. Epic. Well done, Martin. A light offshore wind. A little bit of sun kicking through. It's a quiet lull. It's very bizarre. Silence for a second. The sounds of silence. It's watching the peak in the middle of the bay just breaking there. It's something pipe. Can't quite remember what it is, but there's a few surfers in there on a free surf catching. It's got a little hollow section kicking off in there. Great to see. And we have Mark in position, Mark in takeoff. Is he making it in? He's got a big drop to work with, he's got it. Up the face, there's a vertical turn. Right off the lip, this is going to be nice back in the pocket. Trying to find that power pocket of speed. A great little turn there in that top section. Nicely done. Quite a poignant moment there. Mark in red, taking on that wave, being watched by a surfer in red, ready for the next heat. Both caught in camera shot there, that was quite cool. like that. See what that one's going to deliver with the judges. I think that might be the. Here he goes in this takeoff and the replay. See how it faces up nicely. It's just peeling nicely down the line. Good bottom turn. Nearly to vertical. Gets just under that pocket. Compresses with the legs and goes up again. So it's a 5.67 score with that one. There's a cut back into the white pocket. And then decides that's had enough of that one. Kicks out. Wants to go and line back up again. So good score there for Mark. His solid score 5.67, taking his total to 9 for heat total.
Red up and riding again. Mark is just hunting these waves down. A nice roundhouse into that white pocket again. He's just enjoying this. Absolutely enjoying this. Where's that going to score him? Not sh quite sure it's going to be as good as the last one. Bill will be up there. Going to say 4.6. Let's just see what I come out with. What the judge is going to score. How far off am I? Martin having a paddle, having a look. Not quite making it into that wave. He's having another look again, Martin. He's using the foam ball as a starting point and kicking out the back. So a 3.27, I was way off. I was a 4.6. So 3.27 there. I'm trying to remember what the score was. It was three for the three top turns in the pocket for the 5.67. And that was one turn in the pocket for the 3.27. Okay. And Mars looking again. In position. Ah, not quite making it. Just having a time of his life there. Look at the two different colours of the wave to the right. The nice aqua blue to the left. The peaty whiskey colour off the peat bogs. Interesting seeing that, the colour split in the actual wave face itself. And we have Martin taking his first wave there. He'd be happy to have bagged a score on the seat out there with Mark. Mark just seems like he's been on fire, just picking off everything. That's a good white bail out there from Martin on the inside. I mean, it's not often you can say you've got Thursday weeks with two of you. You'll take that all day in a competition. Don't think I'd mind progressing or not progressing to have that sort of two out there would be great. There's a nice exit strategy by Martin. That was a beauty. Hopefully we'll have that nylon reels. And we have Mark paddling again. Like to know his wave count in this heat. Here he goes, good angle and take off. Way he goes, bottom turn, bang, up into the face. Goes for a bit more vertical, gets a little bit of air. Goes for a white wall foam ride, but comes unstuck. But yeah, a little off the lip. Let's see, a little air drop from that one to get re-entry and then he just came unstuck in that final turn. Just picking them off all the way through here, Mark. Mark's getting back into the lineup. He's positioning every time, just he's now got that sweet spot, knows exactly where he's lining up to. And he's getting it dialed in. It's a good little practice routine for him here. Just rotation, rotation, rotation. Can't get any better than that. Gents. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> good man, you.
minutes, so one minute 40 remaining. Mark has produced the tens, but that's he totals, not a straight ten. But it looked good in the scorecard, that one. So it's great to see this vent getting bigger and bigger and bigger each year. So we could have three days of this up here. We have Mark going again. Go on, Red, there he is. Bottom turn, off the face. Whoa, it just comes unstuck. Couldn't quite recover. The board underneath his bottom there. But I think he's safely through. I think Martin's decided, right, that's me, I'm coming in. So there's 40 seconds remaining. Big shout out to our sponsors, Vent Scotland. You are there. Jacob, Sea Monster, Olive Tree, Lost Shore, North Shore Surf Club, Christian Surfers, Greencoat UK Wind, Pentland Hotel, where we're all staying. So it's, it's funny because we're all up so early in the morning getting our breakfast. It's spot on. What else we got? Mystique. Finisterre, Foundation Skull and NDA, Dunray, the Highland Council, and 3CI Sport looking after your live stream, everybody. So hopefully you're watching from wherever you're watching. Well, one watching from Bali might still be online, I don't know. That's the end of that heat with Mark and Martin. So round two, reportage heat two is in the water with Cal Burns and Andrew McLeod, or otherwise known as Hamper, in the water. There's actually three in there. Colin Buchan as well in blue. Sorry, I missed that one there. So you got red, white, and blue out in the water. Heat live. White having a look. That's Hamper McLeod. Rose will be watching. Give us a wave from Scrabster. Getting that. Facebook or Messenger, Roz, unless you give me a wave. I'll pass it on to, to Hamper, and he'll surf his best, I'm sure. And that first wave for Andrew, or Hamper, as everyone knows him. He's a Thurzo local. A near and lad to start with, now up here in Thurzo, has been for a number of years. 3.50, here it is for Red, just looking for a cover up there, looking. So that's Cal Burns, starting to think about a little barrel in there, starting to think about it. And now we have White having a look. Andrew McLeod again, big takeoff, just caught inside the barrel on that takeoff. Was hoping to try and come out of that one. And we must have Oscar sitting in there with the cameras. You must you'll all be thinking it's a seal. No, it's just an Oscar. But a good little heat here with three of them going head to head. All from different areas as well. I'm sure they'll have surfed before together. But three on Thursday East. Just mint, absolutely mint.
And Paul, uh, Paddle with Colin Buckingham at the moment. He's taking the drop. Colin's up and riding. Looking for the bottom turn up into the face. Well served by Colin there. He'll be happy with that one. Waiting on a score there. So we've got in white, Hamper leading the way with a 4.47. At the moment, in red, Cal Burns. Here's Colin's wave. There's his takeoff. Bottom turn. Trying to get up into the face of that wave. Just as a little stall there to see what's going on. It might have opened up for him. Thinking about a head dip. But not to be. But has moved him into second place with that wave. So his opening score, 1.93. So we have White, Hamper, McLeod, or Hamper, sorry, and 4.47. Blue, Colin, 1.93. And Red, Cal Burns, 1.40. It started with 16 minutes to go. Four minutes in, we've had a few exchanges through this. That's Hamper of another look. Not quite made it into that wave. You're grand. I mean, a couple of drones out there doing some work, which I'm seeing, which is great. It's cool, the edits, everyone gets together. Live stream working its thing. We've then got the edits from all the photographers all over the place. I've got a recap roundup for today to finish off with. I've got to remember all the points that we've had in under one minute. And we have Hamper having a look again. Here he goes, got the kick, got to his feet. Nice bottom turn into the white wall. Look at our finishing section. And that'll do him there. He'll kick out and paddle back out to that. So that's Hamper is just making a little move further away from the rest at a 6.6 .6 overall heat total with his best wave at 3.5 and a second best at 3.1. So blue is in second with a 1.93 heat total and red is in third position requiring a 0.54 to move to second. So not much, a 0.54. It's a straightforward stand up, ride straight and down. I'm almost looking around for backup and if anyone wants to go into the microphone, we'll see. Scratch back here was good, eh? I'm another wave out back. Who's lined up to have a look at this one? Red is no, oh, just turning and backing out of that one, Cal. We thought you were gonna have a little look there. Being selective. such an epic thing to have these environment toys to play with the waves that we've got coming through here it's just the natural playground spot on and surfers making great use of it being able to read those waves as well get your takeoff point from where the slab is and just performing these maneuvers fair play and it's slightly smaller as what it was earlier on, but that's just the way the tide works up here. So what happens? Mm -hmm. 
And Carl having a look in red. Got it. Get an angle takeoff. There he goes. Trying to get some speed. Certainly got the speed going on. Looking to beat that section. Now make the maneuver happen. So at the moment, Amper is still leading the charge with a 6.6 .6 in white. Blue in second at the moment with a 1.93. Red in third with a 1.40, awaiting a score though, so that will probably make a change. He was only looking for a 0.54. I'm pretty certain he got that with that last wave, which he has done. And he's got a 2.03, moving him into second position. So coming up for 10 minutes remaining in this heat. And it has been a, a switch around and change around. White has certainly uh, kept position and leading the whole heat. And there's been a, a change between blue and red through this. So spot on. I came on saying spot on, I to change that. Get used to saying things. It's, uh, It's one of those things that happens. It's filling. Mal's way down the front there. Mal, one of the photographers that's up in Thurso, it gives all his time to, photo, to doing photographs of surfers. We have a wave coming through. Who is it going to be? The sunlight is just getting, or the daylight is just getting changed. It's Blue having a look. Blue is up. Blue is hunting a cover. Just missing that. Certainly a late takeoff by Colin. Looking for a head dip there. And riding all the way through, maybe time to kick out. So you don't, don't want to get too far caught on the inside there. It's a long paddle back to fine position. And now it's getting into under 10 minutes remaining in this heat. So will that score be for blue? Will it make a difference? He was looking for a 1.51. I suspect it will. Because there's a hefty drop. Not sure there's any manoeuvrable opportunity in that except trying to get covered up. So we'll just see what the judges make of it. So blue... So we have to wait and see what's coming through for that. Still waiting a score. Will it make a difference? There is eight minutes remaining. With White in the lead at the moment with a 6.60. Red in second place with a 3.43. And blue needing a 1.51, but still waiting a heat score for blue. As a set wave, is it going to just swing round or is it going to dump too early? I think it's going to dump too early. And red having a look. Ja. So that does move blue into second position with that 1.83 scored. So, red will now need a 1.73, which is a straightforward score to chase. Should be a good little interaction going on between blue and red here. And they're both going to try and catch up to white, but they're ideally wanting that second spot to get through to the next round.
Look at these waves just rattling up in the background here. All caught on the inside of it. Blue just managing to tuck over the shoulder of that wave, not having to do the duck dive. Fairly direct shout out from Dan there. Please, surfers, do not paddle out yet. So they've got a five minute window, it's right enough. They've got five minutes to get themselves in position and it's better because it stops any interference going on with the surfers in the water. They're still trying to contest that last five minutes where it's probably the most critical of the heat. And there's me again. It's got slightly darker, so the jacket came back on again. Nice interview with Radio 4 though. That was good. The guys are doing well back here. Woolly hats and everything. So, and we have red up and riding. Cal making the hit. And Cal's trying to get back in that second position was a 1.73. We'll see where that one comes in. It was a hit into the pocket. And he's only needing a 1.73 for that. Will that give him that score? We're going to the last five minutes pretty soon. It's just where it's going to start getting a bit. It has moved in into seconds, so a situation change. So red and blue having a good tussle here. White is just staying, holding their own. So Hamper's got it covered up. And blue having a look now. There we are, blue is up and riding. Blue is only requiring a 2.03. Looking again for that cover, not quite getting it. Getting frustrated, he might be able to kick out early, get a paddle battle on and get out in priority before red comes out. So we'll see what's, see what's said with that last one, but I'm not sure it's going to be a 2.03 to get him to jump second again. I'm quite just content just to chill for a second or two so hamper surfing these areas a lot knows a lot about the area for surf find them out here in the water all the time well Rolls keeps an eye on them as well while he's out there surfing And he is actually having a look now, Hamper. He's going to go for it. Maybe looking for a cover in this one. That's nah, not quite doing its thing, but a nice top slash off that face. And a little floater section of the re-entry. Nice little airdrop off the face. That's probably one of his better scores. He's looking to beat a 3.5. I suspect he may do that with that one. Let's put that one into the four, shall we? And we have Blue up and riding. Blue just seems to be missing these sections. He's not quite getting around them. So it was a 5.5 for White's last score. That certainly delivered. The best score of the heat for him and the best score of the heat. So it's brought his total up to nine. Blue was a 0.7 for that last wave, so he's still got a 2.03 to gain to move him on to second position to get through. And who do we have having a look here? That is... White was having a look, but uh, just comes off the back of that. So under two minutes remaining. 
So Colin in blue still looking for a 2.03 to progress into second place. Hamper in white sitting with a 9.0 heat total. The best wave score of 5.5. And Cal sitting in second position with a heat total of 3.96 with a best wave of 2.03. So under 90 seconds to go. Colin's going to be hunting them for this wave. He might be getting battled with Cal. Cal sitting in priority one with Colin in priority two. So that's the battle there. Colin technically has got priority in this wave coming through. Has he got enough time to get into the set wave? He's got to pull the pin on this one if he does. Because this he's got priority. He can take this wave anytime he wants against anyone else and he is choosing to do exactly that there he goes there's the takeoff what's he going to deliver unfortunately he's going to have to bail it so it's just closed out in him and he couldn't quite get into it that might be the last attempt there for a column to get through always seems to just be behind the face of that wave or not quite getting in and tucked into the wave this for the way it is at the moment and here goes Cal in the next wave behind He's got a straight line run, looking for a cover-up and just coming unstuck there. Colin giving him the hands up on the inside, thinking, nearly, man, nearly got that one. A great battle there between those two in red and blue, but White Tamper looks like he's fairly safely through in this one. He might just take this victory wave here. Now he's just choosing to come out the back. It looks like it's going to close out. So that'll be a, a White with Hamper and Red with Cal to go through to the next round. And that wasn't a surfer from this heat. So Craig McLaughlin. From the next heat, obviously doing a little warm up, as is White. Technically, there's no heat on at the moment. So is this playtime until that buzzer goes off? But I would be holding my energy. So this will be an interesting matchup with Craig McLaughlin in red, Kieran Fosbrook in white, and Rudy Farkerson in yellow. For the Open Men Round 3 Heat 1. That's what we're into next. And we're live for the Men's Open Round 3, Heat 1. Craig McLachlan in the water, Kieran Fosbrook in the water, and Rudy Farkerson in the water. We have Craig in red, Kieran in white, and Rudy in yellow. Let's see how this one unfolds. Will Craig be looking for airs? Will he be looking for going to the air? Will he be looking for... Pocket sharp, spray fast turns on verticals. Let's just see what comes out of this one. All we know is Craig's wave hungry, and as are the others, Kieran and Ruri. Kieran, sorry, Corin. That is Craig up and riding, looking for speed along the face. Got the barrel and spat straight out. We have a nice cut back into the foam ball. We have behind him riding Kieran Fosbrook. Uh, Corin Fosbrook. So, first barrel taken today with Craig. That's going to be high scoring. Corin Fosbrook in behind him. Hunting down that barrel as well, but not quite getting into it. And we then have. Rui in the background having to just make his way away from that face as it just went. So what will this score go into? Kieran has, Corin has just been scored with a 1.0. We have Rui in the background having a look. He is taking off on this wave. I've just felt the first spot of rain hit my forehead. And Corin just... Sorry, Rui just splitting the, the two surfers there on the inside. Right. 
So in yellow for Rui Ferguson, it was a 2.83. We're waiting for that barrel to be scored. Let's say, is it going to be an 8? I'm going to say into 7.7s. Let's see. There's a lot of speed though, yes. Maybe I'm I'm underscoring that. Six point five. So Craig has just gone into first place with his first wave of the heat at the six point five, and that was a barrel. And we have yellow up and riding. Through two little turns there, it kicks out. So we're on score for red. Yellow's last score, 2.73. And it's just, I mean, that's what's happened. We had an interview with Radio 4 because the weather was stunning up here and beautiful and bright. And now, another well, rain's come in. Is that not how it works? Uh, and the other camera down there. Yeah, it's just a light shower. We'll be fine. So two good scores there from Red. A 6.53 for his last wave. What did I miss? What did I miss?
And Red having a look, Craig. There he goes. Look at that speed it immediately gets. Now does a little stall to see what he can do. <laughs> so we all a three sixty. He's laid down his two scores with a heat total of three point thirteen point zero three. Now I suspect he's gonna be chasing that air reverse three sixty. Where's up? There's a wee air. And not. Craig, be going for it. What are we talking about? And we have White up and riding. Looking for the barrel, not getting into it. Out back we have yellow having a look. And we raise up. Got the bottom turn. Still charging along the face of that wave. Nice roundhouse back into the white water. But certainly Craig going for those aerials now. Here it is. He's trying to he's got his scores marked. And he's trying to get himself sorted with some air. And red in the barrel, not coming out. Get clamped in that one. But what a takeoff. Dried quite a long way there as well. It's gutted. A smack of the water there. It's 
It's good the surfers just getting ready on the, the sideline there. You can see them off to the right hand side. They're just having a fist bump with each other. Just welcome or wish each other good luck. It's quite cool like that. Nice chat going on with them all. A good vibe. So it's all having a nice little chat. They've had a fist bump, wishing each other good luck. Good luck. Good luck out there in the water. That's what it's all about up here. Look out for each other. There's a nice wave. No one's taken off on that one. Craig. Just seeing what Craig was going on with it there. There's a belly surf right being ridden. I was wondering if he'd had a problem with a board and he was coming in, but no, no. Yeah. Here we go. Two of them starting to get themselves lined up. We've got some waves coming through the back. Are they going to be caught on the inside? Possibly. Oh, that was a positioning there. Here we go. That is a nice wave. Big bottom turn. Corn Fosbrook. Could this change his positioning with that wave? Nice roundhouse back into the white water there. Nicely done, Corn. Well read out back there. He'll be happy with that size of wave. So he's requiring a 4.56 to move into second place. Big score. Not sure that wave is going to deliver the big score. But it's going to help, to help out his numbers. It has indeed. So he's now needing a 1.06 to move into second position. So that's easier to find. So he's got four minutes to do that in Corn. So he's now going to go out there and battle. He's got 0 0.06 between him and Ruri. But in total, it's a 1.06 he has to find. So Corrin's got a, a paddle to get out of the back there. So he's got 3 minutes 40 to do it. Just got to find a 1.06 though. Hello. And the waterman is back. Looks like he's warming up. Fun out there? Very fun. <laughs> Very chilly. And he's quite content just to stand and watch. He's, he's hit that point of I need to recover, get myself wrapped up, himself wrapped up. There are some lines. We've got two minutes, 20 seconds to go. All to play for for first and second, sorry, sorry, for second and third. So corin has got to find himself getting a score of 1.06. He's made it out to the lineup. There's lines coming through. He's got two minutes to try and get that score. And we have taking off in yellow.
That is Rudy Farquharson. What's he going to do? And we have Craig taking off in red. And now Corin is hunting down that 1.06. And he's just not getting it there. So he's got 90 seconds, Corin Fosbrook, to make a change between him and Ruri. That's his goal. With a 1.06 to score, we may be waiting on... Waiting on a score for yellow, so it might change the amount Corin needs. So he's just up on a replay here. There's Rudy's wave. So it has. And Corn is looking for a 2.16 now. And he's got 30 seconds to do it. Has he got any lines coming through? He is sitting with the first priority. So he needs to pull the pin on this first wave it comes through for him to try and score a 2.16. I'm not sure he's going to get it coming through. There is sets there. He's got to be on his feet before the buzzer sounds for the wave to score. So he's having to try and paddle hard onto the inside. Not sure he's going to get into this one. It's the one after he needed. So there comes down to those last seconds for Corn. So it looks like Craig in red progressing with 13.03 and Ruri in yellow with a 6.66. So Scratch is out there for the next round. Gran Canaria Airport, Lindy and Judith, welcome. That's amazing to see you watching from there. Hope you're enjoying it. You're watching from the airport. Have you just landed or are you about to fly? Because if you're flying back to Britain, it might be chilly from Gran Canaria. If you're landed in Gran Canaria, you're just having a wee beer before you get your next taxi onwards. Well, that's awesome. But hello and welcome. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Is there anyone you're supporting, Lindy and Judith? You want to see make it through because we have up and riding in white. That's Andrew McLeod, Hamper, local boy. Look at that. Oh, just gets a nose dug into that wave. This is a this is a loaded heat. This is going to be an exciting heat. We've got, not the rest haven't been, but this is going to be one of those exciting heats. Again, we've got Scratch. Here we go with the, the white takeoff. So Hamper is just, first turns, turns a banger in there, wait for it. The bottom turn, look at the spray. Nice bit of spray under that lip. And unfortunately just gets too vertical and digs the nose in this. There goes the nose, down, face planted and flip over. But yeah, Scratch, Hamper, and Donald. And Hamper's kicked off with a 3.67. Just now all about where you're positioning, the way the waves are with this low tide. And there's a paddle off to the left-hand side trying to set position. Are they going to get caught out? Is anyone going to make the, the drop? 
We haven't read. It has to be Scratch. And he does. There's off the face, a little tail wiggle. Stalls it up, looking for a half cover up. And he gets a nice roundhouse re rebound at the back there. We have in yellow riding. Just missed that cover up from Donald. So the exchanges have happened. All have got waves. Scores are on the board, or about to be on the board with those ones. So let's see what happens here. Bye. Here we have Red on the replay for Scratch. Nice drop. Here comes that first vertical turn. Nice bottom turn. Bang. Off the lip. Little tail wiggle. Compresses nicely with the legs. Cheeky little stall looking for the half cover up there. Not quite getting into that. But here's a wee snap back in the position in the pocket. Nice. So you got 5.83 for that last score. So Scratch has put himself in lead with that, with Hamper in second position with a 3.67, and Donald in third with a 1.10. That's a nice opener though for Scratch. And this is where Scratch was standing here not that long ago commenting and saying to us all, you know, these old arms for an old boy. And like, look at him out there delivering, absolutely delivering. You still got it, boy. You're on point out there. And we can see some bigger set waves rolling in the background. How's it going to shift round? Don't we've got to pay attention to this. The guys are starting to paddle out, thinking we need to line ourselves up, get in position. Looking like a nice solid face to it, though. Who do we have lining themselves up and will attack this? Is it Hamper? Is he in position? It certainly is. He's got a late takeoff. In he goes. Nice carvy round test there back into the white wall. And again, whack. Give us some spray. There it is. Oh, a half, a half cover up. A shampoo of the hair there, I think, in the inside. Nicely done. Good positioning. Watching it from a distance out and having to relocate to that takeoff point. Now we have the next lined up. Who are we going to have coming through this? That is in red. I think it's going to be Scratch. He's going to go for it. Aye, he's just gone for the paddle, not quite got in there. So Donald was having a think, backed out. Scratch then thought about it, didn't go. Aye, it's all to play for here in this heat. Thanks, Fraz. Those voice notes are just for you. I hope you're well, Chief. I'm just watching uh, who have we got taken off there in yellow. Donald, up and riding bottom turn, back into white wall. Whack. Trying to get the power output from that wave. There it is. Gets the bottom turn and off the face again. And in the background, we've got up and riding in red. Scratch again. Look at that speed he's got off the bottom of that wave. Right on the top of the lip, just getting that turn, kicks out. Smart kick out there, maybe because he's just getting himself in front of Donald for the paddle battle. So it means he'll set himself up in second priority behind Hamper. Fraser, you better be telling everyone to get online and get watching, get commentating, commentating, commenting. Wilkie, I'm doing well. There's enough uh, enough of that cola stuff. I bow to no sponsors being delivered to me and coffees and I'm not eating the treats, honestly. But I'm keeping myself going with coffee, fueled by coffee and smiles. Nice light offshore wind at the moment. Good waves coming through and these guys are on point in there. So Scratch is pulling a 9.43 to be in first position in red. Hamper an 8.34 in second in white. And a 4.60 in yellow in third for Donald. Sun is back out.
sun's out again. That little quick shower is just to cool us down, actually. We've had so much sunshine this weekend so far. Or this Friday is good Friday. This is good surfing Friday. Nice. The East, the Thurzo East, the mighty Thurzo East delivering surf, that serious surf on this slab. It's been consistently on all day. This is great. Sunshine on a rain. No, stop, Campbell, stop. <laughs> what we're looking at, they're having a chill at the moment because they're all having a confab saying, Isn't this surf awesome? Yep, it's awesome. How was your last wave? I was not bad at all. What about yours? I have absolutely smashed that top turn. Looking for that cover up though, I know. We have white paddling. Addis Amper got himself in position. Is he getting it? Donald's going to take the inside. Nope, that's two paddles gone. So therefore, that puts, I would think, red into priority position. There it is. Just move position. Yeah, there's an ejection mode by Red. Scratch just saying, "Woo!" as he did that, I'm pretty sure. Good heat total. For Red, a good heat total of 9.43. Shaping up to be an interesting second day when it comes round. Looking for the white water boost there in white, I think. Or is that yellow? Hard to see because the sun is so bright. We've got white in the right, that's what it is. White in the right, red in the middle, and yellow on the left. So priority is with hamper in white. Second prior is scratch in red. And under 10 minutes to go. And I sense some treats arriving. Treats, treats, treats. I'll just go past. Just take it home with you. Okay. okay, thank you, Mars. <laughs> Are you using any drinks or anything? And that is white up and riding. Did look for a cheeky barrel there. And then we have red up and riding as well. Nice roundhouse back in the pocket. Looking for the barrel as well. Not quite getting it. So we'll finish off with a lip hit. They might kick out early just so we can get in front of white Hamper McLeod. How will this paddle battle ensue? Both triathlete athletes, both super fit. Are they going to battle out with a paddle? Nah. And here we go with yellow. Donald's having a look. Takes a drop. Hoping for something to come out of this wave. But kicking out early because he's going to try and get back to first priority with that paddle. So priority board, the priority judge will have a line there that lets, in his head, lets him know where the first person to get to will get first priority on a paddle battle like that. It looks like it will be yellow though, followed by red, followed by white. I 
don't know if anyone's finding that sun really hot. It's really hot, isn't it, guys? <laughs> I have to, I'm filling up with too many cakes. It's lovely. And inside we have a paddle for nothing with six minutes 20 remaining. We have red, then we have white going over the wave, then we have yellow on the inside going over the wave. to Jean. Jean Clark from Pease Bay cheering on Finn. You got to for sure. He's doing well. He's surfing well. God, he's committed. He's getting some nice pocket turns in there. High commitment. And certainly delivering. So hello, Jean. I don't want to say it's so bright up here. I can't even look out there. It's so sunny. But it is. It's great. And yellow having a little look, not getting into that. And is that yellow up and riding? Don looking for a stall there, trying to get himself into a barrel. And here we have red again. Ah, just having a think about it. Does have first priority. And white on the inside, having a look to their feet. Hamper is up and riding. Bottom turn. Nice, clean. Oh, just losing that rail on that back. Just backhand turn. Yes. So you get forehand turn coming into the backhand. Just lost that heel edge rail. It's cleaning up, though. Wind is... Shifted more offshore. There's a, a sun shower coming through. Like that, a sun shower. See the positive energy in that? Two minutes 50 remaining with, in red, Mark Cameron. Well, he totaled 11.10, his best wave being a 5.27, sorry, a 5.83. 
White in second place with Andrew McLeod. Hamper with a 9.50. His best wave of 4.83. And in yellow in fourth place, Donald Peace with 6.07 heat total, needing a 6.0 to go through. His best wave of 3.50. And we have red up and riding. Big bottom turn, whack, coming back into the pocket. There it is. Looking for power supply. Now bottom turn up into that hit. There's a spray off the face of the wee check. Another roundhouse into the white water and kicking out. Another nice waver in there by red. Scratch, delivering. What are the judges going to make of that one? There's a nice replay of Scratch. Look at that spray, sunshine on the wave. Into the white pocket. Big bottom turn again, whack, more spray off the surface. White pocket and finishing off the wave, just a little check to see if there's anything else to be had. That's a little wee check turn. Right, we'll kick out time now. Well ridden. What are the judges gonna make of it? Is it going to be his top two? I'm not sure we can change those top two of 5.83 to 5.27. I think it's going to stick into the high threes, possibly early fours. Thank you very much. That's it. Ease. Still yet to get that score, making a decision. It's a fast countdown there from our beach announcer, but still waiting for that score to drop. It was a 5.0, so it doesn't change anything up. So we have in red, Scratch going through, and in white, Hamper going through. Scratch with 11.10 and Hamper with a 9.5. So well played. Thanks very much. We can take a breather with the sunshine and coffee. And of why we've just had Jamie Bain there, we're up and riding again. What a snap! Bit of spray at the end there. 
That was a sweet little wave to kick things off for Jamie. What will he score? So we have in the water, in red, Mark, you didn't, you didn't. Gonna get that right, Mark, I'll have a chat. Jamie Bain in white, getting the first wave of that heat. And Ansel Parkin in yellow. Let's see what the scores on the doors are. So a 5.5 scored by Jimmy for his first wave. Here it is up on our replay. Look at that spray coming off. Nice roundhouse cut back into the white pocket. He's going to do a little check snap here. He's going to throw some spray. There's a bottom turn. Whack! There it is. Nice little tail slide as well. Well played, Angel, Jamie.
Okay, I'm coming back to some news here. What happened here? Ooh. Yellow had priority. Now, did it interfere? On that cutback turn, just seeing this replay for the first time. Yeah, that's, uh, I don't think it did interfere. It'll be interesting to see what the judges have called if they've marked it. They don't, haven't marked it yet. So interesting. The things that happen when I disappear. So that was uh, white in there, wasn't it? With that call. We'll see what happens. Who's leading at the moment? Mark got a 4.5 while I was away. It all happened when I was away. Okay, and we have out back. So that was an interference potential if. Now it was Ryder in, what colours were it again? It was white and yellow. So Ryder in yellow had decided to come all the way back into that pocket and make a turn and Ryder in white, who didn't have priority, was in that point. That would have made an interference call. But Ryder in yellow did actually deviate away before making that turn into the pocket. Therefore, I'm not sure white is going to be called for an interference there. So we'll see. Did it have an impact on the scoring potential while the way yellow rode it then not here's white up and riding though second turn hack turn into the pocket Had another little stab at the end of that wave gonna kick out here we are so a nicely ridden wave again by jamie so it's a uh, I could move there from Ansel because it looked like Jamie was going to be on to a good scoring wave, but Ansel did have priority, therefore he did take the wave off Jamie, so that's probably the way to look at it more. A competition block. There's Jamie's nice little spray off the top of that wave. There's a little stab at the end of it, it's coming up. And whack! Ta da! There it goes. Beautiful little bit of spray. And we have a look with red, not quite making it. And still sending heats out into the water. We've got 10 minutes coming up remaining in this heat. So round three, heat three of the open men. So White's got three in the bag, just waiting for that score to come through. And our set waves out the back. Is Mark sitting in the right place? Let's see. It looks like he is. Can he turn and go? Is it just a bit too much on the inside? He's going to go for it. There's the paddle. There's the up. Oh, he just comes unstuck in that takeoff. What a shame, because it looks like a nice pocket wave there going all the way down the line. Papa. He'll be gutted with that one. Mind you, he, he was his last heat he was surfing every single wave after wave after wave after wave. So I wonder what that pop-up energy is like right now. We have yellow trying to reposition. Has got the takeoff spot, taking a full airdrop from Ansel. Ucha. And White's up and riding. So Jamie again. Off the top of the wave. And a second. Is he looking for the third turn? Is he going to kick? There's the third turn. 
And a bit of frustration there towards the end. He was hoping for a finisher. But his last wave score, a 4.7, giving him a heat total of 10.20, with eight and a half minutes remaining. Here's the replay. There's the takeoff. Just in front of the foam ball, a lot of foam running on the surface. So that's aerated water, a lot of air through there. So it means the fins are going to have a bit of time trying to grab grip. Grab grip? Get some grip. Wow. That's how many coffees have we got now? <laughs> so it means they, they can be a little bit looser in that aerated water. Good low compressed stance going on there with Jamie. I think here comes the frustration, not quite making it to finish on this wave. There goes the arm swing punch to the water. <laughs> oh. So yellow in third position here requiring a 0.95, a 0.95 to move into second. That's all they need. So that's a stand-up, right for a couple of seconds, and then that's enough. But Ansel won't want to do like that. He'll want to do it in style if he wants to get into second position. So seven minutes remaining, red priority one, yellow priority two. Now what will Mark do here? He can sit, it's still a little bit far out. Seven minutes to sit on priority with Ansel. He could be doing that just to make a block, but he is having a look at these waves. Is he playing the tactical game or is he gonna go and sit on yellow? Sound of silence. So five minutes thirty three remaining. Jamie Bain in first place in white with a heat total of ten point two zero. Mark Uden in second with a heat total of four point eight seven. He's in red. And Ansel Parkin in third, looking for a 0.95 to move into second. And it's got to that five-minute marker. Has Mark decided to make a move? Or is he just sitting watching Ansel? How's it going to play out with priority with Mark? So a second surf or the last... So this next heat going out, we think is the second last heat for the day. Need to confirm that for you. But Mark's got the choice at the moment to sit on Ansel. Sitting on Ansel means he's blocking because he has a priority at the moment. So if he was to go and paddle into a wave, he loses that priority. And Red is choosing to make a go for this wave. He is going for it. A nice top face turn. Bang, another one to finish on. And not riding out, unfortunately. Coming unstuck there, but Jamie's up and riding behind him, so he's now giving Ansel a four-minute window to find a way for he is requiring. What's Jamie going for here?
So Ray's last score, 3.33, has pushed the distance between him and Yellow to a 3.91. So it's safed up that. Now it's up to Ansel to get more than the 3.91 in the last three minutes. He's got first priority. Now, Ansel can sit in this first priority, be selective and choose the best wave that he feels is going to get him a 3.91 in score. So the cards are in Ansel's hands. He's now got to think to paddle smart, choose smart. He's got two minutes 40. Think about what he's going to do here. Is he in position to go for this? He's making a decision. The paddling has been done. He is up and riding. Is this wave going to give him the score he desires? Whack. And just comes unstuck under the lip. Ocha. So he went for it. He's hand over priority to White. He's now in third priority with 2.20 left on the clock to try and get that score of 3.91 to knock red mark out of second position. Mark sitting with a 7.83. And Red is having a look. So this is Mark again. Trying to make that score greater again. Nice little turn there in the face. And we have White in the background going for his wave too. Jamie's up and riding. Mark's just riding that one out. Jamie's just a little check turn to get a little cover up there, I think. His head get washed there. A little stall just to get maybe a a champagne champagne a shampoo rinse. How will that check turn check turn for him? I think he'll be safe with his two scores as already. Waiting a score for red. We've got one minute twenty remaining. Highly important those last minutes, just to. As Ansel noticed there, he's got to make that call, he's got to get it right. And unfortunately, he just came unstuck with that lip hitting him in the head. Could he have tucked into it? Could have that been the important one? Could he have ridden out that barrel? There's potential, and that would have been enough to score him that 2.91. 3.91, sorry. So with 38 seconds left on the clock, they're all still paddling to try and get into position. There's waves on the way, but the only person I think we've got in place is in red. And we're still waiting for a score from white. I think it's made the call and they've paddled in. With 15 to go, still a score to drop for white. And Yellow's picked off an inside section here. He stood to his feet. Whack. He's got a 3.91 to make out of this one. Can he get it all the way to the end? Is it going to help him? Is it going to make him get that score he needs? He's kicked out in those shallows, and it will be shallow. So a 5.63 was the last score, the best score for Jamie in that heat, bringing his total to 11.13 and a safe passage through to the next round of the men's open. And this is Ansel's replay in the finisher, just taking it into the shallows for the last wave to see if you get enough score for a 3.91 to get him through into second position. But it didn't quite make it there, but certainly a good effort for young Ansel. We're straight into heat four, open men, round three. In red, Dylan Fogarty McDonald. In white, Craig Sutherland, Suds. And in yellow, Eben Parkin. The waves are there to be had. It's what you make of them and what you're gonna do with them. So we've seen some close, close heats throughout this last few rounds. And we have Red having a look. Red has committed and taken off on the first wave. Dylan Fogarty 
McDonald, nice spray off the top. Takes a bit of the lip face as well on that. And another one. Good surfing there. Good vertical swinging of that board. Well done to Dylan Forgery McDonald. Get your first wave in the bag. Settle the nerves. What will the judges score him? They say, what will... Sorry, coffee's kicking in. Look at this replay. Bottom turn, nice spray. Whack, off the top, top spray. Look at that, and again, big pocket in the bottom turn. And he comes up to the third one. More spray, look at that vertical section, well done. Nicely ridden wave there, and fourth in total. A little fin release at the end of that one as well. Didn't complete with the right out though, but close enough. But a cracking start for Dylan with a 6.33. It's a great opener for Dylan there. Now we've got Suds and Eben to deliver. Get themselves back in the game. And White up and riding. Craig Sutherland Suds. Keep on doing that. I just want to say Suds. I will from now on. Two nice turns there. Just solid, consistent turns from Suds. Spot on. It's said it again. I need to start getting punishments for a spot on call. And we have Yellow having a look. Yellow is up and riding. Ooh, under the lip. Losing the nose into the face of the wave. There might be a seal spotted. And we have Red having a look. Red up and riding. Whack. Big turn under the lip. Looking for the stall there. Gets the head covered up and comes out. A nice high arm finish there for Dylan Forty McDonald. Nicely stalled there to see that lip coming over his head. The question is, is there a seal out the back? That's what we want to know. It's a merman. <laughs> and White having a go here. Good takeoff. Suds up for it. Nice, nice turn, just under the lip there, and again a second, throwing spray, getting the bottom turn to deliver that top turn spray. Well ridden suds, still waiting for red for Dylan's last wave, did the judges make it as a cover up, or certainly a head dip? 
nope, wasn't as good as his first one. Still a high-scoring wave. So it's put his heat total to 11.16, putting him in the lead. With Suds chasing in second position, needing a 6.59, because his last score was a 4.57. So Evans now in a situation needing a 5.90 to move into second to knock Suds out of that space. Well, that could be as electric as Scratch. Scratch was absolutely epic on that commentary. I'll have to step up my game. Any Facebookers out there saying hello? Let's have a look. I didn't have to go to the computer. I was told no instantly. Come on, people. It's Good Friday. What are you up to at 4.39 Good Friday? You should be watching the surfing. I'm getting ready for a meal. I'm going out to the pub. Oh, it's like that, is it? Well, we're here enjoying the surf. The natural resource we've got. We've got one more men's open heat after this one that's in the water. Judging by the green board that's going down in this next heat, we've got Chris Clark and White. And I'm pretty certain I just saw Mark Boyd go down. So two local lads together in this next heat after this. And nicely taken by Eben. And we have Red taken off in the distance as well. Goes Dylan again. Getting caught up in the white ball. So John, Sam, John and Maddie. Hello on Facebook. I think it was John, Sam, John. It might be John, Sam, Joe and Maddie. Jason. Jason. Keith. And Keith. Where did Keith come from? Hi, Keith. So you are all watching. This is what is happening. You're probably still in at work on a Friday. You're coming to the last part of the work day. And you're like, come on, just let me go home. And you're managing to watch on the computer, aren't you? That's what it is. Sneakily. Good. Keep it happening. Keep it going. Keep it going. What's our scores then? Red is in first. We have a slow replay of no movement at all on the re Oh, he's disappeared. It's okay. We have the red replay, though. Look at that. Nice turn from Dylan. Just going too deep in that white pocket. And uh, he's been munched up by the white waves. Well, Scott, the Scott Duddy's out there watching too, as is Keith. Keith, you're always working. Honestly, you are. I mean, you've got five eyes on the game. You can watch everything everywhere. Working, surfing, coffees. No, I've seen you in the coffee trailer during work time. Didn't say anything, didn't say anything. Not me, I'm miles away. You can't, you can't tell me that. So hello to all. I'm going to shout out, I think, to my Uncle Charlie. Uncle Chaz, hello. I'm glad you're with us. This is what it's like up at Thursday East with suds up on a wave at the moment. In the sunshine. Nice glassy faces of probably, I'm going to say, waist to chest high waves now coming through. But your nephew's spoken all day for ages. So you can do a shout out on Facebook. Give us a wave that you're there, Uncle Chaz. And we have Yellow having a paddle, not making it there. So the moment we've got in red with 11.16 as a heat total is Dylan. Suds in white with a heat total of 7.90. And second, and... Yellow in third. Eben, you're looking for a 4.73 to progress through to second. Or to progress through getting into second. And we've got one more heat after this. 
Could it be like the movie Grease? Electrifying. Coffee, coffee, I tell you. Banana cake. What is that? Is it lemon cake? Banana. Is it banana? Banana. Banana cake. Yeah, you can. Not just there. <laughs> Zach just went past. I will do a sensory shout out. We did have to stop him doing a naked surf. He called it and we all stopped and said, no. Yep, it's highly rated up in this 3CI Sport production setup. They don't want any of that. But you're gonna see Phil running across that reef in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Audrey, you know me well. I think I'm on six today. More coffee. <laughs> Without question. Hope all's well, Chief. Good to see you're watching. You're tinkering with something, no doubt. We've got a wave coming through in the background, though. And we have one in red paddling. So that'll be Dylan. And he's just getting to his feet. There's the bottom turn. Nice bit of spray around the house, cut back into the white pocket. And again, nice and cruisy for the second one. Is he got a finishing point? Bang, there it is. And ridden out, so that's completed. Judges will take note of that. A bit of an air drop into that ride out and uh, into the shallows for the completion, so risking fins. So well done to Dylan there. A nicely taken wave. So we get seven minutes remaining. So a good score from 5.23 there with Dylan's waiver watching at the moment on screen. Now this is where he's hunting down that face to come up. Wait for it. Here comes the hit. Bang, there's the hit. A little bit of air time, landed in the shallows and rode it out. So that is a completion for the judges to see. And it took him to a 5.23 score. So it's just slightly increased his lead to 11.56 with a 7.90 for Suds in second position. And now Eben in third, yellow, looking for a 4.73 to progress through to second position and progress into the next round. We have one more heat remaining up here. The sun is now flying into the little room we're in. Not for the guys hiding behind the wall. We have yellow up and riding. White, sorry, up and riding. That suds. Bang. Whoa, a bit of spray. Just coming unstuck. He nearly could have ridden that one out. And that would have been a good score. Solid spray off the top of that wave. A good lip hit. Going for it. Absolutely going for it, suds. It's interesting, the next heat are all sitting splayed out. You got Mark sitting in the middle on his own. Chris on the far side. The third one is pass. Five minutes remaining, there they go. Surfers are getting ready to get moving. So White's last wave is a 3.77. 
So remind me, I have to go past Tesco's to get some shower gel. I'm not going to use hand wash again to wash my hair. <laughs> remind me on Facebook. What's the best shower gel to get? We have up and riding. In yellow. Eben Parkin just coming unstuck at the end there. By throwing some good spray in the first couple of turns before that. We've got two paddling at the back with, in red, Dylan leading the charge for this next potential wave coming through in the set. <laughs> just setting up. Ah, just holding position. So a 3.3 taken by yellow there. So what have we got here? We got yellow to get a 5.04. He's in third priority at the moment for Eben. Ideally wants that first priority to make sure he can maximize on a 5.04 and choose the best wave out the set. So it just depends on any of the other two pull the trigger, which one looks like they are at the moment. And that is in red, I'm pretty sure. Dylan has just hand over his priority and come off the top of the wave, so therefore got unstuck. So now, Suds is moving into position one for priority. Sorry, priority one, which means Eben will be in priority two with two minutes remaining. So if Suds pulls the pin and goes to the next wave, then Eben has a chance to take on the best wave at 5.04. Eben's now got to be clever and either take a wave under Suds as priority or wait for Suds to go. What is happening? Who's going for what? Suds is holding fast. He's quite content with what he's got. So at 90 seconds remaining. Em's going to think smart here and just go for it. If he has to go for it. Is he going to get the option though with a set wave coming through? I'm not sure. I'm not convinced. Well, I don't know. There could be something glooming in the, looming in the, dif the distance. Hmm. So the event today has been brought to you here at Thursday East with Event Scotland, but 3CI Sport delivering all the live feeds for you guys to all watch and comment on Facebook. We've got a load of sponsorships. It's hard to get through them all. Fis Finisterre, Mystique, Foundation Scotland, NDA, Dunray, Highland Council, Event Scotland also, which I've mentioned again, mentioned before. Jacob, Sea Monster, Olive Tree, Lost Shore, North Shore Surf Club, Christian Surf Society and Green Coat UK Winds. Also, where we're all staying at the Pentland Hotel. Thank you guys for looking after us. Breakfast this morning was epic. So it looks like that's the way the heat is going to end with Dylan going through in first, Suds going through in second, and Eben unfortunately out of the men's open. Having a little body surf all together. Here it goes. The one to finish wave set today. Mark Boyd in red. Chris Clark in white. And Finn Clark in yellow. No relation. Because they're spelt differently.
This is where we probably call scratch back in for the just a double header commentary team. We are live for the last heat of the day with the sunshine out. They're all having a paddle fest over to our left. This is mind games already for everyone. What's going to happen? First in the inside, who is it having a look? Nope, missed out on that one. That would look like Chris. Is it Chris again? Ah, oh, no, it's still a surfer from the last heat, still there. Who is this up and riding? We have, uh, that is Finn. Bang. Bit of spray, stalls himself at the top, can't quite make it through the back of that wave. So Chris and Boydie sitting out back, waiting for set waves. Sun is out, waves are clean. Limited wind, hardly anything actually now. We have paddling, Chris Clark. Getting to his feet, he's made it. Surfing on his backhand, looking for some power spray. There it is, a little tail slide as well. Looking for a bit more speed down the line, making a section, whack, off the lip, just coming unstuck and not pulling that board underneath him. But two waves scored. We are now in lineup. We now know which priority is. With Boydy in red, has got first priority. Now it's the battle for Chris and Finn to get themselves in position. So Finn's first wave was a 2.83. And a 2.33 for Chris Clark. So that's our lead yellow, Finn Clark. Second, white, Chris Clark. And Mark Boyd in third. And look at it. When you look around, though, there's about 20 surfers all itching to get in. And what do we have here? Is that Boydie having a look? That is Boydie having a look. He's on the takeoff, there's the bottom turn, there's the spray. Has he got a second one lined up? Whack, there it is. Nice little check spray. Rotating that tail all the way around just to make sure the judges can see enough spray coming out, showing some power. There's one more after this. Okay. Hi Q. So this is the second last heat of the day we've just been informed. We have one more heat remaining. God, I thought this was going to be the finish for today. There's our replay. There's spray off the top. That is Mark delivering the goods. Second one. Whack. A little bit of fin release there. It's a small amount. One more hit. There we go. Red's first score is a 5.17, putting him in the lead. So red in the lead at 5.17, yellow in second place at 2.83, and white with a 2.33 in third position, needing a 0 0.51, which is an, a small score to get through. Who is it that we have battling? That is white. Is that yellow? Sorry, that's Finn. The sun is right on those competitors now. Oh, just grabbing the nose in the, the wave face there. And we get fit on the replay. It's the bottom turn. It's the one where the nose gets stuck and just stalls him up. Puts him inside that wave. And we have paddling at the back. Having a look, but not going for anything there. That might be Mark on the inside in red. It is, winds up, there's the big spray vertical board. And again, whack, a load of spray kicking off on that. Nice little check spray at the end. Three bouts of spray for Mark. So a 5.17 for his first wave, he's just dialed in the second wave, safe waves. Now we can start to play. 
We've got Finn's just moved into first position for a second or two. But I suspect Mark is about to jump back onto that first position again with that last exchange. So, top changing and changing and changing. There's boys take off. There's his first. If high up that board goes into the vertical face. That's what the judge is looking for. It gives him a 6.17 for that last wave scored. There's a second turn. Enough spray. He's going to do a, a spray turn at the end just to show he's still got power. There it is. A little check. It's enough just to make them aware he's still throwing some power through that board. So that gives him that high score of 6.17. The first one probably counting the most. Well done, Boydie. So Chris, you're looking for a 3.53 to move into second position to make sure you're getting yourself through. There is enough time on the clock with just under 14 minutes remaining in this heat. The second last heat of the day in the sunshine here at Thurso East for the Scottish Nationals of the Scottish Surfing Federation Surf Championships for 2024 held up in Thurso. And it looks like we've got a weekend packed with surfing because the way the charts are looking and the weather's looking, it's going to be game on. We have up and riding in white two big turns there from Chris Clark making sure to ride out on the inside and he has done just let the judges know that with a bit of control of the board so he was looking for 3.53 it's going to be a interesting call with the judges there was three solid turns will it equate I think it might do, you know. Chris might have just put in enough there to jump that position. There's the replay. Nice bottom turn. Could have thrown a bit more spray in that one just to make sure and confirm. But does get this last section here and ride it out. The check into the white. So he did get himself through with a 4.50, so that's put him into second. So a situation change there with red in first, Mark Boyd. And we have up and riding Finn Clark with a nice off the lip lip slide. He released Finn's and completed. That was nice. That's going to score if he completes that. Interesting exchange there. These two battling out, second and third, Chris and Finn. So now he's going to see if it's equating to a 3.8. Now with a tail slide and blowfin, we'll just see if that does. It was nice. Here it comes. Here's his bottom turn. Actually did a little stall there to see if it was going to open up and hollow up for him, but not quite. So he's deciding to go and see if he can make a turn to release fins. There they go. A little rail slide along the top. Drop in. Completes it. Gathers his feet and rides out. So that is a high scorer. I think that's going to put him into, it's going to do a leapfrog again. Chris and Finn having a little play game here. And we have Mark Boyd up and riding. Whack, swinging the board nicely. Going for another one again. Roundhouse cut back into the white water. And again, some nice sharp manoeuvres there from Boydie. Getting some spray sent to the judges to let them know. And we'll be waiting for scores for both Mark and for Finn. Exciting stuff! There's our replay. And Boydie's takeoff. Setting up the bottom turn. There goes. Up the face of the wave. Whack off the lip. Gives it another one. And we've just seen that Finn's wave in the last one was a 4.17. Does let him leapfrog Chris again. So nice little check turns there from Boydie, letting the judges know there's power there. There it is, woo-wee! And we've got, Chris is now looking for a 2.7 to leapfrog Finn again. So definitely doable, he scored a 4.5. There's Wave delivering a 6.17 out there, so there is 
scoreable and potential ways for a leapfrog games here. It's good to see. And we have up and riding. That is Chris Clark. The white, there's a green board. That's a nice turn. And he's going to the bottom turn again. A bit more spray. A lot of power through that. And he's just completing. Did he make? We've got Finn Clark right in behind him. This battle between the two. So Chris was looking for a 2.7 to move him into second. Did that score him enough? I would think it did. But let the judges decide. I'm not make that call. But Finn directly behind him has come up with another wave. Is it a game of leapfrog? Backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. This is awesome. There's our replay. This is Chris. There's his first bottom turn. You can see there's good power going through that with the spray that's being delivered by those fins. Again, here's another bottom turn. Check the spray out. Both rail to rail work there. Well done, Clarky. Just a little bog of the rail there, just ending that wave, not quite making it through the white. Did it get a ride out? Mm, not sure. It has caused a leapfrog though, so it was enough to score and move him into second position, but we're still waiting for a score for Finn, who is requiring a 3.97. This is his wave we can see on screen now. And it has, it's leapfrogged him again, so this is a cat and mouse game between these two. So Mark is staying solid up in first with a 12.07 heat total, but we have a leapfrog game going on with Finn Clark in second in yellow with an 8.30 heat total. And Chris Clark in white in third, looking for a 3.80 to leapfrog Finn again. That's been a total interchange between these two. Awesome. That's what it's about. Exciting. And it's coming up for under eight minutes remaining. There's going to be a check, I suspect. There's going to be some updates being required. Wait for the arms to come out. We're getting to the business end of this heat. That's going to be the question call. What's the scores? What do we need? How long are we remaining? Who's in what? Who's got priority? Can't see the board. Someone give me an update. Speak to me. Who's going to show us the hand signals? Which one's it going to be? There's Finn having a look on the inside. Has he got enough power to get in there? He has indeed. Nice bit of spray. It's so well seen with the sunlight hitting it at the moment. And it's a nice two little turns there for Finn. That was decent. He's needing, or he's sitting, sorry, in second. Can he better any of his scores with that last exchange? Let me just see. 2.8, 4.17 and 4.13. There's pretty good scores holding there. Set wave in the background. With red in priority. Red making a beeline for this wave. So it's gone super clean out there now. Nice glassy face to it. We're about to have that five minute call remaining, which is going to see these three surfers on the right hand side getting into the water. That is our last heat going in for this afternoon. We have Finn up on riding on this replay. Look at the spray being thrown up and the sun just highlighting that. Nice little rail slide on that with Finn release. Good work with Finn. 
So a 3.93 is his third best score. Hadn't beaten his first two. So here we go. It's time for the arms to start waving. And who's got what and where and when? And paddling for this one is Finn again. He's active out there. He's making sure to secure this place, looking for something to work. Oh, he's hunting down that barrel. So under five minutes, we've got four minutes remaining. Here's a speed maneuver from Finn. Is it? It's Boydy. So Chris holding priority at the moment, needing a 3.80. He has scored a 4.50. And that is Boydie up and running again. Two hit wave. Here's the third one coming up to finish on. Just not quite sure he had a ride out. Mm -hmm. Yep. So two minutes 30 remaining. Surfers have been given. And here we go. Who is it? Who is it? Is the sun going to let me know? Chris. Hunting down a pig dog stands for a half barrel. And then decides he's going to go face first over the front. I think just caught a rail there or maybe a knee. Wee! There it goes. Great to have these played back and replays. So 50 seconds remaining, 45 remaining, and we've got White still needing a 3.8 to move to second. We have, going for it, is Finn Clark again in the yellow. Bottom turn in the pocket. Whack! There it goes. Just hits the nose, bogs himself down, and that's it. Boyd is having a look out the back of this next wave. He's got enough time to get this next one. He's pretty safe at the moment, so he's just going to go and have a little play on a whitewater foam ride in the first part of that wave. He's probably going to see this as far as he can. 
and he's completed and ridden out. So it was Mark Boyd and Finn Clark making it through to the next round. Chris Clark out. And there's our replay of Mark Boyd in that last wave. We foam ball or foam ride. And three in the water for the last heat of the day. Andrew Robertson in red, Ross Brown in white and Charlie Pugh in yellow. Surfers are ready to go and the heat is about to start with a klaxon. And away we go for the last heat of the Scottish Surfing Championships or the Scottish Nationals for 2024 up here in Thurso. This is just day one and this is the last heat for day one. So we've got an action-packed Easter weekend lined up. The sun is out, there's limited wind, there's a lot of people standing waiting to get into this evening surf session after this heat is out the water but in the water we have in red and robertson and in white ross brown and in yellow charlie pew all from different areas we've got andrew robertson from san andrew surf club we've got ross brown from tyree surf club and we've got charlie pew from bell haven surf club so all over the place great waves are delivering nice clean wave at the moment varying in size here and there takeoff point is more or less the same Uh, who's going to get the first one for the this heat? They're all having a nice chat on the side of the beach, the rocky shoreline, before they went in. Obviously it well up for each of them. And here we go. All three having a paddle. Who's going to make? No one's going to make. Almost down, starts to sound like an auctioneer there. Who's going to have the first paddle? No one's going to make him. We're going to come in the foreign. Best not do that. That's a sign of too much coffee. And we have, I'm going to say in red, not quite making it, but there's another wave lining up behind. So who will it be? Is that Ross Brown in white having a look? I think he's got himself to his feet. And there's the first exchange. Nice cruisy first turn, get a couple of spray turns out the way and just secure that one for first wave of the day. Well done. Where's that scratch energy? Come on, Campbell, you can bring this to the, the foreground. As he goes silent. Long day of standing on your feet talking. Long day of filming. Long day of headsets on. Listening to me. It's actually, I've noticed Tom's put a hat on under his headphones just so he can't hear what I'm saying. <laughs> it helps you sing. <laughs> wow. Ross's first wave at 3.33. There it is on screen. And we have live with a yellow, is it? And there's a nice top turn with a bit of spray on the backhand. And again for Charlie Pugh. So that's Charlie and Ross each got a scoring wave. And Red now having a look with Andrew Robertson. Here he goes. He may have selected wisely in this one. He's going to Get fast around the section. There it is. Nicely done. And again. Back in the pocket and going again. Well played. All three scored. That will set a priority. That will set up scores for each of them with Charlie Pugh pulling a 2.67 for his first wave. Waiting on score for Andrew Robertson. But a decent takeoff. He made the section. Delivered the top turn. There it is. Bang. A good sized wave there for Andrew. And that's Charlie we can see on the camera at the moment.
That's Andrew's wave there. So the judge is just deciding what the score is going to be. But that'll do. He'll take that as his opener. And we have paddling out the back, which I'm going to say is Ross. So Andrew's put himself in first position with a So how's everyone doing? Who's all watching from outside? Where are we in Facebook? Where are we on YouTube? Let's have a look. Let's hear from where you are. And we've got Surfer up and riding. I want to say it's White Ross Brown. It is. He's looking for some speed to get through that. Oh, just hits the heel edge. That was a good wipeout. But gathers his board straight back out there. A lot of speed coming along that line. He is sitting in first position at the moment with a So it's a smart move there by Ross with a backup score of a 1.4. So he's just securing that first place position. It takes Yellow 1.14, who's in third, to move in second position. So, and 0.93 for second to move into first. Not that's an essential for Red at the moment. But it'd be good to get better scores on the board just to solidify positioning. Captain Dave, out in the Maldives. Oh, the Maldives. It's just like being in Thurso. Did you see the conditions we've got here? I hope you've got that out in the Maldives. I bet the water's warmer here. <laughs> all right, all right. Maybe not. Hello, hello to you, big fella. 11 minutes, 25 remaining. Still waves to be had. So, yellow's needing a 1.14 to move into second position. Red is needing a 0.93 to move into first position if he wants to, just to make sure and solidify his spot. And first position, Ross is out with a 4.73 leading the way. 
a tight scoring heat this one it can all change pretty quickly with each wave that comes through they all want to keep their wits about them because it's coming into 10 minutes remaining soon the last heat of the day Ten minute windows being called. There's a wave appearing who's gonna have a look for it. I think Red just put his head down to have a paddle. We have in white up and riding and kicking out. We now have in yellow up and riding in the backhand. And sprayed his competitor friend on the way out, Charlie. And again, well ridden by Charlie there. That was a nice wave. So White will have noted that. Got a nice little wave for White as well. But Yellow was only looking for a 1.14. I think that will have made a difference. And I think that might do a big jump. We'll see. Here it is. White's first wave. Or White's last wave, sorry. It kicks out. And here's Yellow's wave. So Charlie, nicely, here's the spray off of Ross's wave. Whack, there you go. Have that. Don't tell me there was not meant. Let's see what that scores him though, at 1.27? Well, that's for White, I'm looking at the wrong one, 4.07. That has done a double jump for Charlie. He's moved himself from third up to first with that 4.07 score, the highest so far of the heat. So that will be the good spray and power delivered by Charlie when he did that turn, backhand turn the top of the wave. So now we're looking at, Red is looking for a 0.93 to progress into second position. If White wants to go into first, he's looking for a 3.42 to get his own back. So it's all to play for now, it's all to play for. We get free surfers getting ready to get out there and have a play. So with 7 minutes 25 to go, can Andrew Robertson get that point nine three he's needing? He's sitting with priority, so he's going to hold on to that one I think. Just make sure he gets the right wave for him if this is it actually. I think that is Red having a paddle. And it was and just, oicha, was that the right decision? Uh, here we have White Ross Brown having a look. Got a nice takeoff there in the angle. He's picked a nice solid wave face. He's just sprayed Oscar the cameraman. So well done there from Ross. I'm not sure that was the right move from Andrew. What will that do? Ross is looking for a 3.42. I think it may be enough. We'll see what they say here. We'll see what they say. Here it is, up on live, uh, replay. So a 3.3, wasn't quite enough. But he's just trying to push the lead away from Andrew Robertson. So Andrew's needing a 2.83 to get into second position. 
There is coming up for five minutes left. Andrew is in priority two with Charlie in priority one. Charlie is sitting with a good score of 6.74 with P1 at the moment. And uh, Andrew's in priority two, needing a 2.83 to jump Ross. So Ross just adding enough scores there just to move him slightly further ahead of Andrew. Coming down to the business end of this heat. Andrew's going to make a call. He's in priority two at the moment. It's up to Charlie to release priority one when he chooses to. If he chooses to, he might just sit and enjoy that first position and block paddle whatever he needs to. Just to guarantee him going through. So Ross and Charlie sitting very close in points with 11.11 .11 separating them. But Ross needing a 3.42 because that's the, the add ups of two waves. So here we go, we see some lines arriving. Who's going to make the decision here? Here we go. That is yeah, I'm not sure that free surfer has to be in there. Well, Craig o, hope your trip to Lewis is going to be a belter. You look like you're going to get some swell out there, Chief. I hope you enjoy. And Mark, doing your dutiful dad duties, that's well played. Wish you were here too, Chief. It's stunning up here in Thurso. There's nice waves, but I hear Campbell Nino is kicking off in Aberdeen. So you should get something down there. Every time I leave Aberdeen, Campbell Nino, El Campbell Nino kicks in. Best thing everyone can do is send me on a, a plane ticket to the Maldives. It'll be the first time in history Maldives will ever be flat if you send me out there and everywhere else will get waves. We have up and riding in red, I'm going to say, with that sunlight. That was Andrew Robertson swinging for that one, so that's going to give him certainly more than a 0.93. But he's requiring a 2.83. Will it deliver that? And it's got two minutes remaining. So... Ross has got priority one now, so he's got to make a decision here. And this next wave looks like that decision should be made. Because that would solidify his second position if he can. And White not quite getting in there. He's handed over priority to Charlie, I'd imagine. And dropped himself in the third position with Andrew Robertson doing a big jump with that last score of a 3.57. But Ross has kicked off for the inside section. He's looking for a 3.42 to try and get through. He's going for a little tuck cover up, but nothing, nothing happening there. So this has all changed in the last 90 seconds. Uchiha Beauty. So Andrew did enough in that wave, that one big check turn off the face. It got him in, and there it is. Rode it out to... Smart surfing.
And we have, having a look on the inside here, that is Andrew Robertson again in the red. Bang, nice spray off the top there, just gonna make absolutely sure that he's got himself through. With 40 seconds remaining, can Ross get into position to try and get that 3.42? Andrew has ridden that board into the shallows, ankle deep water. What a day, 30 seconds to go in the first day of the Scottish Nationals up here in Thurso for 2024. We've seen some absolute belters of heats. With 10 seconds remaining. And that is us to a close. Thank you everyone for watching online. Thank you for putting up with us. We've got two scores waiting, but I'm not sure how much that's going to change the actual end result there with Andrew probably going through in first to Charlie in second and Ross going out in third. What a day we've had of surfing. What a day we've had of weather. What a day we've had for people watching. There's about to be a free surf session of, I'm going to suspect about 20 people going out here on this peak now. So they will be taking this through to the darkness because that's the way it will be happening. As you can see, sunlight is on me. It's been like this all day. Don't know why I'm wearing my puffer, but this has just been one of those days. Let's see if you can see me for a finisher. There you are. So look at it. This is what we've had all day. So thanks everyone for watching. We're going to be back for more of the same tomorrow. So keep an eye on that live feed for YouTube and for Facebook. And uh, you're going to get more of the same surfing tomorrow. We will welcome and let you watch and enjoy with us and enjoy the commentary. Everyone, we'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Well then, that's then.